Welcome to the stream. I am Super Hog Wild, and because I'm streaming on an Xbox, I once again have to check my audio, make sure everything's in sync and working here. There are some known issues with the app. So, uh, just, uh, you know, enjoy it. Check, check, check. Sounds good. Isn't that just so much fun? You get to watch me clap my hands at the start of every stream. Just like uh, some sort of a seal, you know, over at SeaWorld. I don't know if uh, SeaWorld's even still a thing. I know they went through some, some troubles there for a couple of years. All right, so where are we here? It is Sunday, January 15th. I will once again be sailing commodities around to all seven ports, uh, doing two loops here in five hours, chatting about whatever, depending on who uh, stops in and says hello. And it is, um, it is Sunday, so the commodities will have changed. I gotta update the old commodity book here. For anybody who hasn't done this before, this is the book where it tells you what to sell at what ports. The way I do it is I just buy them all up every stop. And then whatever's in demand is what I sell because you get the most money that way. So let's see here. Sanctuary Outpost. Sugar and tea. Formatting is weird in my document here. New golden sands, gemstones, and minerals. S super weird formatting. Checking out the ancient isles, plunders will be uh, minerals and silks this week. Prices are probably going to be the same. I know I was saying that they they change every week, but I think what that was is just that um, that bonus you get the hourly bonus. Though I will say that one week I swear they were a lot less than what the wiki says, and that has yet to be explained. But you know. Sea of Thieves, man. Ghosts everywhere. You never know what you're going to get. Speaking of ghosts, I am uh, still using the red controller. It's my substitute. Um, my Elite Series 2 is uh, still coming back from being refurbished. The sticks gave out on me there on stream number 5. Uh, but it should be a couple more days. I'm thinking Wednesday is my, uh, my bet there. So that's uh, three days from now and... This one works fine, it's just it randomly likes to cut out on me, especially when I talk about controversial things, man. Cuts me off in the middle of my monologues. But, uh, should be alright. Should be alright, unless, you know, I might get into a, a crazy chase and it might want to cut out on me in the middle of one of those, but we'll deal with that when, uh, when that happens, if that happens. So, Dagger Tooth, everybody's favorite outpost, I know it's mine. Silks and spices. Galleon's grave. Tea and broken stone. Uh, Stickle twenty twenty says, "I'm not eighteen. Okay, well. <laughs> I guess that's just a joke, right? I mean, we're on Twitch. The funny thing about it is is that there's literally nothing I can do if somebody isn't 18 and they want to watch this stream. Um, viewer discretion, be advised, man. That's all I can say. I can chat ban you, so like, don't say that again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we talk about... Um, talk about whatever, man. 
I can't stop you from watching this stream, but like, I do have to say, you have to leave immediately. Okay? It's kind of a funny system. I looked that up to see if, uh, if you can ban people from watching the stream, but you can't. Stickle2020 says, don't ban me. Okay, well, I can't. I literally can't ban you. There's nothing I can do. I, I, there's literally nothing I can do. I can, I can ban you from chat if you're, uh, you know, being an immature child or whatever, but I can't stop you from watching the stream. I can tell you not to watch it. Um, I just have it set to, uh, to 18 plus, man, because like, you know, I'm, I'm 34 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm an old, an oldie. I know 76% of the people on Twitch, uh, are over the, the age of 18. And, uh, you know, like for instance, I was talking about that show, um, SAS Rogue Heroes on, on Prime Video, which is like, I don't know, I think that's probably 18 plus. It's a war movie. I don't know if you'll find it stuffy in here or whatever, but, uh, that's just why I've got it, got it set to what it is. I mean, you know, it's Twitch, man. There's not really a lot of, uh, a lot of crazy things. Oh, Okay. I see how it's going to be. Um, this is good, though. We're on stream 7. Before I've had to ban somebody from chat. So, like, uh, why didn't the auto mod catch that, I wonder? Chat settings. Auto mod. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to enjoy it. Look at this smile on my face. Um, beep, 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 pew, beep, beep, beep. I guess those are uh, considered educational terms. So uh, that's why the uh, the Automod didn't catch it, which is funny because we had uh, some friends of mine in here who were saying all sorts of crazy shit that the Automod was catching. Uh, Jeez, man. Manage moderation settings. First time for everything, man. Auto mod rule sets level two sub moderation. Maybe uh, maybe auto mod should get turned up there. Nah. Block terms and phrases. Permitted terms and phrases. Suspicious. User controls. Shared ban info. Ban chatters. Chat options. Uh, that's not right. It should just be probably in the the mainstream manager here. Stickle says I was just joking. Yeah, well, I still got to put you in timeout, man. I got to do it. Plus, I got to learn how to do it, man, because my, uh, my viewers are only increasing every day here, so I got to figure out uh, got to figure out how this works. All right, there we go. Nope, that's not the one. Twitch's interface is a hot mess. Very hot mess. I can make you a mod. How about that? Would that be good? No, I'm just kidding. Here, I'm going to put you on timeout, buddy. You're in the sin bin, man. <laughs> can you handle it? 600 seconds, and then I've, uh, you know, I've modded things before, so I know what's going to happen is you're going to come back, and you're going to say something even stupider in 10 minutes. We're all going to have a chuckle and a laugh, and then uh, that's that. So where was I? Moros Peak here. Uh, yeah, Moros Peak. It's my favorite. Favorite outpost except for Galleon's Grave. It's good shit. It's got a nice approach. Like I say, you can drive right up to the drive through on that one. Okay, so Moros Peak. Spices and gemstones. And that's that. Every Sunday, these commodities switch. So you do have to update your list. I used to keep them in a little, little book. Oh, hey, how's it going? It's you again. Um, <laughs> I can uh, I can get pretty quick at this, man. I got like you know, whatever, whatever you call that dexterity. <laughs> it's good times though. I like Twitch. Twitch is a fun website, man. Plus, it's like you know you're given me followers so as long as that number goes up I guess I'm happy everybody cares about the numbers man uh, yeah so where am I at here I'm gonna load up um, I was gonna buy another set of books for this boat here but uh, I'll do that at the end of the stream here 
And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to load up and then uh, we'll just see. Hey, hey, hey. See who stops by, see what's up. I got a little more to chat about uh, that SAS Rogue Hero show, which I actually recommend. It's a good show. Uh, got to pop a merchant emissary, of course, if uh, you've never done this before, it which it would uh, look like I've never done it before. But this is stream number seven here, and uh, one of the reasons why I got this stream going in the first place is because there's a lot of people, you know, we've got friends who play Sea of Thieves, <laughs> and uh, you get sunk once with them, and they just refuse to come back and play the game again, right? And the truth to Sea of Thieves is, is it's a bit of a gambling experience. You never know what you're going to get out there on the high seas, but this is stream number seven, so at five hours of stream, I've done 30 hours of these, and I've only had two ships aggro on me uh, so far, and I got away from both of them, so... As long as you keep an eye out on the horizon, you know, um, you don't really run into a whole lot of problems if you can stay away from ships. I've started just uh, sailing right past them. I really don't, uh, I don't even care. I've got these uh, Dark Adventurer sales as well here, those eight and a half million dollar sales that everybody wants. I bought those uh, in stream, uh, stream four or five or something, and since I put those on, people tend to be more, uh, more wary of the ship. Um, I had one brig that actually hid behind an island waiting for me to leave port, even though I'm just uh, one guy on a sloop here, so I'm almost positive that was I'm because so of my sails. I couldn't see, uh, I couldn't see a, a brig wearing reaper sails wanting to, um, <laughs> wanting to uh, avoid me otherwise, because I've never had that happen before, so. Depending on what goes on here, like I've said before, I'm going to run another three streams probably, uh, using these sails. And then I'm going to probably switch over to the PC uh, servers, see if I can get some more people to aggro me over there. And uh, if they still don't aggro with these sails up, then I'll, I'll switch these sails back and I'll start using the regular flat blacks again. Because uh, I'd like to get some more highlight footage of some chases. That's part of the reason why I'm out here. I used to stack these in good stacks. I just splay them all over the uh, the deck of the ship now because I like to see, uh, I like to have my ship look as heady as possible. I know that when people are up there in the crow's nest, and they take a look at it, they see uh, you know my 80 pieces of loot, which uh, I still don't know what kind of money they get when they cash out over at the the reaper's hideout there if there is a a, a reaper that does sink me. But uh, when I do my last cash out there at uh, Emissary 5, it's usually about 80k worth of stuff, so it is a good haul for somebody who does manage to sink me. Which uh, hasn't happened yet. I did run out of wood one time, but that was my fault. I still think I could have gotten away from that brick man if I had the wood. But uh, kind of a 50 50 flip of the coin on that one. I mean, it's in the highlight reel there. And then I also, of course, got hit by that powder keg that one time, but I don't feel that counts because I didn't actually get caught, I just got kegged. Okay, so it doesn't count. The guy never actually, uh, never actually got my loot from that one. And, uh, how often does somebody swim all the way across the sea with a powder keg on their back? I've only seen that happen once. 500 hours of playing this game, so... It is something I'm a little more, uh, a little more cautious of. It's kind of tough when you get paranoid. Something like that happening. It's like sitting at the, the ports now. Every time I hear a weird splash, it's like, oh, is that the keg man? Did the keg man come back to sink me to the bottom of the sea? You never know. But I really don't uh, foresee that happening. Again, it's not good. Alright, so that's it uh, for loading up here. I'm going to grab some extra wood and, uh... Hello there, matey. No cannonballs this time, just going to grab wood and meat. I rarely ever shoot the cannon on this thing. If I do run into a skelly sloop or something, I mean, there's 80 cannonballs on the ship already, so it's no big deal. But you know what, actually, I'm going to buy some cannonballs, because who knows. Maybe I might feel like, uh... Hitting a sloop or something important. You can certainly afford it, that's for sure. 
And throwables. Throwables are good. Bait, maybe. I don't think, uh, you know, like, in order to make the most money doing this, you want to skip as few ports as possible. Thanks for visiting. But, um, but I don't want to spend too much time waiting around either for people to leave port. Now that I've got these Dark Adventurer sails, what I tend to do is I just circle around the port and it usually spooks them into leaving the port. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing this stream instead of fishing. Usually what I do is I just pull up behind an island, fish for a bit, wait for the person to cash out or whatever it is they're doing. Of course, we got to have these lamps turned off. Put some chicken on the barbie here. I wonder if that kid just had all those uh, alt accounts already made. Hey, or hey, if he's hey. in there just typing like a madman. <laughs> Probably has a few of them. Oh, to be young again, man. To be young. Uh, sail back later. Alright, so we are at Galleon's Grave. Uh, I am going to actually check this. Usually I say it doesn't matter what uh, direction you head in, but I realized last time... Like, I only skipped one port, but I made 303,000 coins. I think the deal is right is like uh, I try to pick uh, the direction so that when you're making your your purchases you're selling them as soon as possible instead of having them sit on the deck for longer I didn't think it would matter because you know you're going around in circles anyway so you'll eventually make it to the port you sell but I've come to realize that when you do that last cash out if uh, you have a whole lot of commodities still on deck then you're not selling them at the place where they're in demand so you're only getting half price for them so your final uh, cash out's actually going to be less so I am going to try to uh, pick a direction here that works best. So, it looks like uh, Plunder to Golden Sands, that would be clockwise. Spices to Spices, tea to tea, silk to silk. Looks like counterclockwise is the way to go this week. Don't burn that chicken. So without uh, further ado, let's get the fuck out of here. I'll be sailing down from Galleon's Grave to Moros Peak. Selling that one box of spices I got in front. Good old DA sales, man. Best defense a sailor can have. I put these on two streams ago, and everybody's just leaving me alone since. It's gotten to the point where I gotta probably take them off at some point because I'm not getting any good chase footage. But it's fun, dude. It's fun to get that respect from having eight and a half million dollar sails on your ship. If only they knew I was just a humble toga merchant. This Captain Shibby. Dog uh, is, of course, the captain of the ship. I'm technically the first mate. He's not the best captain, but uh, he is the captain because of insurance purposes. You get uh, better coverage, but the premiums are higher. He's tough, but he's fair. I wish he'd put in a little more work, but you know, he is the captain, so... Uh, just having him on the ship raises crew morale. Unless he's hiding under the table, which he does do sometimes, anytime the cannonballs fly. So for anybody who hasn't done these before, what I do is I buy up all the commodities at every port, take them down to uh, all these ports. I just sail one way or the other, clockwise, counterclockwise, full loop. will take uh, roughly two hours, so between me yakking about whatever, uh, stream goes about five hours here. I try to skip as few ports as possible, but uh, sometimes, you know, if it's too heaty, there's a maniac in the waters and I don't think I can risk it. I will skip a port, but uh, the fewer ports I skip, the more money I make. And uh, so far the session record is what? Uh, 363,000. Um, of course the way the commodity flags, or uh, rather these emissary flags work, is most of my money is going to be made in the second half of the stream here. So uh, in the first two and a half hours, like if you're doing these, um, you only tend to make like 80k in the first two and a half hours and then you make the other like 200k in the, the second two and a half hours so it is something that you know you got to be in it for the long haul but 
But the thing is, if uh, if you do like sailing like I do, I'm not a big fan of the running around on islands and the ground stuff. If you just like sailing around from point to point, it's a good time, man. It's relaxing. Uh, when these first came out, I ran a galleon. Uh, galleon crew of four. We sailed around for seven uh, seven hours and made two million dollars. Two million coins. I don't know what you'd be able to make. Uh, what you'd be able to make now, but I mean that last loop makes me 200k. So in seven hours, I mean it might be close to 600, 700k. It's good payout for just sailing from point to point. Just a uh, good hangout with friends, man. The whole thing about Sea of Thieves. I think the real core, uh, core gameplay of Sea of Thieves is actually just hanging out with a bunch of strangers on a ship. I've always said it's a lot like chat roulette. Uh, I'd put up those LFG posts, get randoms that way. Obviously don't recommend the open crew ever. But, uh, you know, when you're stuck on a ship with some people, and I use the term stuck lightly because you can quit at any time, but the longer you're on the ship, the more money you're going to make because of the emissary flag. So you do have incentive to uh, to stick with it. I'm going to actually hit the skelly sloop over here. I usually ignore these, but because we're just at the start of the stream, I can get uh, I can get a little bit of extra points on my emissary flag here. This will level me up to, uh, to two or three, two and a half probably. I did buy those cannonballs, so I might as well put them to use. So yeah, yesterday, yesterday I was talking about that SAS Rogue Hero show. I was saying uh, I don't know if I could recommend it, but actually now that I finished episode 3, I fucking absolutely recommend it. If you're into that kind of thing, I don't know. Not a lot of people um, are into the, the war shows, because, you know, war is, uh, it's dark, it's violent, it's shitty. But to me, you know, I'm into it because uh, seeing what people do in those kinds of situations and, you know, the kind of courage that people can muster up, it inspires me to, you know, put my, my own self in some uncomfortable situations sometimes. Get the old adrenaline flowing a little bit. But yeah, so that uh, SAS Rogue Heroes, uh, it's about the British Secret Air Service there, the beginnings of it. And it's just an absolutely unbelievable origin story. Um, I knew about it a little bit from playing Battlefield 5 and some other games. Uh, you know, you can you can get a little little bit of information uh, from it. But the main uh, concept is that uh, I guess it was originally um, it was originally like a counterintelligence thing where they faked this battalion of paratroopers. Uh, to try to confuse the Germans, because that was something that they'd do in World War II. They'd make, uh, for instance, entire battalions of tanks out of inflatables. Or, uh, like in this show, they were making airplanes out of wood and taking pictures of them, right? And then they leaked this intelligence over to the German side. And uh, that makes them think that there's going to be troops where there aren't any troops. And by misleading the opponent, you can win the war that way, right? So this whole thing was uh, originally just supposed to be a fake battalion. And uh, some guy, coincidentally at the same time, came up with the idea that he actually wanted to do it for real, right? So he got the go-ahead because uh, the, the command decided that if you actually did take uh, 60 soldiers, put them in these fake uniforms, and they just went out and fucking died in the desert, then it would actually sell the idea of the counterintelligence operation and confuse the Germans into thinking it was a real thing even more. So that's the only reason they got the go-ahead. Nobody thought that they'd actually survive. Uh, spoiler alert, they fucking actually pulled it off, and what they would do is they parachute into the desert, uh, traverse across the desert to the German airfields there in uh, northern Africa, and then blow up the planes on the ground. And uh, one of the... That's actually a skelly sloop, or am I following a real dude now? Heading into port, that's gotta be a skelly. So anyways, one of the details about this group that this guy put together, he handpicked 60 men. Uh, five of them washed out, so it turned out to be 55 total in the end there. And all of them were pulled from uh, military prisons, and uh, they were like misfits 
who'd get in fist fights with their commanding officers, right? And I couldn't really figure out why he did that, what was so important about that. Originally, I thought it was just because, you know, you need a bunch of maniacs with uh, no respect for anybody, but after watching them uh, go into those airfields and fucking blow up those planes, man, the show doesn't really explain it that well, but it really clicked for me the fact that uh, the reason why he picked these guys, and it's interesting because it fucking worked, is because in order to pull something like that off, to get a bunch of guys who are willing to just go into a, an Air Force base in the dead of night and plant a bunch of bombs. Uh, that's not necessarily an act of war as it is just a fucking crime. Um, you need to have absolutely no respect for authority and no uh, fear of authority. Because, I mean, you see an Air Force base and it's all those guys in uniform uh, marching around. And uh, even if it's the enemy, the whole idea that you're just going to crawl in there at the, in the dead of night and you're going to plant a bunch of bombs and you're going to get away with it, um, I feel like just the energy of the authority of a military base would be enough to turn away a normal person, right? You would just be like, oh, you know, fuck that. There's no way that we're going to get away with it. Uh, this is, I mean, I want to say incredibly disrespectful, not that uh, any act of war is respectful in the first place, but it's like, you know, you just feel like it's it's impossible um, because of the situation at hand. But these guys, they didn't know any authority but their own authority because they're just a bunch of misfit fucking idiots who uh, will get in a fight with a, a commanding officer and spend six months in the brig just because uh, just because they felt like it, right? They have absolutely no respect for anybody but themselves. And I guess that was the whole idea behind uh, picking these men. And it uh, must have fucking worked because they pulled it off and the British Secret Air Service is a real thing to this day. So I'm only, uh, I'm still only three episodes into it. But uh, I do recommend it, especially if you're into that kind of thing. Easy peasy skelly sleeves, man. These skelly sloops, for uh, anybody who doesn't know, they don't bail water, but they do repair. Uh, so you have to uh, smack them as many times in a row as you can. Stupid waves. Stupid waves, man. Oh, yes. Banana. That's what I need. It should be okay. The thing about these two is you want to sink them as soon as possible, because if you don't, what you end up with is... Uh, crooked pig hanging on the wall and uh, and what they do is they'll shoot those magic cannonballs at you. Like each one has a different magic cannonball and if you start getting hit with uh, cannonball after cannonball I don't know what I mean, throwables. It's uh, good to light them on fire as well, that's a tactic. That's... I guess if you do, uh, you do kill the skellies then it takes them a little while to respawn so they don't have to or rather they can't repair as quickly. I had a guy who used to do that. It's especially important when you go and you try to fight the galleons because, uh, you know, the galleons are more of a prolonged fight. Seeing how long they take to fill up with water there. It's also interesting to note that each one of these skeleton ships only shoots one kind of cannonball uh, when they do start lobbing the magic balls at you, so... Like, what's this? Dancing ball? Sleeping ball? No, it's a dancing ball, but I'm not dancing. I do like to do a little jig. Captain's having a moment in the corner there. Oh. <laughs> Definitely don't want to ram into that fucking brig, that's for sure. Pop the sails here. Jibby, why don't you grab a bucket and help out? You could maybe uh, start licking up that water. You're a thirsty dog. Yeah, 
getting a little wet in here, man. Getting a little moist. Moist in the sloop. Wonder if you can get uh, level three holes in the back here. Doesn't seem like it. He's already taken a couple of shots here. I think I picked up that wood and that meat. That's a level three. You can tell by the way it is. It takes a long time to repair. So anytime something gets hit once, that's a level two. Uh, ramming into shore will get you a level one. And uh, taking a hit twice in one spot, that'll get you a level three. So if you're ever fighting somebody, the best thing you can do is uh, hit the same spot twice. Oh, jig ball. And then try to open up as many level threes as you can. And then of course, when they're, <laughs> when they're in there, <laughs> settle down, Captain. When they're in there uh, repairing, right, you can hit the same hole over and over again while they're repairing. I just want to make sure that I don't uh, sail off into the Red Sea there. As you can see, my health is coming back. That's the important point of stocking up on chicken and pork chops. Gotta always eat well, man, when you're out on the, the seven seas. I mean, I say seven seas, but like, there's only four of them in Sea of Thieves. I feel like if I say, uh, say the four seas, people are going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, Hawkwell? Which way am I going? East? Yeah, that's not the direction I want to go in. Doing about face here. Put some more wood on the side of the ship. Head on back to the west. I'll keep going northwest because that bricks uh, straight to the west. They look busy doing an island voyage there, so I don't think they want none of it anyways. You never know. Where to go? Still there? Good. any cannonballs, huh? It's tough with these waves on a sloop, man. I've been doing these merchant commodities so long, uh, I gotta get some more uh, cannonball practice, man. Doing those ghost ship voyages are actually pretty good for that. You just wanna get some practice hucking cannonballs. It also uh, is kinda good practice for uh, getting an idea how to maneuver your ship. Well, looks like they might be good. Taking their sweet time. They gotta be going down. It's not really something that I've seen Skelly Sloops do. Just taking a breather. Oh, maybe it's just taking a breather. I wouldn't 
think that a skeleton would need to catch his breath. Doesn't have any lungs. Try to get a little lower on these shots. It's tough, man. These big ass waves in a tiny little boat. Yeah, there she blows. And that's two and a quarter plus the loot I'm gonna pick up, so. There it is, just get this uh, sail on. Get this sail up, patch the couple holes there, then I'll take a look for those seagulls. It's funny how those seagulls, uh, those weren't in the game until like the first couple of years they finally added them. When you sink a ship. I think it might be time for a uh, new coat of paint on the ship here. Perfect. Heading straight. Just as long as that brig doesn't come over to say hello. Looks like they're busy doing whatever they're doing over there. Digging up potatoes. And yeah, that loot's dead ahead. Okay, right on. Works for me. Always good to get a couple of extra gems going. I see you, Ruby. Bounty skull. Good old storage crate. They used to say that that was the best loot in the game, the storage crates. <laughs> because that was before you could buy uh, any of the supplies, right? So the only way to stock your ship up was to run around an island. If you had one of those storage crates, man, oh my god, it just made it so much faster. You could just uh, run around all the barrels, just grab everything. That was even before you could just hold X to load it up. Even then, man, it was like storage crate and even the rowboat is a good find because those rowboats used to have like 50 cannonballs in them sometimes. Now we can just buy cannonballs, man. Truly living in the golden age. See you these. Maybe they'll even uh, put in a buy all button for the merchants, you know? I know that's like a lot of wishful thinking. These cargo crates, like these fine sugars and shit, they sell for quite a bit sometimes. Not the sugar though, but if you can get like the silk ones or the gemstones, they're pretty good. Captain's chest couldn't care less. Emerald, for sure. These uh, stupid things are kind of funny. I wish they did ship damage, but... If somebody's like uh, on the bowsprit and they're trying to board you from behind or whatever, you can hit their ship with that and it'll just launch them flying into the sea. Usually what I use blunder bombs for, but uh, they nerf blunder bombs. So like blunder bombs don't really send people sailing the way they used to. What do I got in here? Usually don't get two storage crates from one ship. I think there was something else, right? Something else shiny in there. No, oh, that might have been it. Just gonna take a quick look. Yeah, it looks clear. I thought there was like another piece of something, but whatever. Got the important stuff anyways. That reminds me of that one bug too that was going on for a few months there back in the day where you'd find those uh, supply barrels and every time you go to sail up to try to load up to them, they'd sink immediately. And it was just like the funniest fucking thing. 
Yeah, I thought there was an emerald in there, but maybe it was one of these skulls. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Oh well. I'm gonna turbo on down to uh, Moro's Peak. Get this run started. Hopefully that break uh, doesn't give me any trouble, but. But even if he does, man, I'll just run away. It'll be a good chase. I'm gonna take these uh, supplies here, load them up. Banana actually saved my life, so I shouldn't shit talk fruit. But I should definitely cook the rest of that uh, meat that I've got in barrels. A good pork chop will really save your life in this game. Oh, I gotta fix the pig too. Fix the pig for good luck, man. I wish I could get two of those pig, uh, pig paintings. That would be fucking hilarious. But there's only like, uh, there's only one other spot that I can hang a painting that I've found. This wall right here, a painting can go here. There's uh, some wall spots for trinkets like there, but it will not, will not fit a painting, which is unfortunate. That's not a spot. Thought maybe that would be a spot, but it's not. So there's this spot here that won't fit a painting. Nothing there. Probably needs to be adjusted. That's super important, man. Gotta adjust those bottles. <laughs> Can't tell the difference. Can tell the difference uh, for those elixirs, though. Captain Doby says, filthy skeletons disrupting our pig painting like that. I know, right? It's the most important part of the ship, is that pig painting. Reminds me of what it's all about. Eating pork chops. SS Burrito, Captain by Burrito 22. Hmm. I feel like I've seen that before. Is that another skelly sloop? Yeah, that's another skelly sleep. I'm gonna ignore that one though because uh, I'm already at emissary two here, so I feel like it's only worth it for the first sink. But you know what? I might just hit it. I might just hit it if it's. Uh, Close enough. I'm not gonna sail out of the way, but if it's right by, and I can just nag it with a cannonball. We're already at 45 minutes in, though, so maybe I should just hit the run. I got all these dice roll emotes. He's gonna start rolling the dice on some stuff. I wonder if there's just like a coin flip one. I don't have it. Uh, thought it'd be under four. I guess it's just in the menu. I gotta go in there and set those up. Good old Moro's Peak, man. I've also got uh, visual uh, cover from that brick, so this will be good for loading and unloading here. Didn't lose any more pieces off the steering wheel. Just kind of hoping that would happen. Capstan's fine too, but whatever. Got enough holes in the side of the boat, man. I was hoping maybe I'd lose a couple of more spokes, but no such luck. I do like how the uh, the scorched part of the ship stays, though. So you can see where there used to be a fire, like literally everywhere on this ship. The whole thing's just like a burnt piece of toast.
Perfect. And this week we're selling uh, spices here. The one humble box of spices. There you go. What are we getting? This will be Regular price. Yeah, so I have no idea what was going on that one week. Crazy stuff. It's getting like suboptimal prices. I should check uh, check to see what time that gold rush is at as well. I think that changes every week, but I'm not sure. Gemstones are good though. Selling them all the way at uh, Golden Sands. Give me all your gemstones, lady. Give me the gemstones. Speaking of gemstones, actually, I got a giant hunk of amethyst here. I was gonna show off. Cause I was talking about gemstones. Shit's fucking cool, man. But I gotta load these up first, then when I'm sailing, I'll show that shit off. Like I said, it's uh it's fucking everywhere on the planet, man. Amethyst is one of the the most common semi precious gemstones that you can get. Keep turning it's the fucking of purple. Which is gnarly. That's why I think it's like people who get into gemstones, it's like careful not to get a little crazy about it. Cause like uh just the whole idea that something's so cool you can just dig it up out of the earth makes you start to like uh question the very nature of the planet we live on. That's why you gotta be careful, man. If you get into gemstones, don't like don't let it like overwhelm you. Same thing with rocks. Any kind of minerals in general, man. I know like a, I know a lot of rock people now. It's like you just start like looking into rocks. Cause I was talking before, it's like you wouldn't really think that something literally the most abundant substance on the planet, like there's fucking rocks everywhere, right? So you wouldn't think that something that abundant would have any value whatsoever. Cause that's kinda like the way our economy works is like scarcity increases value, so you can just go, like, find shit at the beach, and it shouldn't be worth anything. But then, like, you start to look into, like, how cool some of these minerals are. And some of the colors and stuff that uh, you can get from them. It's, like, holy shit. It's cool stuff. But then you end up, like, going out to the beach and bringing back, like, a fucking 40-pound sack full of rocks. And then you gotta be like, okay, I'm just, like, hoarding. I'm hoarding stones, man. I need to take a step back. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's something you gotta, like, not become a rock person. I mean, there's nothing wrong with becoming a rock person, but every rock person I've talked to, we all agree, it's like... You gotta learn some self-control, man, or else you end up with, like, 300 pounds of stones in your house. It's just like, okay, they're just stones, man. They're fucking cool stones, but, like, they're just stones. So you gotta, like, uh, you know... You gotta limit yourself or else your whole fucking house just looks like a day at the beach. But yeah, I have a chunk of amethyst here I, I'm gonna show off after I load this. It's, it's good shit. Amethyst is uh, it's one of my favorites. Just because of the, uh, the color of it. I haven't found any amethyst out in a bit. But uh, just at the local beach, man, I found a fucking a hunk of citrine that was like a good size. And that's like, uh, you know, quartz crystal, it's clear, but it's got this amber kind of color to it. And it was funny because uh, I was walking along. Double check, I got all these here. I was walking along and I found it on the beach and there was like yogurt spilled on it. Like somebody had hucked a fucking container full of yogurt off the road and it flew through the air and it just like splattered on the beach and the last splatter landed on this hunk of amethyst or uh, citrine rather. So I was laughing about that because it's like such a cool like semi semi precious stone that it was just covered in like someone's yogurt garbage and it's like ugh. I don't know. I always get a kick out of that going to uh, going to the beach, and it's like the the contrast between like all the fucking the old socks and the fucking garbage and shit you can find there, and then it's just like the most like pristine nature next to it, where it's like you feel like you're walking through like some sort of magical wonderland, and then there's just like an old sweater, an old rotting sweater, 
or like some graffiti on a rock and it just brings you like right back down to down to earth and you're like oh okay, yeah i remember where i am yeah check this shit out this shit's natural man Let's see if this will uh, show up on stream i don't know how, how the the lighting is i don't really see the color very well if i just shove it right in your face Boo. oh dude i gotta shine like a, a light on it or something it just kind of looks like dingy but yeah, it forms in these crystals, naturally. Like, this one's part of a geode, right? So you find rocks if you go out uh, rock hunting. And uh, from the outside, it just looks like a normal rock. And then you gotta fucking uh, get sort of a sixth sense or something. I don't know. Some people know how to do it. And uh, then you take those things home, and they're usually, like, round or whatever, and you just fucking bust them open with a hammer or something. People have different ways of cracking them. There's, like, chains you can use and stuff. And then, yeah, you never know what you're going to get. I personally have no idea, like, how to identify a geode. I bought this uh, this piece at auction. I picked up, like, a whole bunch whole bunch one time. They're also kind of weird, too, because, um, like, crystals. I know there's a lot of people into, like, you know, crystals. I'm not, like, a crystal guy. I don't, I don't think they have, like, magical healing powers or anything. But some people believe that. But uh, one thing that's interesting about them is... Uh, is if you do take a radio, a 12-band radio, and you put the radio antenna up to them, they do conduct uh, radio signals, man. And one time I had a whole bunch of smoky quartz I got at auction, and I had it all fucking splayed out all over the table in front of the TV, and we were trying to play video games, and I fucking shit you not, man, could not fucking play games because of that smoky quartz. Something about... Uh, I don't even know how to explain it because it's something we don't understand yet, but they fucking emit, they emit electromagnetic radiation and it was like making us go cross-eyed and we had to fucking take it all out of the room and break it up into, uh, into different, different places and shit. So that is just something like, you know, if you do get into crystals, I got a, this is like a polished piece of amethyst here. I don't know if you can see the color better. Move the light, man. Whoa! So. Polish that shit up. It's got that nice purple color. And that's the most common... Oh, yeah. Okay. That didn't work. It's like a solar eclipse. But, yeah, it's like the most common gemstone, man. And it's everywhere. Uh, it's so common over in Africa that they've got... Uh, there's pictures of roads that are paved with just amethyst crystals in the asphalt. And, uh... Like, I found another hunk of citrine in uh, my friend's driveway. He had a bunch of gravel in there, and there was a hunk of fucking citrine. And that's, like, the orange quartz, right? So... So yeah, it's cool shit, man. And just the fact too that uh, each different mineral will uh, will form into a different shape, like these quartz crystals. When you really get uh, the natural ones, I got some big ass ones I should have brought over here, but they're not handy right now. They, they uh, form into these uh, six sided uh, six sided crystals, man, with like completely straight lines, like a piece of mathematics that just forms out of fucking. I mean, they don't actually know. Uh, how they form, they got theories. I guess it's like uh, the ones in the geodes, they figure that's from magma bubbles, and then all the fucking minerals and shit are in there, and then as they cool down at a certain speed or a certain temperature, then they'll form into crystals. Because, uh, you know, you can make sugar crystals. You can take uh, just sugar, and you hang a piece of string in a fucking a glass full of sugar. So it has to be in like some sort of liquid solution, these minerals, and then as the solution dries or cools and it hardens, it forms into uh, these different shapes depending on what the mineral is. So with the sugar crystals, man, they form into fucking cubes. Like, it's so cool. And that's why I've been saying, like, people who get into crystals and rocks and stuff, it's tough not to, like, um, kind of lose yourself into it because uh, in science class in high school and shit, they'd always teach us, like, oh, there's no straight lines in nature and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, dude, crystals, it's, like, literally straight lines, like, perfectly mathematical straight lines that just form inside the earth under special conditions so it's tough not to think like you're living in a fucking magical final fantasy type wonderland when you realize that you can just go out uh, into the forest and dig up purple fucking uh, translucent rocks man it's fucking cool so yeah we're pulling into plunder outpost here i'm gonna sell these minerals talking about minerals they're not rocks, they're fucking minerals, Marie. Get it straight. Do I have a load here? What do I got for minerals? Only got the two crates, yeah, okay. 
What's that little hunk of treasure there? Probably a wood crate or a cannonball crate. Or it looks like wet cloth, actually, which is fucking funny. Somebody was doing the merchant cargo things, maybe an Athena voyage. I know people who do the Athena voyages, they'll just take the cargo and just huck it in the water. Reminds me of those kids who used to get uh, paper routes, and then instead of delivering the papers, they'd just fucking huck them down by the riverbank, and you'd go down there and there'd just be stacks and stacks and stacks of paper. But uh, I can't imagine that would work for very long. Because eventually people are going to be like, yo, I'm not getting my fucking paper. I remember one time, uh, one time I did a friend's paper route in like grade 7. I didn't do that, but I missed some houses and they were like, no, you missed some houses. And I was like, yeah, well, it's not my route, don't get me to fucking do it for you. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, so Emissary 3 already because I sunk that Skelly Sloop, so that worked out. I don't know what the other one would have given me, but I think uh, given the amount of time it takes to sink them versus how much time it takes to just run the commodities. Uh, like I said, I think it's really only worth it to, to do one if you're at the very start because you get that plus one on your Emissary flag there. But... Uh, Getting uh, rank 4 and rank 5 on the Emissary, it like takes quite a significant amount more than getting the first 3, so I think it's uh, worth it more just to just to run the commodities. So once again, I'll just be buying all of these and then selling whatever I need to at the next stop, which is uh, going to be... Oh fuck, you know what? This isn't fucking Plunder Outpost, man. I fucked up already. This is Ancient Spire. I have to sell stone. That's okay, that's not gonna fuck. Two crates of minerals isn't gonna set me back that much, but... I don't know why I keep getting Ancient Spire and Plunder Outpost mixed up. Besides the fact that, uh... Plunder Outpost has a Spire... ...in it. And Ancient Spire doesn't really have a Spire. It's got, like, two peaks with the... ...the path around it, but it's not a Spire. You'll see when I pull into Plunder. I have been saying that for fucking so many streams here... ...that I've been trying not to say it. But like, it's true. It's fucking true. You go to uh, you go to Plunder Outpost, and it has a fucking giant spire, and you can see it. So I always think they're like the opposite. Goodbye, my lovely. But yeah, it's all good. Like I said, two crates isn't gonna set me back up. But... And also, got all this fucking stone. I can get rid of here. So that's good, man. Making a big sale quick. So we get for that should be 800 yeah 800 plus the emissary bonus so that's a lot better i was like looking at those minerals as i was selling them too i was like 400 coins like that's not right might as well grab this i definitely got to remember to cook the rest of that meat i mean getting lazy with that but you just never know Never know, man, when he might take a cannonball in the gut. Fuck, did you guys ever hear about that dude? He was, uh... I want to call him a circus performer, but he did, like, festivals and stuff, too. That was back in, like, the fucking, uh... I think it was probably in the 60s, because I think he was at Woodstock. But yeah, the dude would get shot in the gut with a fucking cannonball. And that was his act. You can look that shit up. But I thought about that, too, because, like, um... I don't think that that was a full-size cannonball coming out of a full-power cannon. Because you can also see that picture of that dude's uh, breastplate from the 1700s. It was like uh, some nobleman that got hit by a cannon. And it literally put a cannon size, a perfectly round cannon size hole in the breastplate. And the metal was just like 90 degree fucking splintered. Like zero, zero resistance. And if that cannonball went through the breastplate, I can't imagine that it stopped. Uh, when it hit the stuff that uh, the breastplate was on, if you know what I'm saying. So that guy would get shot in the gut with a cannon. I, I think about that, and it's like, it was real enough, because they have, like, uh, like pictures, and they have video of it, and it's like, yeah, that guy's getting shot with a cannon, man. That's not a fucking, uh, it's not a rubber ball. It's not, it's not fake, but I guess it's also not, uh, not full-powered either. So I gotta look into that now to see like what the weight of that cannonball was and what the hell is going on with that. Dude, shit people used to do, man. Fucking crazy stuff. That was like, uh... 
talking about hit getting hit in the gut there. Harry Houdini, that's actually how he died. Um, he was an escape artist, right? And you'd think that, like, wearing a straight jacket, being covered in chains, and submerged underwater would probably be what killed him. But uh, as it turned out, one of the things he used to do uh, to entertain was he'd let people hit him in the gut. And uh, what happened is some guy came up to him at a party and just fucking wailed him in the gut. Just because, you know, that's the way people get. <laughs> I got some uh, stories about Miyamoto, uh, Miyamoto Musashi. I was talking about that last stream, that fucking samurai. Kind of in that same regard. But yeah, so anyways, Harry Houdini gets hit in the fucking gut. And he wasn't prepared for it. And uh, poor guy died of sepsis uh, three days later because it, it ruptured his intestines. And that's how fucking Harry Houdini died. Unbelievable shit, man. Yeah, it's unfortunate uh, when you get into the public eye, man. People just start, like, fucking being weirdos sometimes. Being a little disrespectful. But I guess that's just the way some people are. Like uh, Miyamoto Musashi, for instance. So he was uh, widely regarded as the greatest samurai in the history of Japan. As I was uh, saying before, the thing about samurai is we kind of know that their stories are, are pretty legit because unlike the fighters in uh, medieval Europe, for instance, samurai were actually required to be literate and to write poetry and to write stories. So a lot of them wrote uh, wrote their own biographies. They wrote um, down all their tactics about how to fight and whatnot. That's the wrong place for that. Left side, front of the boat. And uh, Miyamoto Musashi, man, that guy was fucking crazy. And the thing is, too, is it's like, the stories about him don't even sound real, but they were li literally living in a, a period of history where it was like, talk shit, get hit, right? So, like, if he was full of shit, somebody would have just killed him with a sword. But nobody could fucking kill this guy. He would fight with uh, two katanas, one in the right hand and then one reversed in the other hand, and he could fight people 360 degrees around him. He developed a fucking tactic to do it. Um, if you're into that kind of shit, he wrote a book called The uh, Book of the Five Rings. I highly recommend it. It's super inspirational shit, reading about this dude. Samurais in general, man, how it's like they'd wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and just fucking spend 12 hours every day training with swords. So yeah, one time, uh, Miyamoto Musashi, he was uh, the master of his sword school. They had rival sword schools and they do duels and shit all the time. And this guy from uh, Rival Sword School comes in unannounced because the better he got, the more people, just random fucking people, wanted to fight him just to say that they could kill the uh, greatest swordsman in Japan, right? So this, uh, this fucking rival uh, sword schooling uh, master comes into his sword school and challenges him to a duel unannounced. And uh, good old Musashi, he fucking fights the guy with a kendo stick which is like a practice sword, right? And the guy's, other guy's a real katana. He fights him with a kendo stick and fucking kills the guy with the kendo stick, right? So it's like, I don't even fucking know how the hell you could do that, kill somebody with a fucking a kendo stick like that, but, I mean, just imagine it. It was probably brutal as fuck, that's for sure. So another time, uh, this fucking dude comes up to him. Musashi's out there fishing, and some random guy fucking challenges him to a sword duel as he's fishing. So what does Musashi do? Kills him with the fucking fishing rod. Which is like, okay, at least the kendo stick, that thing's a piece of hard wood. I mean, how the fuck are you going to kill a guy with a fishing rod? I don't know. But he pulled it off. And then another fucking story, talking about people, uh, you know, the better he got, the more people just wanted to, to fight him just to say that, like, oh, I'm the, I'm the greatest swordsman in Japan. Fucking uh, Musashi's at a, a bathhouse taking a fucking bath at a public bathhouse and somebody lit the fucking bathhouse on fire just so that they could say that they killed the greatest swordsman in Japan even though it's like yeah buddy you lit the fucking bathhouse on fire like that doesn't make you a good swordsman but like that's the way it is man it's like the better you get the more people just want to fucking uh, bring you down and you got to be prepared for that shit it's a fucking crazy world we live in but like you know exciting shit uh, talking about, uh, you know, talking about, uh, Houdini's death there, the way that, uh, Miyamoto actually ended up dying, which is fucking crazy. I don't know if this is, this is legit or not, because I'm, I'm, like, kind of willing to believe they might have exaggerated his death just because, like, um, 
you know, he lived in, uh, geez, I think it was the 1700s or something. I got to look that up again. It might have been a bit earlier, but Japan has like some crazy shrines to some crazy, uh, some crazy stories. I know uh, they got this one shrine there where they think that like the brother of Jesus was in Japan and they have all this shit, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's like, that's some fucking, some totally different shit. Like I said, the thing with uh, Samurai, it's like you can't really make stories up about being a good swordsman because somebody would have just challenged you to a duel and you would have just gotten taken out. But anyways, so uh, the way uh, Musashi died is uh, I guess he had like um, some sort of terminal illness and uh, he was just meditating and then finally one day he just knew that he was done and he just uh, sat down in a fucking pose on his knees with his uh, sword and his uh, fucking... Uh, you know, a little sword there in his lap, and he just put his head down, and he just fucking died. In a fucking a meditative pose, because he just knew that that was the day he was checking out. And it's crazy, man, because, like, reading about stories, again, of people like that, it's like, dude, what, like, how the fuck did those people even exist? Like, you know, it makes you, uh, makes you think about the world, dude. Kind of a fucking magic place we're living in. Or whatever. But samurai in general were just, like, they were just... Another breed of people, man. Because uh, they'd have these battles, right? They'd go out onto the battlefield and they would wear these baubles on their armor that would tell you uh, how much honor you had as a fighter, right? So as you beat other fighters, you'd get uh, more fucking decorations on your armor. And uh, when they went into the battle, they would specifically walk through the battlefield as everybody's fucking fighting and you would find another person that had uh, honor that matched your own so you could have like a worthy fight in the middle of a giant fucking battle that was like between lords um, to take over territory and uh, in that regard way 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 back in the day like a thousand years in the past allegedly because I don't know with history right you can only read the books you don't know what's true what's not true but uh, the way they used to settle uh, the fights for entire swaths of territory to see, you know, what feudal lord would control that part of Japan, is they would take their two best samurai and they would uh, set them, you know, whatever, 300 yards apart or whatever, and they do shot for shot with a bow and arrow. And that was it. That's how they decided the whole fucking fight. It was just two dudes doing shot for shot. Last man standing was how you, uh, you decided the entire fate of the realm of the fight, man. And then it wasn't until, like, you know, as years went on, especially after, I guess, the Dutch or whoever showed up first, like, uh, medieval Europeans showed up, and then they started doing things kind of the way that uh, medieval Europeans did, having uh, bigger, more honorless battles, uh, you know, more peasantry involved, a lot of poking with spears, that kind of shit. Yeah, just fascinating shit, man. War is a crazy thing, looking through um, the years through history, how it was something that, like, um, the whole idea behind it was just uh, whoever could train the best soldiers and whoever had the best generals, it was like proving that you were the smartest and you were the most capable at organizing a society. So that just gave you the right uh, to rule if you won. Um, and everybody's fighting anyways. There's always going to be crime. There's always going to be banditry. So you need to have an army just to defend your people so so it was weird how you know it's something that like they just accepted it as a part of uh, everyday existence because I mean on the one hand you had to anyways but on the other hand it was just something that like uh, they really saw no need to remove it from society because it made sure that they uh, they were always strong and being led by the, the best people like it's interesting talking about Eastern uh, Eastern cultures in China even uh, they have this uh, this belief I don't know if they still have it because China's a totally different place now obviously um, but even as far back as like you know the 1800s and, and previous to that they had this belief uh, of the divine right to rule where whoever came into China and took over China regardless of who they were or where they were from if they could do it then they had the fucking right to rule and everybody would just accept it as if it was like a democratically elected government because they just believed that like um, if you could do it, if you can take over the government um, through whatever means, you know, through combat or whatever, then that must mean that you have the divine right to do it. And they were like, yeah, no, no biggie. 
So that's why, like, uh, for a large uh, large period of history there, they were run by Mongolians, because the Mongolians rode in, and they took over the government, and they were just like, yeah, you're in charge of China now, because you fucking, you did it. So. So I don't know, man. Crazy fucking times in the past. But I talk about that a lot, because it seems like... It sounds like... Uh, it sounds like such a crazy time to be alive because of all the violence and the, you know, there was no no safety features, you know, even in the, the 50s. People didn't wear seat belts in automobiles, and I don't think we should go back to doing that. But at the same time, it seemed like everybody was, like, a lot less stressed out somehow. Just by, like, accepting the danger and embracing it into your life. Like I told that story yesterday about how in the Wild West uh, they uh, rammed two trains into each other in order to promote this uh, railway and on the day that they did it the, one of the boilers exploded and just shot a whole bunch of tubes into the crowd and there were all kinds of crazy casualties and everything but it was considered a rousing success and the, the fucking railway ended up doing really well because of it even though it was like this horrific disaster when they were trying to just put on a spectacle because, like, they didn't think there'd be a boiler explosion. They did a test, and it was fine. The trains are just supposed to go, like, boop, you know? They didn't have TikTok back then or whatever, so you, you couldn't see some crazy shit. You had to go fucking see trains go smash into each other. I mean, I would still fucking pay money to see that these days, probably. Just as long as, like, you know, no one's getting hurt or whatever. But, yeah, tons of people got hurt, man. And this was in, like, the mid-1800s uh, mid in the United States in the south there, and, and everybody fucking loved it. They were like, yeah, crazy shit. But that was also a time, right, like in the, the Wild West, um, sometimes people would have uh, nine kids and only like three of them would survive. So it was like their whole opinion of death and safety was like it was just a totally regular part of life. And it's like that uh, Trooper song or whatever. Not here for a long time. We're here for a good time, man. But that, that being said, you know, full disclaimer, take care of yourself. You know? <laughs> it's fun to get the adrenaline going, but like, you know, you gotta take care of yourself. That's a logbook, I think. It's funny that that wreck's just out there. Okay, so this is actually Plunder uh, Outpost, as you can see. That's a fucking spire. Come on. That's a fucking spire. Look at that thing. That's a spire if I ever seen one. I don't know what that's got to do with plunder, but ancient spires just got like the two rounded mountains with the uh, bridge between them. So I don't know. Tell you, man, if I was in charge of this shit, I'd reverse those names immediately, and then I'd just drop a nuke on Dagger Tooth. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it, of course. So yeah, this is uh, Minerals of Plunder. I'm only going to have one case of that because I fucking sold them like a dummy dummy here, but whatever. <laughs> that one's for you, Dovey. Hit my fucking chin on the dock. Are you up to this? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. God, I wonder, like, I've said it before, but that's, like, was always my biggest fear as a kid. People were always doing, like, backflips and fucking gainers. Gainers are, like, when you run off the dock and then you do, like, a backflip, but you're going forward. Uh, never saw anybody do a front flip off the dock before, though, which was weird. It was all just backflips and gainers. And a backflip, of course, would be, like, where you're facing backwards towards the lake, and then you do a backflip on that. But I never tried that shit, because that was always my biggest fear, man, was hitting my chin on the dock. Like, nothing else. No other fear whatsoever. But it was just like, I was like, no, if I do that, I'll just, like, clock my chin on the dock, and that's it. I'll just die instantly. My head will just fucking pop up like a Pez dispenser. But, uh, I don't know how many times that that's probably actually happened in the history of dock jumps. Probably, like, zero. It would take some, like, tremendously crazy luck for that to happen and also too the weird thing about like injuries like that is I feel like you'd have to hit it fucking perfectly for it to actually do any like serious long term damage because yeah physics and like the human body is weird like that man 
how it's like you can probably do a backflip off a dock and hit your chin on it, but then like um, it'll just like basically your chin will just like slip off the wood somehow. And it would probably like hurt as long as you didn't like, I don't know, bite your tongue or something. That fucking suck. But uh, I've seen some people take some nasty, nasty fucking spills, man. And they've just been like perfectly fine afterwards. They say that, um. Where the fuck does this go? They say that, uh, in car crashes, people who are drunk tend to survive, um, the most with the least amount of injuries. Because if you're super drunk and you get in a car crash, you have no fucking idea what's going on. So you just, like, don't react to it and your body goes limp and you just fucking blah, 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 right? So I don't know how much truth there is to that. That's like a long running thing that I've read numerous times, but I don't know what kind of science you could do concerning that. Captain Doby says, I came across a video many years ago of a guy who dived and smacked his head into the seawall. His face wasn't pleasant when they pulled him out. Yeah, that's fucking crazy, dude. Doing cliff dives and shit, I've only done that a couple times in my life, man. It took me like a long, long time to get the courage up to. I felt like a jackass because everybody had to wait on me for like 15 minutes or something. And, uh, and I fucking jumped, but... I always like, you know, as long as you're not the first person to jump, then you know it's like, okay, it's probably pretty good. Um, it was out at, a, out at a lake nearby where I live, and it's like super, super deep off a fucking cliff, but it was a good, uh, it was a good 60, 60 feet or something. It's a fucking big ass jump, man. There's like the 60 footer, and then I think there's like a 35 footer or something, but I did the 60. But yeah, I've only only did that once. We went uh, we went rock climbing too. This is when I was like I'm like 34 now. I was like probably 20, or maybe 19. So I was like, you know. uh, I don't know how to put it. I don't want to say I was dumber, but I certainly fucking was. But like, yeah, we went like uh, we went rock climbing on all this shale and shit. I wasn't doing any like any like scaling of uh, you know, any like overhangs or anything crazy like that. But like, oh holy fuck. That was like, that was too much, man. I only did that once. Cause it's like, you get up there and it's like, you can't go back down. You only gotta fucking go up. It's the only way you can go. But you're just like, dude, I wish I was at home drinking a fucking pineapple, pineapple juice or something, watching cartoons like this is bullshit. But it made for some cool pictures, I guess. Gnarly, gnarly shit, man. Gnarly shit. Don't recommend it. But, uh, I mean, talking about injuries, man, I fucking, uh, I got in a fist fight a few years ago. That's kind of a story. I'm not, like, a big fist fighter. I don't recommend fist fighting. It's, uh, it's no good. It's no fun for anybody. But my problem is, if I, if I had a problem concerning fist fighting, is that, you know, you get six beers in you, and then what happens is, uh, you go to a party, and then some people get really disrespectful, either concerning yourself or your friends. This is my issue. And then, uh, you know, once I got the lowered inhibition there, I always try to like stand up for my friends. And I always forget, um, this has happened to me three times now. I always forget, and this is good advice if you're ever out and uh, you don't want to get in a fist fight, okay? So when you go up uh, to talk to some people who are being disrespectful, um, just remember that the fight starts three sentences before you would expect it to uh <laughs> as soon as you as soon as you fucking say the first thing the first fucking thing that they um that they fucking interpret as meaning maybe this is gonna start a fight then fucking immediately dude people are trying to put you in headlocks and hit you in the fucking face and so anyways that particular time uh, i ended up in a headlock and uh, i had three fucking guys dude Three guys hitting me in the fucking head as hard as they could from three different directions. And it, I don't, you probably can't see it on stream, but it shattered my orbital. I have a fucking dent here. Um, and like, lucky for me, it just made me uh, more handsome, I think, because it fucking, <laughs> it's a little dent where it's like, you know, you would kind of have, I kind of got one on the other side anyways, but it uh, shattered my uh, my orbital into there's like a sinus up there and it shattered it into my fucking sinus it was on a new year's a new year's party there and i remember uh, fucking walking home man i was just like kind of fucking embarrassed i did end up looking like a badass cuz the fight got broken up right and, I, and three guys were punching me in the fucking head 
for I don't know how many shots I took. I must have took five or six from each of them, right? And then I was still walking around the party afterwards being like, hey now, let's all just calm down. I just want to know who was punching me in the head. That's all. Like, I don't want to start another fight. I just want to know who was fucking hitting me so we can shake hands and shit. And they all fucking hid in separate rooms of the house and nobody would fucking admit to anything, man. And it's like, I didn't really want to know anyways because it's like, fuck, then it's brings up a whole nother can of worms where people are like, oh, well, why, why don't you go get revenge, man? It's like, because I wasn't, I'm not a fucking fighter, dude. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to like, beat people up anyways. I fucking hate hitting people. It's the worst feeling in the world. I'm always like, I'm always concerned about uh, causing permanent damage to someone or ruining their life or whatever. But anyways, point being of this story is that fucking uh, part of my skull got shattered. Um, it was broken and it was bleeding into my sinuses and I was just like fucking blood was going down my throat the whole night. And like, I'll be honest with you, man. Had, uh, had I imagined that as a teenager or a young adult, that situation, it seemed like it would have been completely horrific, but like the truth is, it didn't really hurt that much, and it wasn't really that big of a deal, and like, I'm fucking lucky that it didn't, uh, it didn't fucking kill me, dude, there's like some crazy shit that can happen when your skull gets broken, right, so for the next like few months, I was kind of like, uh, yeah, I hope I don't just fucking just keel over randomly at the dinner table or something, but like, yeah, it's weird. That's why I think that if you did do a gainer off a dock and hit your fucking, hit your chin, it's it's just like, you probably just walk away and be like, oh shit, bro. Unless you like shattered your jaw or something, but this is what I'm saying. I think that the wood on the dock wouldn't be enough to break the jaw. The human body is just fucking phenomenal, dude. The amount of punishment it can take sometimes. But, you know, every time you fuck around, you roll the dice, and sometimes you're just going to roll the dice and it's going to come up wrong, so... Uh, selling the fucking minerals here at Plunder. Um, got all those. I just want to make sure because I forgot to buy sugar one time. And it would have been a perfect run, man, if it wasn't for that fucking sugar. But I still made, uh, 363k or whatever. I got there in the title. You can check that shit out. I think I have it on, under the highlights. So you know I'm not lying. But yes, onward to, uh, Golden Sands sell the gemstones. Someone's gonna have a big old fucking crazy crystal party. Always gotta laugh at the fact that like these commodities reset every five in-game days, right? So it's like sailing by that place, uh, bringing them fucking 15 crates of unsorted gemstones every five days. It's like, what are you guys doing? And that never even occurred to me that maybe they were having a crazy crystal party. Or like, uh, fucking some crazy seance, seance shit. Or they're just like, they probably got a whole room just full of, uh, full of crystals. Just crystal nuts. Which is fine, man, but you know. I need to see some, uh, I need to see some science on that. It is weird though, like I said, you can take a fucking quartz crystal or any, any of these crystals, man. And you run, uh, I have a 12 band radio and you run a radio over them and like, they emit radio waves. I don't know what the fuck's up with that. Um, I think the idea is like, for instance, how a fucking uh, a magnet works. Uh, like an iron magnet, for instance. So in order for a magnet to work, so so they say, I don't know, never taking a look at the atoms myself, but uh, all the molecules in the iron magnet, they have to be aligned um, in one direction. And then somehow it's the energetic forces of each molecule in the magnet work together to make like a magnetic field, right? So in a crystal, uh, when a crystal forms of any type of mineral, it's the same concept as a magnet where all of the molecules are aligned in the same direction because they form a lattice uh, at the molecular level as they, they form into a fucking a crystal. So like... I don't know what the fucking the deal is with the field they generate. I mean, like I said, some people think that crystals have fucking healing properties and shit. I'm not one of those people. But they do emit fields of energy uh, that you can measure with a 12-band radio, so I don't fucking know. It's some pretty crazy shit. This is good if we could catch some wind here heading up northwest. I always say uh, hitting the south and north and northwest passages here are the longest ones. So if you do, uh, if you do do these and you can hit some wind, then you can get your fucking run shortened a bit. 
Because I've done these solo in five in-game days before. Usually when I'm telling stories about crystals and shit, it takes longer. Uh, usually ten. Uh, or six or seven. It's like fifteen for the whole the whole thing. See how far we've been going now. We're at the hour and a half mark here. Dude, four days at sea. Only 18,000 gold earned. Uh, I only make like the real money once the emissary flag gets up. So it's funny how like the first two and a half hours you barely make anything, and then, uh, and then you just start making mad bank. Doesn't say how many times I've been sunk here, but I'm so proud of this shit. 3.3 uh, million coins, and I've only been sunk twice, man. And uh, people say this game has fucking too much PvP, and if you're not like a super sweat lord, then you can't get anywhere playing it. But it's like. That was my original inspiration for starting these streams. Um, was to just film a series. I was going to do a supercut, post it on the subreddit, and be like, look at this shit. You can solo sloop, and you can still make millions and millions of coins. Buy your fucking eight and a half million dollar sales, and you don't have to really worry about PvP. Because a lot of people think they should put a PvE only uh, mode in this game, and I completely disagree. I think that that's missing the point, man. It's all about getting out here and having. 80k worth of shit on your ship like this and like you never know somebody might roll up and try to sink me but uh, I have ways of evading them and I'll get to show some of those off if it does happen but uh, you know this is like stream 6 and it's been pretty chill I've only gone in two chases so far so like I've been saying um, in a couple of streams here probably on stream number 11 I'm gonna switch over to the, the PC uh, the PC servers because I am on the uh, the joysticks only servers but People don't even believe, like, that's the number one recommendation if people say, oh, there's too much PvP. They're like, if you're on Xbox, or whatever, I guess Xbox, because shit is only on Xbox, but yeah, go to the fucking Xbox controller-only servers, and they're a lot more chill, and people are like, no, no, I was sunk once. Oh, I was sunk once, and it was so embarrassing. Which, like, yeah. Shame and embarrassment fucking sucks, man, but if you can, like, power through that feeling, then you can fucking pretty much do anything in life. I think that's like the number one thing, like in my personal experience. I know there's people out there who have like other, other like legit disabilities, man. But for me, it's like the fucking fear of failure. Uh, not even the fear. It's like the fear of embarrassment, dude. Cause it's like, ah, oh, fuck. But I also have like a huge ego sometimes. But then it's like, you need that ego to get shit done, right? You gotta fucking have confidence in yourself. And then it's like, when you just fail spectacularly, like you're the captain of a ship and your ship gets fucking wrecked in PvP and you're playing with friends and shit and it's like that fucking dark moment when that shit, uh, when you're all sitting there on the beach and the ship respawns and it's like, yeah, so we're we gonna go again? No, I don't, no, of course not. I gotta go eat dinner. Yeah, okay, bye. And everybody just disconnects and it's like, ugh. It's a dark, dark feeling, but like, if you can fucking just learn to revel in it and get past it and get the fuck out on the sea again, then yeah, dude, you can, you can get some fucking successes in there. Captain Doby says, too much PvP, and I'm pretty sure the Jim Morrison sinking incident was actually down to the skeleton, skeleton sleeps. Yeah, okay, so, so 100%, 100% I agree with you, because if it wasn't for those skeleton sloops, I wouldn't have sunk, but also, um, had I had more than nine planks of wood, I also wouldn't have sunk, I don't think. Oh, fuck that, I'm gonna see what that shit is. That's a lot of shit, man. Should've cranked this for a fucking better club ball, but whatever. I usually ignore this loot, but that's a lot of loot. Because I always do, when I do these merchant runs, and uh, when I used to do the cargo runs and stuff, it's always funny playing with people who've never done them. Sometimes I'd run uh, LFG posts, have another guy on the sloop, but I stopped doing that because uh, what happens is like, I do this shit solo so much that having another guy like touching my sails and moving the map around and shit, I just get all OCD about it. And I'm like, just don't, just don't, just stand in the corner, man. Just don't touch anything. I don't need you to do shit. Like just move the cargo once in a while or whatever. And I don't want to like, I don't want to be a jackass because obviously people want to fucking help sail the ship and stuff, but it's like, I really don't need them to do it. But it's funny trying to explain to people how it's like, you know, that's a lot of shiny loot, but um, the amount of money we make just running togas the people. Oh yeah, okay. Way to go, Hogwild. Ten points off my fucking record. Um, 
the amount of money you get running the commodities, like, once I get to level 5 emissary here, I'll make, like, 30k a stop, right? So it's like, how much is this loot really worth? Not 30k, especially not with the flag. But uh, there's so much of it, I want to maybe get my flag up a bit. We'll see. Looks like somebody sunk a skelly sloop is what happened here. Didn't collect the loot. I also saw a brig out there in the horizon somewhere, right? I'll just... Since I'm stopped, I want to just make sure he's not going to fucking ride up and say hello. Like last stream. I just want to give you supplies, man. <laughs> I just want to be your friend. I just I just want to, like, let's make an alliance, dude. Now that uh, your name shows up on your captain's ships, right? It's like everybody fucking sends you messages when they're chasing you around. And they all say they want to be friendly. But my advice, Captain Hogwild says, don't fucking fall for it. These people are not your friends. <laughs> Especially when you have uh, 80k worth of loot on the deck like me. But you know, sometimes like when I'm running a crew, uh, especially like if we're on a brig or a galleon, um, I'll roll up. Captain Doby says nobody uses in-game text chat that much on PC. Oh yeah, I never thought of that because I'm on the Xbox server. So what happens is I get uh, I get messages through the Xbox Live app because they'll see the my name when it says uh, the Centennial Falcon Captain by Super Hogwild, and then they're like Super Hogwild, and they just fucking they look you up and they just send you messages through the the app. So even if they're all the way on the horizon, as long as they can see you, you'll get fucking messages from them. Which is dope, I kind of like that, because now you can talk to other captains, invite them to party chat or whatever, and you don't have to get close to them. But uh, that was part of the fun of it before, like if you do want to play the game more socially and uh, you know risk your loot or whatever, my advice is get close enough to people, but um, just don't let them on your ship, man. Just let them fucking know, that's what we would always do. We go up and we talk to people and you can, if you want to exchange loot or whatever, just have a little chat. You can sail close so you can hear the the in-game chat or whatever. And then you just like, just don't don't fucking let them on the ship. You just tell them, like, if you come on this ship, man, you're going to get blundied. And then we're just going to fucking put 100 cannonballs in you without any remorse or um, hesitation whatsoever. Okay, so we're looking good. Looking good now. Looking like a fucking good target. Let's see if we get some heat. Captain Doby says, everybody that seems to notice you sends you messages on the Xbox. Yep. Um, do they do that on PC too? Because I know that, like, I think you kind of you kind of have to have the same app or something. I've never played it on PC, so I don't know what the deal is. But I know you can play it on Steam, and it's the same servers, so you probably don't need the app to play it. But, but uh, yeah. It's weird, cause it's it's weird, cause like uh, Deep Rock Galactic, for instance, that game's uh, cross-platform. Um, but if you buy it on Steam, it's not cross-platform with the Xbox. But if you buy it on the fucking uh, the Microsoft Store or something, then it is. So there's like two sets of cross-platform servers. I don't know if they've merged them or what, but I was talking to a dude about that, and that's what he said. So, so it must be true, dude. If one dude on the internet said it, but like whatever. I trust him. He's one of my good Deep Rock Galactic buddies. Captain Doby says, Nope, I've ever only ever received one message via the app, and it was some guy telling me to get out of the arena because I was using the Legendary Hunter Fishing title! <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, I love that shit so much. Captain Doby says, Barely anybody uses the in-game chat uh, text chat either. That's surprising, because I, I would think since everybody has a, a keyboard, they'd use the in-game text chat a lot. But also, too, I mean, if they're not using the Xbox chat, then they're probably not, like, maybe they're using Discord or something, because, like, on uh, on the Xbox in this game, right, like, if, you ha if you're in a party chat, which almost everybody runs the party chat, um, you, you don't show up in-game uh, proximity chat. So nobody can hear you, and you also can't hear anybody else in proximity chat. Um, but on PC, if they're not doing that, then maybe everybody just uses the in-game proximity or something I'm not sure or discord I guess would work or like literally anything there's a million million apps for that yeah, I'm way too far east here I gotta get on the other side of this island here 
Yeah, called it. Captain Doby says, that guy was so upset he was targeting my galleon. He lost every bite. Even stood over him. Cast a fishing line to rub it in. Dude, that's fucking dope. I love that shit. I love when people just get fucking just just rage. Just rage on video games about the dumbest shit. I uh, I had a friend over who didn't play uh, Xbox games and we were playing PUBG one time. And holy fuck, I was just like, I was like, okay, so like, just so you know, we're going to be playing with randoms and like, you're going to hear some crazy shit, but don't worry about it. People are just really high strung in this game, man. And sure enough, some guy was just like fucking yelling at our other teammates. Get the fuck off the road. What the fuck are you guys doing? Like all this shit. We're just like. Yeah, it's fucking funny shit. I did have to tell uh, my friend to stop shooting his gun all willy nilly though. Because like, you know. PUBG, that's really the only way that you can tell. It's the only way that you can tell that you're in a firefight is when your teammates start shooting your, your weapons and shit. So it's like, dude, every time you shoot that gun, like, our teammates think we're engaging the enemy. So, whatever. But I like that shit. It's not that I like to, uh, to troll people and make them rage, but it's like... I don't know, it's just fucking fun to see people get into it, you know? Like, that's kind of what it's about. It's like, dude, the game's not real, but the experience is. That's fucking crazy, though. The, uh, that fisherman, fisherman title. Legendary hunter fishing title. I want one of those. Got a bug on my screen. Captain Doby says, funnily enough, he went silent after that. Yep. The old silence of shame. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Cause it's like, you know, if you ever if you ever wanna actually get good at uh, a PvP game, uh, any kind of it, you gotta like you gotta keep your emotions in check, one way or the other. I even don't like to uh, like you gotta enjoy like, how do I put this? You gotta enjoy the victory, right? But you gotta be careful, like, at least, I mean, I don't know, it's different for everybody, but for me, I try to, like, not enjoy it too much. Because then, like, the more I get, like, thirsty for that victory, then I feel like it gets in the way, uh, and I just feel worse when I fail somehow. So I try to keep as, like, level-headed as possible. Because it doesn't help, man. A lot of people think it doesn't help for me, anyways. A lot of people think that it, you know, uh, the rage and the adrenaline and everything helps them play, but it's like it doesn't help for me. I try to think of everybody that I uh, that I'm going up against. I try to I try to treat them with like kind of an equal amount of respect. Because it's like you know, like I said about Battlefield, it's like if these guys. Uh, or even like Sea of Thieves, for instance. I mean, if these guys fucking answered your LFG post and they joined your ship, you'd be best friends with them. But just because they spawned on an enemy ship, it's like you fucking treat them like they're uh, like they're the worst human beings on the planet, and you just want to fucking uh, you know win at at all costs. Which is fine, but for me, I just you know I don't know. I find it really helps. It helps my aim. It helps lower my fucking adrenaline a bit. It lowers the stakes in a sense because if you have a kind of like respect for your opponent then you don't um, you don't feel so embarrassed when you get beaten by them because it's like yeah okay you know this is a fucking dude just a dude just a dude or do that out there man but also too funny enough right talking about respect to your opponent um, I also never, ever, ever hold back uh, when I'm in PvP. Because I, uh, I had that problem when I was playing Battlefield 1. Because, like, Battlefield 1, the sniping was just, like, fucking whack in that game. So you could just sit there with uh, the long-range sniper rifle. Let's see if I can nail this. You just sit there with the, the long-range sniper rifle, and it was just like a turkey shoot. And you'd get like 50 kills to 4 deaths. And I started to like, first time ever playing a PvP game, man, that I started to feel like, 
like what I was doing was maybe wrong. I was like, am I playing the game right? Like, am I cheating? Am I just shooting like, like eight year olds? Like, who the fuck am I fighting against, man? Like, this is weird. Like, should I dial it back? Because we've all been sniped before in a game like that. It's not fun. Uh, you're just like going about your business and then all of a sudden you just get popped, one-shotted, and it's like pulls you right out of the experience. But then I started to think about it and it's like, you know, okay, here's the bottom line about a game like Battlefield or a game like Chivalry or any kind of uh, PvP game like that. Is that, uh, you know, everybody's there to compete, right? That's the whole point of the game is it's a competition. And uh, people want to be good, right? So I think that really... The worst thing that you can do is to hold back uh, because then uh, people are getting a false sense of satisfaction. They think they're better than they actually are, but what is actually happening is you're, you're holding back and you're letting them win a little bit. And uh, I think you should be as just ruthless and relentless as possible because that way they can get a taste of what uh, the absolute worst case scenario is. Uh, playing that game and they can adjust their own uh, strategies accordingly and adjust their own uh, their own practice and realize that you know maybe they got to step their own game up and so that's uh, that's kind of like the mindset I I've gotten into playing that uh, I had to come up with that because like I said it was getting to the point where I was like hesitating pulling the pulling the trigger on the controller there because I was like dude I don't know how I feel about this anymore <laughs> getting 50 kills and four deaths or whatever but, uh, yeah, then I realized, I was like, one, it's just a game, and two, that's the whole point of the game, you know? It's like, uh, a lot of these people, who they're like, they're like, oh, I just, you know, I work all day, and then I get off work, and all I want to do is have some fun, and there's all these sweaties, and they just annihilate me, and it's not cool. And it's like, for one, a lot of these sweaties, you know, we fucking, we work too. Not that I consider myself a sweaty, but it's like, um... A lot of us have just been playing the games for 10 years, you know, like Chivalry. I started playing uh, games like that when Mountain Blade Warband first came out and they added the multiplayer mode to it. And that was like the first sword fighting game like that. So, you know, some of these people have just been at it for 10 years. Uh, another thing too is sometimes it's just luck. We all have our good matches and our bad matches. You see that in Chivalry too a lot. Where like um, somebody will be like 50 kills and five deaths on chivalry and it'll be like holy shit that's amazing and then you play another round with them and the next round they're like 15 kills 15 deaths even and even and low on the thing so for whatever reason their fighting style just fit that battle that one battle and they were just absolutely tearing through people kicking ass and then whatever it's just luck and then another thing too you know is like you got a question like these people who say oh i just wanted to have a good time and it's like okay but what's a good time to you you're not just there to enjoy the spectacle of the fight like you want to win and you just admit it that you're not having fun because you're not winning so like maybe you need to step back and realize like your own expectations of yourself are like a little overblown and uh if if you put yourself in the position where the only way you're gonna have fun is to win then like you need to fucking practice because like if you're that bad that you're not winning what do you want do you want to go play against like literally some people's kids who are like six years old and then you're gonna beat them and then you're gonna have fun because that's whack right like don't you want a worthy opponent to show you like what an actual challenge is so when you can best them you can fucking feel good about it like you want it to feel good so i don't know once again maybe some fucking some hot garbage takes but uh that's my philosophy to pvp man that's my flag out here or because it's tough getting your fucking ass whooped again and again and again and again sometimes but uh whenever i play battlefield that was always my favorite matches um, the ones where we just fucking stomp are not really that fun because then, like, for one, it's tough to get kills because everybody's steamrolling and it's like... You gotta start using a sniper rifle just to shoot the guys before your own front line gets up to cut them down. It's like, holy shit. Um, but I like the I like the matches in Battlefield playing Breakthrough where we get stuck and we can't break through because then you gotta start coming up with, like, crazy tactics and really identifying what the issue is with your team not being able to move forward and you gotta fucking activate the old brain cells man and get in there and and figure it out and kick some uh some real ass and to me that's when it gets like, you get the real satisfaction is when your team's getting stomped and then you figure out why the team's getting stomped you switch classes 
you approach the situation from a different angle and then you start breaking apart their defense and then the team starts moving again. It's like, oh, dude, it's so satisfying. That's the fucking, the real good shit. But, uh, there are some situations. This one guy, I was playing uh, Chivalry 2 and he invited me to his, uh, his Chivalry 2 group there. You could tell I was a Chivalry veteran. Um, and it was fucking funny because, like, in uh, Chivalry 2, there's two kinds of servers. There's 40-man servers, and then there's 64-man servers. And this guy invited me to his group, and um, what he did is uh, they'd take eight people in an Xbox party chat, and then uh, they'd go on a 40-man server, and all these guys were ranked, like, level 500-plus, fighting all these dudes, level 40. And uh, there's a bug where uh, sometimes it doesn't put you on the right team, so I was on the opposite team watching this shit. And it was like, dude, it was just like a meat grinder. I seriously, um, I felt like I was watching a fucking war crime or something. I was like, dude, this is nuts. I cannot be a part of this. Even if it put me on the right team, like, I cannot. Like, this, the team stacking is just fucking insane. Insano. So, yeah. All different angles of it, man. All different angles. Cause that was some crazy shit. I mean, when you see like, it was a line of eight of them and it was just nothing but like, kicks, overhands, fucking whatever. And it was like, everybody who ran to the front line just instantly died. And I'm just standing back there thinking like, well, it's chivalry, so I can't use a sniper rifle. Cause that's usually like, if you're playing Battlefield and you're in a, a breakthrough match and uh, things aren't really working out, usually you just pick a sniper rifle one way or the other. Uh, Cause you know, if you're on defense and the front line's just, like, you know, getting burgered, then um, you can pull back and just use a, a sniper, win that way. And sometimes if you're you're kicking too much ass, you have to use the sniper because the enemy team is too far away, hiding behind sandbags and stuff. So, But yeah, in Chivalry, it's like, dude, if you don't have, like, at least a little bit of a front line, then you can't really do shit. I'm gonna probably do some chivalry streams this week, we'll see. I'm gonna wait till I get the Elite Series 2 back though. Cause uh, that's a game that definitely is a fucking controller buster. I don't wanna wear this one out. I'll still do uh, I'll still do these ones at six or whatever, but then I might do uh, might do some chivalry ones earlier or on my days off or whatever. We'll see. See how it goes. Totally different kind of stream though, for sure, because I wouldn't be able to fucking talk about shit playing a game like that. It would just be all gameplay commentary. But who knows, it might be entertaining because uh, the way I play those games, man, I really try to fucking get into the flow of the whole battle. Like when it's 32 on 32, I try to figure out where like everybody on the map is at and then you figure out where the best place to apply yourself is. And how to like, you know, work the formations and shit with other people on the fly. Like what I would usually do, I played Halberder at the start. So you get those heavy ass over, overhead swings, but uh, you barely have any health. So I'd just play second line where everybody's all fighting and then I'd stand back and eventually two people would be fighting and they'd reverse and the guy's back would be, to more, be towards me and then I'd just Halbert him, get a kill that way. So I oh, didn't pay the ghost tax today. Look at this shit. Lamo. I think that was the last piece anyways. It's still not so bad, but... Somebody down under the sea, uh, moving my anchor around, man. It's those fucking mermaids. Yeah, Shibby, it's the fucking mermaids. I know, boy. It's no good. No good. Okay, so uh, am I fucking emissary five yet? Nope, not emissary five. Got a lot of shit on board here. Heading on over to sanctuary. Two hours in, haven't had any trouble yet, man. Smooth sailing. What 
am I going to be selling there? Sanctuary is sugar. And then, uh, good old dagger tooth. Oh yeah, there was a reaper on the map at the start of this. I forgot to fucking check on him. They're always flying over, uh, the shores of plenty here. It's like reaper land because of the reaper's hideout. What do we got? That was a weird one because he was uh, only a rank one emissary, but he was also hanging out at the Reaper's Island, so I don't know if he was just like... Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's still doing some shit. Trader's Fate Fortress, so I guess he's doing uh, Skull Fort, probably. Try to sneak past him uh, when he comes down to sell, whenever that is. I guess this is that piece of cloth you can change the color of. I don't know what that skull emblem is that's on there. I don't think there's any other cloth around here. So that's gotta be it. Can't decide on the color I'm gonna put for that. I either wanna do it that bright orange or keep it all mute. Do like blues and stuff. Bright orange could be cool though. I don't think it would make me easier to spot. It's just like a tiny little piece of cloth, so. Who knows, man? Good times on the open ocean. Is that? Oh yeah, okay. That's not gonna work. Oh yeah, I was gonna cook those pork chops. Yeah, man, you got me thinking about that uh, when those in that uh, Jim Morrison sink video with those skeleton sloops, because uh, those guys were right on my ass. That would have been a close call, anyways, even if I would have had wood. I keep saying that it's like, oh, if I had the wood, maybe I would have definitely got away. But it's like, eh. I was hoping, like, you know, depending on what side that uh, skelly sloop was hitting me from. I might have been able to shake it off at the shore. But uh, I ended up smashing that ship fucking right into the shore anyways. But I was so like uh, cooked on adrenaline at the time that I don't even really know what I was thinking. Like I, I, I'm not sure if at that point, cause like once I ran out of wood, right? It was kind of like, okay. This runs over anyways because I was taking water. I guess uh, now that I think about it, I was I was busy bailing like a fucking madman because I was trying to stay afloat for as long as possible. But uh, as I was bailing, I ended up running the ship directly into that island after that uh, that anchor turn, which is fucking dope. But I mean, even with that anchor turn, those guys pulled an anchor turn of their own and they were like still right on my ass. And then that uh, skelly sleep was still on me as well. So I would have had to have somehow... Um, hit the corner of the island and like went around it in the direction opposite that the skelly sloop was on so it would have run the skelly sloop into the island and then I would have to keep keep circling as I was repairing and bailing and then if I could have done that then like I don't know man after that it's just sort of a sort of an open book you know an unfinished story I've never really uh, I've never really been in a situation like that before 
with, um, you know, the two sloops. So, whether or not I could have kept it going around that island enough to, uh, to break off from the island. Like, you know, if you can keep going around and then you get them on the opposite side and then you break off upwind, it's, uh, all just depends on whether or not they want to follow me to another island and I can try it again. And then, of course, like, once I break off, it's like, okay, uh, I got to break off at a point where that skelly sloop wasn't going to follow me as well. So that's tough. Um, but if I could have gotten, like, both of those skelly sloops trained onto their brig, and then they had to deal with those skelly sloops while I sailed off, excuse me, into the sunset, I could have. But that's a pretty crazy roll, man. I don't know if I could have pulled that off. That would take some mad luck. Crazy, crazy luck. State your business, please. State my business. Give me all of your commodities, lady. You've seen me before. You've seen me. Of course they need the sugar. Sugar, sugar. Making brownies. Making brownies, making hot cakes, making pancakes. Gotta put the sugar in the tea. Gotta pour a little bit in the corner of your eyeballs, cause that's how you get the fucking super sugar buzz. Gotta uh, rub it between your toes. You can use it as like a, a solvent to get grease off your hands. I mean, 15 crates every five days. They gotta be doing something creative with this stuff that I don't know about yet. Captain Toby says, who knows, you had a brig, two skeleton sloops, and possibly two flares from the brig shooting to the island to try and board you from there. It's a lot to focus on. Yep, there was uh, definitely two two people on the island, which uh, could have worked to my advantage because if they're on the island and then the, the, the brig has to deal with the skeleton sloops, and he's only got one guy on board, then, like, that might have, uh... That might have kind of, like, messed up the rhythm enough that I could have escaped. Like, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a lot to focus on, man. That was fucking fun when that was going on. That's why I've been kind of hoping that that would happen again here. But I think I'm probably just gonna have to switch servers. And if I fucking seriously switch servers, and, uh, I do another 10 streams, and I don't get any chases, then like, I don't know. I don't even know what to say, except that I'm gonna make a really funny video for the subreddit. That's all I gotta say about that. I gotta buy like a green screen and stuff. I've been thinking about it. I got some good ideas. Like I said, I was gonna just like, Post clips and shit, what the fuck? This sketches me out when he does that. What are you fucking barking about? What are you barking about, Shibby? I haven't seen a ship in so long, there's no fucking way that that's a ship. That's a ship, though. A little sloopy dude. my nerves, boy. You're fraying my nerves. Oh my lord. Shibby dibby doo. Speaking of shibby dibby doo, man, how fucking... How bad does that Velma show look? Good god. 
that's like a that's like a next level of bad shows. I think we've reached a new era of terrible television. Cuz uh, I haven't seen it. I don't have HBO Max. I'm not going to pirate it or anything. Well, I mean, maybe I might. I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be terrible, but people say that it sounds like the jokes were written by uh like that fucking chat GPT or whatever. Like it was written by a like a neural net, which I am not even I'm not even surprised if that is the case that they actually uh, they actually used one of those fucking neural net uh, programs to start the script, start the jokes or something. But I kind of want to see it just for uh, just for the train wreck, you know. There's bad shows, and then this this just seems like it's gonna be a fucking an ultra bad show. Like I used to watch. Um, I'm big into cringe material. I don't know why. I don't know if that makes me a bad person. I wouldn't think so. It's not like. I feel like. I don't know. Part of it is like, actually empathy for others. But it's just that feeling of secondhand embarrassment. I used to watch, um, like I used to watch videos of uh, like public wedding uh, proposal rejections. It's just so like, oh, it's it's just unbearable, man. It's almost unbearable. But I would do it anyways, because it's just like a powerful experience. So I don't know. I might watch, uh, I might watch that. But we'll see. Dude, I tried to play, uh, speaking of fucking shit that's not really that good, I tried to play that High on Life game. Um, I like the first, uh, the first few seasons of Rick and Morty there. It's been out for fucking almost ten years now, so I don't know what season they're on now. I haven't watched it in ages, but, like, dude, I tried to play that game, and, like, I fucking couldn't do it. I couldn't get, uh, more than three hours into it, which I don't know. It was maybe the second level or something, because it was just like, holy shit, every fucking character in that game is so annoying. And, uh, like, Justin Roiland, uh, he does this thing where he fucking stutters constantly. Um, which is like, you know... It, the way he does it is just fucking, oh, it's just, it's awful. It was awful, man. I think that, like, you know, if you would have to pick one voice, one voice that uh, you're going to have to hear for the whole game. I mean, he does a lot of different voices, right? I'm not delivering that. Um, he does a lot of different voices, so why would he pick Morty's voice? It's like the most annoying voice in the show. And you just have to listen to Morty's voice the whole time. It's not even, like, it's not even Morty's voice. It was just, like, every character in it was fucking annoying. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just not for me. Some people liked it, I guess. Most people don't. Which I was like, uh, you know. Not really, like, surprised. I guess kind of surprised, because I thought more people would like the game, but I just, I absolutely couldn't stand it. Most people had the same thing to say. I mean, it's not, it's like, not even the delivery of his lines, too. It's just like, Fuck, some of those jokes, like, I almost felt like he hates, like, he hates people. Like, he, like, he hates me for playing his game. Um, because there's this dude, uh, Joel Haver. Oh, what's this? Skelly Sloop? There's that guy Joel Haver on YouTube, right? He's a funny dude. He does some videos. I used to watch those all the time. But, uh, yeah, he, he does a character in that game. Where the whole point of the character is just to be fucking annoying, right? But, uh, I didn't find that character any more or less annoying than any of the other characters in the game. Is that it? I'm at level 5 here anyway, so whatever. He'll probably follow me all the way to the Galleons here. Or Dagger Tooth, rather. But yeah, so it's funny, because, like, they specifically put a character in the game whose, like, whole point was to annoy you. So they know what annoying is. Like they, it's not like they don't realize their comedy isn't annoying because they wrote a whole fucking dude who just like flies around your head and annoys you for 15 minutes. 
and you can't get rid of them. But it's like, that's basically every character in the game, man. But it was pretty, like, pretty decent shooter. I mean, there's only, like, one one gun type, one weapon type, so that was weird. But I wanted to play through it, but I literally couldn't. I just, I couldn't get through it. It was crazy. I like the concept, though, um, how it was, like, the whole thing is kind of like one big cutscene almost. Like, you everywhere you walk around, there's, like, people talking to you and shit. And that was really cool. I was, like, super excited when I first uh, I came on Game Pass there and I first booted it up and then I started playing it. And I was like, yeah, dope. And then, like, after an hour, I was like, oh, this is, like, this is getting aggravating. And then, like, after three hours, I was like, I can't do it, man. I gotta delete it. Gotta get rid of it, man. So, I don't know. It kind of makes me want to look into like who works on his game studio because it was a really like a really well put together game. That was kind of the thing that disappointed me the most is that like if it wasn't him and it wasn't his comedy, it would have been like just fucking fantastic. But uh, I mean, if you're, I would even it's so tough, man, because I'd even say like if you're into into his comedy, I'd recommend it. But it's like, dude, I liked Rick and Morty, but I don't know if Rick and Morty now is like a different show or what. Because a lot of shows don't they don't uh, stay the same. Also, I should make sure that I'm not going to run into that Reaper. Who's probably out here. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a weird one. I have so much cargo on this shit, man. I guess I'll just go do things as usual. Go sail over to uh, Dagger Tooth. I'll try to use some islands for cover here. I'll just have to keep a close eye on him when he's on the map. I could at least sell those gemstones in the front as well. I'm at level 5 emissary now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Now that all those uh, those neural net uh, programs are out, that chat GPT or whatever I think it's GPT, uh, to see if that's uh, going to affect the quality of entertainment coming out. Because I mean, people are saying that that Velma show legit uh, seems like like they used a fucking neural net to write the script. Like it's just awful. Um, and I know there's a lot of people like using those things to cheat through university, which is fucking funny. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that changes things. I've been really thinking about like, you know, watching movies and shows and stuff. It's like, what even makes a show a good show? What even makes it? makes it watchable or unwatchable. Because I was talking about like story arc types and stuff. Oh, that's a lot of water. But I don't think that that's even the problem. Now I'm just thinking like, uh, thinking like it just has to do more with like, uh, I don't even know, the characters. But I was talking about like, you know, likable characters in uh, that SAS Rogue Heroes, for instance. And it's like, yeah, okay, so a lot of those dudes aren't likable, but it's still a good show. It's weird, man. Entertainment's weird. I watched a movie on uh, Prime there. There were uh, advertisements for it. It was called, uh, it was called Meat or something it's like a romantic comedy or something but not really I mean it was supposed to be but it only got a fucking 5.6 on IMDB and usually that's too low uh, it's too low for me to check something out because I've watched some real stinkers man but uh, it was entertaining but it was also like something about it was off 
I thought the concept was kind of funny because it's just like it's just like a stupid comedy, man, with this girl. Uh, she goes to date this guy, but she has a fucking time machine, so she like keeps going on the same date over and over again. But it's not like it's not a serious movie because uh, the time machine is like it's like a fucking tanning bed at a nail salon. There's just like no explanation for why there's a time machine at a tanning bed at a nail salon. I don't know. It was entertaining. And I, I laughed. I had a few laughs. But again, uh, I guess she's from that show. Uh, what the heck is that called? Um, by the same dude who did uh, Two and a Half Men or whatever. With that Sheldon character. Something about fucking something. How do I even not remember this shit? Now I gotta look it up because this is stupid. Uh, The Big Bang Theory. Yeah, so I never watched an episode of that in my life. Um, but it's got the, the actress. She's from that show, so I don't know. Some people might know her. But I didn't. Um, she's just like... Not really... Not really a likable person again at all in the show. So it's like usually when you watch a romantic comedy... Fuck Shibby. Ghost Dog. Yeah, so usually when you watch a romantic comedy, it's like, you want to see like some, some likable characters, and she was like not really likable, but then that was kind of like part of the humor, but then like, I think the reason why I got a 5.9 is because like, none of it really made any sense at all in terms of like time travel. I mean, a lot of shows that have time travel in them don't make any sense just because of, like, the whole time travel paradox shit. But, uh, very early on, it's established that, uh, she travels back in time, like, 24 hours, right? And then she runs herself over with her own car every day for no reason at all. It doesn't really specify why she would even do that. Um... But then, okay, so it's like if she can run herself over with her car, her from the past, then why the fuck, uh, and not die, then how is it that, uh, that there's like a bunch of other, like, uh, weird time travel fucking loops and shit? God, I don't know. I just miss movies like, like, Demolition Man. That was a fucking good movie. I don't know what's going on with entertainment these days. But I'm determined to figure it out, man. When I do, I'll fucking let you know. Okay, so I got turned around completely. Bugger. Because I used to think that a good show was about, like... First I was like, okay. So it's about, like, you know, a story. Like the hero's journey is what they call it, right? So you, you have a, a character who is, uh, gets into some fucking trouble, then they train, and they become stronger, and then they overcome the trouble. And they don't really do that anymore. But then, like, uh, you know, it started making me think that it's like, well, it's not really about the story, it's about the characters. Because, like, what's entertaining, man, is you want to see, like, uh, entertaining, uh, interactions between people. Then I think it's like, now I'm starting to think it's like even more than that somehow. I'll watch something too, like that's why I recommend that show uh, Maniac on Netflix. That's got um, Jonah Hill in it and Emma Stone. That's a fucking cool show, just because of the aesthetic. It's got a good story too, actually. It's uh, pretty fresh. It doesn't take itself too seriously either. It, it gets into some kind of serious philosophical things, but the show itself is like kind of... Uh, it's a little goofy, but it's not too goofy. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just weird, but I totally recommend that shit. Maniac on Netflix. But yeah, it's got a really cool aesthetic where um, it like it takes place in the 80s, but they have like future technology. So there's like computers and robots, but they're all like all the computers are like Amigas and shitty like uh, like 80s stuff, right? But it's, they do like futuristic stuff with them. So that was cool. That was a cool show, I guess. Something I gotta think about, man. I gotta just sit, 
sit on a fucking stone down by the river, watch fish jump, and think about, like, what? What even makes a good movie? He's even talking about, like, uh, Star Wars. Like, if you watch some of the behind-the-scenes uh, cut footage from that, like, holy fuck, it was some bad footage, man, that they cut from the movie. That movie could have went completely the other way. It could have been just a fucking... Just another one of those crazy science fiction movies where it's just a bunch of guys running around in costumes and shitty backdrops and... And, uh, and then none of it would have been any good. But it just all kind of worked out in spite of itself. What even about the original Star Wars? Like, to me, that was, like, pretty basic journey. Like, talking about that hero's journey. That kind of stuck to that. That, uh, that plot line there. And then, uh... It had good characters, man. Um, you know. Han, Luke, and Leia were all three good characters. That were just fun to watch. Interact with each other. And other people. And, uh, you know, the special effects didn't really get in the way of the storytelling. It was cool stuff. Some about those models too, man. Seeing practical effects. There's like just a magic to them. It's, it's weird. Did you know that in uh, Die Hard, um, the Nakatomi Plaza fucking skyscraper was a model. And at the end of the movie where they fucking, they blew up the top and there's that helicopter and shit. Yeah, that shit was all models, man. But it was like fucking like an eight foot tall fucking skyscraper that they made. And they covered it in, it in uh, pictures that they took of the outside of the building and it was like all these pictures for the paneling that made it look like a real skyscraper. And then they blew that shit up. I would have never have thought that that was a model, man, but I guess if you, you have a big enough model then you can't really tell it's a model. So am I heading east here? This is always where there's like a little bit of weird shit in the way. Skelly guy actually hit me with one, how about that? Yeah, okay, I see where I'm going now. It's weird, it's always between uh, Sanctuary and Dagger Tooth. Sometimes I get a little turn around, turn around here now. Captain Doby says that's what films are missing out. Good practical effects where they actually blew something up. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a like that's a big thing, man. Back e even going back as far as like the 70s and the 80s. Um, like if you ever watch uh, Red Letter Media, they watch a lot of uh, a lot of VHS movies, uh, those low budget action films from like the 70s and 80s. And some of those films, that was like the whole film um, was just based around like, oh, we have an old car. So let's fucking film a scene where we blow the car up. And then that was like, that was the whole film, man. I mean, you just base a movie around like a couple of scenes where you, you blow a fucking a building up or, you, or a car or you huck a dummy off a roof or just like shit that's fucking uh, fun to see, man. Captain Doby says they even dropped Alan Rickman 40 feet for the film. Apparently they dropped him on two on a count of three. Yeah, I heard that. I heard about that. That's fucking funny. So when he's, when he's actually falling off the the skyscraper at the end of Die Hard. That surprise, that was real surprise, man. Yeah. That's what's funny about how uh, that new Top Gun movie, I haven't seen that, but everybody says it's fucking great. And at first I was like, why would you want to see a fucking Top Gun movie again? Like, didn't they do it before? But then as it turns out, that it's all practical effects, right? So they'd actually take uh, the actors into a uh, into fighter jets and rig up the cameras in the fighter jets and then they had to fucking fly around in these fighter jets as they were setting off pyrotechnics and then they land and then uh, sometimes they'd have to go do it again because the footage wasn't good they couldn't check the footage till they landed the, the fucking the jets and like that shot in the trailer where uh, there's a jet that takes off from the runway and it fucking flies over and it like almost knocks the roof off of that fucking uh, that little building at the end of the runway that was like not planned that was just from the force of the fucking jet flying so close to it, it like the roof goes like three feet up and down. Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. CGI is a weird thing because it's like it's just not fun to watch. Don't know what it is about it. Some CGI is fun to watch. I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, Battle Angel Alita 
that's uh, not on Netflix anymore, but like the CGI in that, dude, I don't know who the fuck worked on that, but it looked, it had like a real, uh, a real physical sense of motion to it when they were fighting and doing all the kung fu shit. It was like, it was like actual, um, like people with weight, um, fighting each other. It was weird, even though it was like completely fucking extraordinary shit. That was obviously CGI. There's no way it could have been real. But it just had like a real, a real visceral, physical feeling to it that I don't usually see in CGI movies. That was a fucking dope movie. It's too bad they're not going to make a sequel because I guess Disney owns the rights to it now or something because Disney just owns the rights to fucking everything. And they've just decided probably not to make a movie a sequel. Shibby, what is it, bud? What do we got? Is it a swimmer? Is it a keg? Literally nothing. Are you just barking at gemstones? Barking at the skull? Because it's just fucking... Whispering secrets to you? Yeah, man. Yeah, that was a good movie. Um, what the fucking... That's something else to say about that, but I forgot. CGI, I just find that, like, a lot of it doesn't have any weight. Which is weird, because you'd think that with all the fucking, uh... Like, the physics simulation that they've had for years and years and years now. You'd think that... That shit would work. Another thing I've thought about, too, right, is, like... It's not even the technology... It, a lot of it is, uh, like an artistic sense, right? So, like, the special effects in the original Jurassic Park, um, still somehow fucking hold up. I mean, a lot of those were practical effects. I'm not sure if there's any CGI in it, but it seems like a lot of the CGI... There's some movies when that shit was first getting made that the CGI looks better than the, the shit out now. Because I feel like the people working on it... They're not as passionate about what they're doing. Whereas, like, you know, these guys working with puppets and stuff, putting all this effort, like Jim Henson handcrafting that shit, that was like his fucking life, man. He was the puppet guy. He fucking loved that shit. They just really loved their work. Whereas I feel like, um... You know, I was talking about that uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Like, dude, the CGI was just fucking awful. Awful, awful, awful CGI. I was watching with a friend, and I was joking around, like, how do they make it look so bad? It's amazing. I've never seen, like, faker-looking CGI in my life. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's because, like, those people just don't, don't fucking care. I think a lot of it, too, is they're probably overworked. That's uh, really expensive, really expensive shit to do. CGI in movies, it's a large part of the budget. Which is why sometimes I think like, that, that Terminator Dark Fate, I swear to God, they just laundered money through it. Cause uh, cause yeah man, that CGI looked like the mock-up, like the mock-up CGI for sure. I think they do like, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. People say Avatar 2 is actually pretty good for what it is. Um, I haven't seen that. I know they use a lot of practical effects in that. But, uh... I'm still skeptical, man, because, you know... I only saw the first one because it was in 3D. It was, like, the only 3D movie I saw. And it was like, meh. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but I enjoyed it because it was in 3D. And I was like, oh, wow. 3D movies they're doing now. And then it's just kind of like... I haven't really, uh, haven't really heard of a 3D movie I'd want to see since. God, when that fucking Lord of the Rings Hobbit movies came out, holy fuck, those were shitty. That was like some, just some nonsense, man. How they were trying to do, uh, trying to do like 60 frames per second, and it just came out looking like a British sitcom on the BBC, and it was like, or like a home movie that you'd film in like the 90s and it was like why would you think that 60 fps would be better and then for a while there they're like okay well it's not better but in order to uh to counteract it we'll make it like 60 fps but then 
it'll only be um, 25 FPS when like characters turn around. So it's like cinematic at some points, but then it's 60 and some other points, and it was just like, uh, to me, it was just nauseating. It didn't work at all. So yeah, man. Entertainment is some fucking crazy shit. When it works, it's just like magic, you know? And also, too, it's interesting because you'd think it would be just like, uh, like take Star Wars, for instance. Again, like George Lucas, I, those prequels were fucking, uh, I don't even know what kind of word to, to, to fucking use to explain them. They were confusing. They were fucking mind boggling. I'm not going to call them like necessarily, uh, dog shit. Because, like, you know, I could probably go back and watch them and there's something going on there. But, like, the whole idea of combining, like, the aesthetic of a children's movie, um, you know, with all the bright colors and the action scenes that look like they were made for a fucking uh, Saturday morning cartoon, and then combining that with, like, these long, drawn-out scenes of... Uh, basically political like science fiction political intrigue where it was like dude i saw that shit when i was like in it in my teen years and i still didn't understand what the fuck it was about like the galactic senate and like the fucking picnic scene that went on forever that it was just like something from a fucking soap opera for like you know people with an attention span from the 1950s and then, yeah, just having that combined with, like, a, a movie that was, like, too goofy for even a, a teenager to enjoy it. It was like, dude, what the fuck was he thinking when he made those? And that's supposed to, like, that's George Lucas, man. You know, he's supposed to be, like, a, a, a theater genius. Um, so what I'm trying to say is it's like, dude, when things work, they just kind of work. And it's like, it's not even about, about fucking one guy or two people or three people. It's like the whole team of people have to all be like um, working together or something. I, I have no idea. I have no idea and I keep saying that but like really I'm gonna figure this shit out someday man. They say like with Star Wars a lot of it was it was just saved in post-production because uh, editing I think is like 99% uh, of what the fuck is going on. That's like uh, Quentin Tarantino. Like, I like his movies, but uh, he had the same woman uh, edit all his movies. And I guess she... I think she passed away, so... I don't think... Uh, I don't think she'll be editing any more movies unless we develop some kind of a, a technology to speak to dead people. Uh, this is it for the silks, right? Or maybe like that shit in uh, in Black Mirror or whatever. You just like you could use like one of those neural net programs to just like look at all of, all of her editing, and then you could just have like an auto editor. But like, yeah, I don't think that'll work, man. Interesting. Swinging around to the front side. Hopefully I don't get, uh... Oh, fuck. Shit balls, man. They're over a dagger tooth, but, I mean, can they... Or, uh, Galleon's Grave, rather. I don't think they can see me, though. I've got, like, stealth mode engaged, right? I've got that active camo predator shit going on. That'd be fucking cool. Gotta get some pay-to-win features in Sea of Thieves, man. I'm gonna see if they can see me though, because I thought I I could kind of see them. Here, but we'll see. Yeah, that should be them right there, maybe. Which is weird, because uh, I don't know why they'd be cashing out at Galleon's Grave. If that is them, yeah, it's east, so it should be them. And this is like, of course, the worst port to be doing this, but I'm gonna risk it, man. I'm gonna risk it. Yeah, it's fucking weird. Cause I don't think you get the you don't get the Reaper. You don't level up your Reaper shit if you cash out there. So they're probably not cashing out. I 
they're still only a rank 4 as well, which I thought they'd be 5 by now. They're only rank 4, so they won't be able to see me on the map regardless. And then depending on uh, what's going on, probably by the time I'm done loading here, if they don't spot me, um, I should be able to just uh, sail north where they can't see me and then I'll sneak over to Galleons. Unless that was a sloop there as well. It looks like a tower though. Yeah. It's always good to have another ship if you want to like, you know, throw them into the mix. Get some chaos going. Man. Do you like chickens? I do like chickens. Chickens are fucking cool. Thanks for asking. Just give me the commodities, lady. Taking your sweet time. Faster. Faster. Please don't scare the chickens. I can still see that galleon out of the corner of my eye. Feels like it's getting closer, but... But, uh... Probably just an illusion. Man, my ship could really use a new paint job. Holy fuck. Almost don't even have any paint on that side. Nope, still not moving. We're good. Yeah, it's interesting too, you know. Talking about uh, what makes a good movie. I think a piece of the puzzle is, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but there's some, uh, some actors and actresses that like, I don't even give a shit what the movie is I'll I'll watch a movie even if they're uh, they're in it just because I know it'll be entertaining just to watch their performance like Nicolas Cage is one of them except uh except that fucking new one that's out I don't know he's not the main character so I probably won't that uh, Dracula or, or whatever Renfield it just looks like it looks like a good idea for a movie but I feel like just judging by the trailer that it looks like a lot of the a lot of the the point or like the best parts of the movie are just in the trailer. It just feels like one of those trailers that it's like, you know, 
Okay, so I've seen like, I've seen most of it, man. Like, how many jokes are you gonna make? It's all just kind of like the same joke, you know? It's like a 45, uh, 45 second minute long trailer and it's just like the same joke. A bunch of different things, so it's like, okay, I get it. But uh, yeah, he plays Dracula, so that could be funny. Um, Brad Pitt's another one, interestingly enough. I'll watch anything with him in it. I don't know fucking why. He does a really good job of, uh, of playing a dude that's like in a bad situation, but is also, uh, you know, perseveres through it. Like he plays a really good like depressed dude that's also like still just fucking dealing with shit somehow. And it's, uh, it's entertaining to watch. So yeah, I don't know. It's weird, man. That star power. Because, like, Nicolas Cage especially, dude, I've, I've seen him in some fucking shitty movies. Because I was going to say, you know, maybe some of the thing about the star power is you know that, like, you know, Brad Pitt, for instance, he's probably not going to do a film unless... He knows it's uh, there's something there in the script or whatever, because he can he can fucking choose to do whatever the hell he wants, man. But with uh, with Nicolas Cage, good God, man, he's done some movies. You don't know if the movie could be just a complete, just a fucking B movie, uh, schlocktastic uh, pile of shit. But uh, man, his performances are still just like, dude, he knows how to put on a show. I was like, I don't know if you ever seen that community episode where it was like, they had a whole class about studying uh, Nicolas Cage's acting. I was like, I don't know, is he good? Is he bad? I don't know what the fuck's going on. Nobody knows. Because it's like, what even is acting, man? I used to think when I was younger, because that's the way they always portray it, is it's like, oh, you know, it's somebody who can like, can like become another character that is unlike themselves and like portray the realism and the struggle of it on the big screen and then now that I've gotten older I've thought about that and like to me a good actor isn't somebody who can like portray a realistic character because there isn't a single fucking uh there isn't a single character in Hollywood that's like comes across as as a normal, realistic person, man. Nobody in a Hollywood movie acts like a dude. Like, you just meet on the street and talk to him. Or anybody you're, like, friends with or anything. They always give, like, these massive, larger-than-life performances. And so that's why, like, I look at that shit now. And I think that being a good actor is about being, being able to just, like, you know, put on a really crazy performance that's just entertaining to watch. And a lot of that is, like, you know... It's not about actually like becoming a real person or acting like somebody that's unlike yourself or blah 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 or whatever it's just being able to like uh just fucking like uh do things and uh wave your arms around and make facial expressions that are just fucking entertaining in the context of the film i guess i don't know but again that's the thing it's like uh what is it what is it really the charisma of a good performance like Anthony Hopkins is really good. He's another he's another dude. That's like a totally different acting style. Where he's in some shit, and I'll just fucking watch him all fucking day, dude. It's just entertaining. I don't know. But I feel like there's not a lot of uh Not a lot of actors like that anymore, man. A lot of people just keep getting thrown in movies here. That are just sort of like, yeah, I don't know. Like that Miles Teller guy, he's in a shitload of films. Just kind of like, yeah. I'm liking uh, Robert Pattinson. He's fucking, he's, he's actually good. Like Tenet is a fucking good movie. I saw that shit back in November or whatever. That's a trip. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's a fucking trippy movie. It almost okay. Fuck that brig is on the move now. Boat face. 
gonna sail down south. He's sailing north, so I'll sail south. It's a Reaper, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get close enough. Don't want to get close enough for them to get a good look at me. They are kind of sailing in the other direction, though, so. So that's that. But yeah, who knows what's going on with Hollywood. I feel like Hollywood is honestly, uh, you know, with all the crazy Harvey Weinstein shit that's been going on there, and now with some of these scripts in these movies are just, like, worse than the actors, I feel like they may have finally reached a point that, like, they're just kind of like, uh, they've shot themselves in the foot too many times, and they're just gonna, gonna go away for a bit. Like, I don't know. All those fucking Marvel movies, superhero movies, that was like the only thing that they were making for a while, and now they've burnt out on those, so it's like, what's gonna be the next thing, man? The next big thing. I hope they just go back to making like, just normal movies like they did, man, through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Also, a lot of it, too, is like, dude, they just need to get some fucking new ideas. It's just insane. It's really insane. That all they're doing is rebooting old properties. What's the, the newest thing that I saw there? Jeez, I don't know. It's like they want to reboot Harry Potter again. Or not again, but for the first time, I guess. And it's like, man, I don't think that you need to do Harry Potter again. Like, I don't think there's a single person in the world who doesn't think that those eight Harry Potter movies are not, like, good enough for an adaptation of the books. Like, that seems like a giant waste of money. I feel like they just need to take some, uh, take some chances with some shit. That's another thing, too, that, like, if something's fresh, just being fresh will make it, uh, make it entertaining. Captain Doby says, John Candy will always be my favorite. If there was ever an actor who came across just being himself on screen, it was John Candy. Yeah, dude. John Candy's fucking awesome. Like, uh, trains, planes, and automobiles. Fucking great. Uh, John Candy's definitely one where, uh, if he's in a movie, yeah, I'll just put on a fucking movie just because John Candy's in it. Just because, like, again, I don't know what it is about these, uh, these actors, man, but they're just like fucking. Even when they're playing like unlikable characters, they do it in a charming and entertaining way. That they're just like fucking fun to watch. Captain Doby says, and he was Canadian too. Yes, sir. Yes, he was. Yeah, lots of Canadian actors. God, I was gonna put on. Uh, I was gonna put on Bruce Almighty the other night because that shit was on Amazon Prime and I actually haven't seen it. I've only seen like a little bit of it, but I fucking couldn't I couldn't do it, dude. There's just something about Jim Carrey that just rubs me the wrong way. And uh, I may think maybe it was just his performance in that movie. Because I've, I've watched, like, if you watch Ace Ventura dude, Ace Ventura was like, the shit that he fucking did in that movie with his fucking body for the physical comedy is like, holy fucking shit was he on point with that shit. That shit was so fucking funny. But yeah, I think that was probably just a shitty movie and I just knew it getting into it. Because he fucking kind of just plays like an asshole. And also too, he kind of like turned out to be an asshole. Just in like, uh, just in real life. Talking about him the other stream there, where he's one of those guys where I feel like he smoked a bunch of crack for a while there. And there's some, there's some weird things that happen, some weird allegations. Where he was basically like, I don't know, abusive to his girlfriend or whatever, and then she ended up killing herself, and then he fucking went off the rails. That was when he started painting, like, paintings of uh, Jesus and stuff. And he since, like, I don't know, he looks like he's recovered. He's not looking like a, like a skeletal ghoul person or whatever was going on with that. He started to get that crack face going on. So, I don't know, I tried to put that on, but I just couldn't, like, I couldn't get through, like, the first 15 minutes. I was like, yeah, no, I don't well, you know what? I'm gonna skip Galleon's grave. I don't know what that, uh, that Galleon's doing out there. 
He's back at the fucking Trader's Fate Fortress. Ooh. Ooh, man. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna fucking risk it. Famous last words. I kind of want to chill. Like, I want to chill here, and then I'm going to watch him from the crow's nest. And just see what the fuck he's doing. But, like, that skeleton fort is done. And he's just back there again, chilling out. Weird, uh... Weird thing for a reaper to be doing. Like, maybe they had to go get more, uh, more cannonballs or something. Yeah, that's weird, but whatever. If I go around to the front side of, uh, Galleon's Grave, he won't be able to see me, so I should be able to just fucking fire off the loot. Pick up. Before he, uh, sneaks around the other side. And if he does, well, I don't know, man. I'll just have to go s send him to an island. Do a little island chase. Captain Doby says, going between Galleon's Grave and that sea fort is a good way to make quick money. Could be doing that. Yeah, he must be. Hopefully, uh, considering how long it took him last time, um, they should be there for a while. I'm just curious, because, like, uh, I didn't know you could do skeleton forts if they weren't popping off with the old skull there. I didn't think there was really anything to, to get from them. But I guess those sea forts are like a different thing. I've never done one. Like big forts. Battlements and shit. So I'm not really sure how those work at all. Captain Dolby says, sea forts you can do so long as the green lights are on. Okay, good to know. Well, they're fucking parked there with their anchor down and their sails down, so... <laughs> this is like, uh... This is super sketchy, but I'm gonna fucking do it anyways. Forget about it. I don't want to skip ports. I got a perfect run going here. I'm doing it, man. I'm doing it. Risking it for the biscuit. Captain Doby says all galleons are open crew, though, right? Um, no, but yeah, I guess. I mean, I kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe. I mean, they're not, but like, now that you mention it, I have fucking rarely run into a galleon that was uh, crewed by anything that was a, was a hazard. It's usually Briggs, man. It's usually Briggs that got the fucking people on them that are decent. It's like it's tough to get that fourth man in the group. It's ridiculous. It's tough, man. It's fucking tough to run a group on the internet. I talked about that before. Like any group larger than two people just falls apart within a few days. These people just start, they start chirping at each other. I usually have my, uh, my one or two regulars. And then I run with, uh, this is so fucked that I'm doing this, but yeah. <laughs> I usually have my one or two regulars. And then I, uh, then I get like a, a random on there so like if you run a, a galleon right as long as you have like one person you really trust one person you kind of trust and then one random then it's like okay you can fucking uh jail vote the guy you don't trust if he starts being a nerd or whatever i mean not to uh not to use that term in a derogatory way i am a nerd myself but like but like fuck man some people they just like dude i don't know what the hell their problem is they get like hostile sometimes, you know? Just trying to have fun and they just get fucking hostile. And slinging insults and shit and it's like, dude, we're on the same crew. And also it's like, it's not tough to get, a, get along with strangers for just a couple hours. Like, just take a deep breath. 
go insult your neighbors later or something. I don't know whatever it is you do in your own time, but when you're on my ship, let's all get along. But yeah, I've had to break a couple people, man. How come in the jail? I had one guy uh, one time that. Uh, fuck, man. I was running. I was running the crew. I always tell people too that it's like you know I am the captain. This is what we're doing. And uh, we were on a galleon, and he fucking wanted to. Uh, he wanted to go PVP people, and we were doing um, like merchant sunken ship voyages, and it's like, bro, we're not fucking. You know, it was in the LFG post. We're going to do sunken ship voyages. And then he just fucking started lipping me off, man. Just being like, I don't give a fuck what you want, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, oh, DMs. I'm like, break this guy, break this guy, break this guy. And then we fucking bricked him. And then, um, then he sat in the fucking brig for an hour and a half for the rest of the voyage. And just lipped off while he was in the fucking brig, man. And I was like, oh my god, like, I just want to get another crew member because we, we were down to three guys on a galleon because he's in the fucking brig. He was like, oh, I could do this all night. I'll just leave my Xbox on. I get free fucking blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I don't care if you're getting, like, you know, you're getting your money or whatever. That's fine. But, like, wouldn't you rather just go join another ship, make some new friends, have a little fun, instead of sit here on the ship we got him in the brig? And then uh, we ended up lighting the brig on fire and burning it down with a minute before we logged off. So, yeah. Some people, dude. Like, that's the thing. Um, once you fucking... Once you've, like, I don't know how to put it. How's it going? You gotta push back a little bit against them, then they just fucking lose their shit. They just lose their fucking shit, man. That's why it's like anytime I ever uh, have to vote somebody into the jail, I never let them out. Because it's like once you fucking put them in the jail, then they're just like your mortal enemy for life. You know? And you, as soon as you let them out, they just try to burn the ship down. It's like, okay, cool. So I just put them in the jail till they disconnect, but I wish you could just straight up kick people from the ship. I don't know if they've added that as a thing. Captain Doby says, I hate galleons. Refuse to play them unless it's for my daily Microsoft points, then I'm out as soon as they pop. I like sailing them. I like uh, sitting at the big wheel and feeling like a big man. That's some fun shit. Um, but <laughs> dealing with a crew of three people sometimes, yeah, it's fucking tough to get uh, three people who are all completely sane. Like I said, I usually get like, I got one dude usually who's someone I really trust, and then I got one person who's like maybe from the last session I kind of trust, and then the fourth one is just a fucking flip of the coin, man, whether you're going to get a maniac or somebody tolerable. Captain Toby said, should be able to kick players, especially in a captain ship. Sea. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the number one feature that I feel like they should, they should absolutely add to this game. It's just the ability to straight up kick people. Like, the brick vote is good, but like, just let me let me just kick him. Even better, man, if you could vote and then uh, a foot just comes out of their Xbox and kicks them right in the fucking head. <laughs> get a real vote kick. Yeah. Captain Doby says if you've been uh, voted into the brig more than one time, either you're an awful player or your teammates are neither worth playing with. Yeah, man, exactly. That's why it's like these people that you brig them and they just sit in the brig just to spite you. It's like, dude, that's fine. Like, we just didn't get along. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person or I'm a bad person. It just means that, like, we don't, shouldn't be on the same crew together. Just go somewhere else. You know, just move move it along, man. Just move it along. But hey, you meet all kinds of people, dude, playing this game. Mostly, mostly cool people, but yeah, there have been a few times there where it's just like, I don't even know what. I can only really think about it out of like, you know, I've, I've made like 80 friends playing this game. I, I don't really, I wouldn't, I mean, they're not like real friends. I don't talk to any of them anymore. They're on my friends list though. Um, I've made at least like a dozen people who were fucking killer that I'd sail again with, even though I haven't spoken to them for a few years. But there's at least three people, three people I can think of. Like that one guy I had to brig. There was the one guy who just played Happy Birthday on the accordion for the whole fucking voyage until I got a headache and I had to disconnect. Make up some excuse, because I kept telling him to stop playing it, but, you know, how you can only get so rude, dude, before it just gets awkward. Like, I don't want to have a fucking emotional meltdown uh, in an Xbox party chat just to get someone to shut the fuck up on the accordion, because then it's like, even if he stops playing, it's going to be awkward the rest of the journey, right? 
And then there was one guy who I played with that was just like, dude, he was just like trying to fucking bully me like it was high school. It was so fucking weird. Super weird. And then that guy, he like, uh, he was like ripping on me for being on an Xbox. He was like ripping on me for shit I was saying. He was ripping on me for everything. And it was like, dude, you can't just like, you can't just treat somebody like that and then expect them to want to fucking play with you again. And then he messaged me the next day to ask to join my crew. And it was like, wow, ee, man. I mean, you know, you don't have to treat everybody uh, super nice. Wearing velvet gloves and shit. It's all good. But that guy was a, that guy was a fucking a-hole, man. Like, just a fucking a-hole. Crazy stuff. So I can think of three people specifically. And look at that. I got away with it. Fucking got away with it. Slipped in, slipped out. That Reaper was none the, none the wiser. I'm not really concerned about them, too, because I don't think they're a uh, real Reaper. I think they're just PvP or PvE kids, whatever, you know. I guess you're probably right. They're just going uh, between that fort and Galleon's Grave there, cashing shit in. I didn't think that the... Uh, oh, there's somebody with the Reaper's markup. They're up to uh, five bars as well, so they can see me, but... I have a feeling the Reaper's Mark guy is probably going to go take him out. He's going to go kamikaze. Yeah, not really worried about that Galleon, because, like... Um... I don't think they want none of this Dark Adventurer sales, man. Interesting thing, though, is, like, do you get still get the, uh... Do you still get the emissary bonus if you sell at the regular merchants? Maybe you do if you sell at the sovereign side or something. I thought you had to go like actually to the the reaper's hideout to get the emissary bonus cuz like if they're not doing that then that that to me doesn't seem like you'd make more money not doing it. I think it'd be better to just like hit a couple forts and stock up and then sail in there. It takes the extra time to sail, but I mean if you can catch wind in a galleon they're just like fucking ripping across the sea like turbo turbo style but yeah man looking to be a uh, fucking perfect run here where where did I uh, start this started this at ancient spire I think this is like I feel like uh, Captain Doby says only if you sell the reapers yeah I feel like that's what's going on with that so they're missing out on the emissary bonus. Where did I start? I started at Galleon's Grave, right? So that that would have been one full, one full uh, pass around. That makes sense. Usually one full pass is when I make the emissary five, though. Fuck, that's crazy. I don't even remember what fucking port I sailed out of at the start. I thought it was. Uh, I think it was Galleon's Grave. Streamer brain, dude. It's real. Make your donation now to the Streamer Brain Foundation and help find a cure for Streamer Brain that affects thousands of streamers every year. I think that probably would have been one loop, though, because we're at three hours now, so if I can catch some wind, I can do this second loop in two hours. And uh, hopefully I don't run into any trouble. Or if I do, hopefully it is uh, entertaining. Get a good fucking chase going here. I don't know what point I'm going to start like deliberately sailing past people shooting fireworks onto their deck to try to aggro them, but it's going to come to that point at some point here. Probably come February, man. I'll just gradually keep changing my uh, my situation to try to get uh, more and more aggression onto this ship. God, it's fucking really funny, though, people who say there's too much PvP for how these streams have gone. Like, to be honest, I... I used to, like I said, I used to sell these commodities all the time anyways, but like, I would 
seriously have considered that I would have gotten um, a lot more aggression from other players uh, in the amount of time I've done this so far. You know, coming up on 35 hours of streams, and it was like two people that chased me. I guess, okay, there was that that one guy in that galleon that was like probably a hacker ship because they, they had fucking infinite purple flares they were shooting, and they're sending me all these super messages. And then the fucking, the game lagged out, and the dude was on my ship. I can kind of get, like, that might have been legit, now that I think about it. Captain Doby says, at this point, I wonder if those complaining were the ones to instigate the PvP. Yeah, literally, at this point, man, it's like, either that or, uh, you know, like you were saying, most people just tended to look for an easy, uh, an easy sink. So they might have just gotten run up on while they were, uh... They were at an island doing a voyage, but it's like, you always gotta fucking keep your eye on the horizon, man. Because, like, if you go into the crow's nest, even on the bigger islands, when you start your voyage, go into the crow's nest, see if there's anybody around, check the horizon. And then, like, if there isn't, you have a good 10 or 15 minutes of uh, guaranteed time that there's not going to be anybody rolling up on you. Because, like, it's a pretty big map. And you can see, like, pretty fucking far up there. So, like, as long as you're just... A little bit aware you can usually stay out of trouble when you start to do like I don't know some other voyages and shit then, like I said when I was running captain I would usually be the guy just to sit in the crow's nest the whole time I'd bring an ammo crate up there and just take the eye of each and just shoot some people if they uh, were doing skelly captains or whatever bring them to the shore you can hit them with cannons as well that's a really quick way of doing those and uh, you know only a couple times people tried to roll up on us but, but yeah, yeah, man. Sea of Thieves. It's gonna be fun cutting that edit together, though. Posting that on the subreddit. Just being like, do you have friends that don't want to play Sea of Thieves because you got sunk one time? Come to my stream. <laughs> There's like no fucking PvP for 35 hours unless I instigate it. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, we'll see to uh, switch into the PC servers on the 11th stream there, and then I'll, I'll take these sales down depending on what people in the PC uh, servers do, but I mean, it's like, I don't know. Can you really see these cells from a long way, way away? I guess you kind of can. Because I will admit, since I put these on, uh, I've been getting a lot. Well, I don't know. I wonder, like, you know, like last stream, all those people kept trying to sail up to me, and they were sending me messages that they wanted to be my friend. Um, but that that was making me think, because, like, they, they would break off chase so quickly, man. As soon as I started to, to evade, they'd just be like, yeah, fuck this, we're not going to chase them. And I wonder if that's because they figure that, like, a dude with eight and a half million dollar sales who tries to escape, you just kind of figure as a crew that it's like, well, if he thinks he can escape, he probably can escape just because he's got the DA sales. Like, everybody just in, assumes I know what I'm doing, which, like, I do, but, like... You know, when I just had the flat blacks on, people would chase me for fucking at least 20 minutes before they'd give up. But we'll see, man. We'll fucking see. There's only so much of this, uh, of this footage of just me going from port to port that I need, so, you know. At five hours of stream, like I figure, 50 hours on uh, 50 hours on the Xbox servers, and then I'll switch over to the PC. I'll do like another 10 streams on that, and then after I got 50 hours of each, I can fucking cut those t together. Because I mean, like, yeah, I could do it for like 500 hours or whatever, but like, 50 hours is a pretty big sample size, man. That if people aren't convinced that you don't have to PVP in this game, from ooh, hey, look, free loot. Uh, if people aren't convinced from like fucking 100 hours worth of footage on both server sets, then it's like, okay, give me a break. You guys are just, like, fucking being little chicken chicken babies. Ooh. 
What do we got here? Skulls? Don't need that. That shouldn't be there. Put this here. Shibby, was that you? It's always a captain's fault, man. Oh, another one of these. Those are funny when people chase you, because you can just like shoot them off the back of the ship. And it just like sends their ship fucking <laughs> careening side to side. It doesn't put any holes in it, but yeah. It's still fun to do, man. Looks like this was a, oh, another one of these fucking things? Looks like this was a skelly sloop or something that sunk, but I've never seen a skelly sloop drop three staffs of Dark Tide. More storage crate. Getting kind of ridiculous here. Gonna need a bigger boat. Another storage crate. Don't even need. Don't even need supplies, man. Another staff of dark tides. What the fuck was this? Just dark tides and storage crates? Okay. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Guess I'm just a uh, fucking staff collector now. Check out my staffs. Perfect. I'll do a little crisscross. Play a little tic tac toe. Uh, so, what are we at? We're at Moro's Peak here. We're gonna sell these spices. Got six of those things? Good lord. Not even worth anything. They don't even have sentimental value. They would be fucking sweet if they put holes in ships, man. I would absolutely love those staff at Dark Tides if they did. Oh fuck, there's a rowboat here too. Plot thickens. Nailed it. Perfect docking maneuver. Doesn't get better than that. Feel like I gotta keep an eye out for tuckers here. Pig straight, pig is straight. Never know those damn dirty tuckers, man. Just gonna like take a look. What is that? Oh, Ash and Chest is just chilling up there. Yeah, I guess somebody probably cashed out here. They probably dumped all those uh, staffs and those uh, storage crates because those are the only things you can't sell, right? So, mystery solved. So what was I saying? I was selling uh, spices. Very nice, very spicy. 15 crates. Try not to burn my ass that torch there. Everything else sold here that I can sell pretty much. Yeah. Cash out the rest of that at the sovereign stock when I uh, finish at the end there.
That would be funny if uh, the people complaining about the PvP were the ones instigating it. They just like left that detail out of their story. I wouldn't be uh, tremendously surprised. Is my audio still in sync, by the way? I haven't resynced this in like three hours. Which probably... I feel like uh, since I'm using my backup controller here, it probably won't have sync issues. Like it's probably just a problem with that Elite series for some reason. I haven't really had a single uh, Xbox controller ever that didn't have like its own issue when I got it. But uh, you know, can't complain. They certainly last long enough. As long as there's a workaround to uh, to the issue, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, what are in these crates, anyways? Fucking nothing. 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 Oh my god, can I sell these? Cannot sell. I don't need it. Great day to load this shit up. That's right, count my coins. Count them all. No mistakes here. I wish I could just run a credit account. Just hit one button. Buy it all instantly. Captain Doby says, have you ever wondered how much time you could save with the buy all button? Every single time I do this, I think about that, actually. I'm thinking about it right now. Probably, no fucking joke, probably 20 minutes of stream. I mean, there's 14 ports uh, that I hit. So, you know. Even at a minute a port. That's like 15 minutes. But then, you know, if there was a buy all button... I wouldn't have the satisfaction of being able to sit there and hit that same button over and over and over again. And over again. It's just like a dopamine rush every time I hit that button. It's like uh, free satisfaction, man. ship just move? Probably. Probably not. Missed it. That's like the first one I've missed uh, in a long time. Never happens. What is it, Shippy? You become one with the crates again? Fucking crate dog. Captain Doby says, I suppose, if you could buy all at once, where's the excitement of buying one at a time? Wondering if that galleon's coming. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, it's all about sitting there, sweating, sweating down the back of my neck. Wondering if that fucking galleon is gonna roll up. I mean, that was kind of fun at Galleon's Grave, I'm not going to lie. Out here, I mean, I can't really see it out of the corner of my eye, so. so who knows, man. I feel like if there was a buy all button, they'd just have to nerf the prices because everybody would do this.
Yep, yep, gemstones, gemstones, gemstones. Haven't hit my chin on the dock once yet. Not since the last time I did. Is that it? Okay, but thank you, Matilda. Catch you later. Heading on over to Ancient Spire. Bada bing, bada boom. Get me out of here. I'll check that uh, that galleon on the map. I think he's probably gone by now, to be honest. Either the uh, the other guy took him out, or they just fucking quit. I see all the ships come and go, man, and I outlast all of them. Fucking hilarious. Oh, I still hear some glubby glub, though. I gotta fucking patch that hole. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Fuck, this bed is probably so salty. It's a fucking waterbed at this point. Big straight, big straight. Everything's good down here. Yep, bottles of mystery. Did I ever fix these books? Didn't fix the books. Oh, that makes such a difference, doesn't it? a little wind. Nope. Nope. I didn't check that map either. What do I got for food as well? Two pieces of chicken, that's good. I'll cook this last piece of raw chicken, though. Never knew when you might need to eat some chicken. That's fine. That's nothing. It's just a wave. Just a wave. Yeah, well, I don't know what that reaper's doing now. Now there's... Now there's two of them. Okay, I a lot of uh, a lot of chop out here on the uh, ocean today. Let me tell you, lots of chop, lots of chop, 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 chop. This would be an embarrassing way to go down. Luckily, the water has not raised high enough to prevent me from finishing that chicken. A little extra brine might be good for the seasoning, anyways. is not the direction we want to be headed in. Right? Yeah, west is right. God, I don't know why I always, I always get west and east mixed up, man. I know I'm a little bit dyslexic, but it's getting fucking ridiculous at this point. Maybe. No wind? Okay, fuck it. No wind. I don't need it. Forgot to check that uh, gold rush shit as well here. Adventures, was it? 
Something tells me it's this one, but I don't think so. Yeah, it totally is. Good guess. Good guess. Daily D. Special events, no special events, regular rewards. 17 to 18, 18 to 19. I have no idea what UTC and PDT, though, are. Anyways, it's not when I stream, because I've never gotten the bonus. I thought maybe it changed weekly or something. A UDT. 17 PM UDT. Is that U UTC? Am I tripping? I think I'm tripping. That's... Yeah, UTC. PDT. Okay. Is that like Greenwich Mean Time? Uh... 9 a.m. is when I'd have to fucking do that shit. Not gonna happen. Captain Doby says somebody made a timer just for Gold Rush. Uh, yeah. That would be a useful app. Um, what, what, okay, this chicken's fucking ruined. It's all good. Two pieces is enough. I mean, that's four bites. Nope. Delicious, man. Just a little smoky. Smoky mesquite chicken. Right past Ancient Spire. He's selling stone there. Ah, uh, club hall. Nice. Yeah, it would be 12 hours. It's uh, 9 p.m. where I'm at. So it'd be 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. there. that other reaper's up to. I'm not worried about the first one, but that second one is maybe like, I don't know, maybe a little sketchy. Probably hitting it up uh, another sea fort. hit the sandbar every single time. Not today, though. Today I win. Getting to be that point of the stream, man. Okay, what am I fucking selling? Uh, Ancient Spire, so stone. Will not fuck that up this time. Getting to be that point of the stream where I fucking start thinking about hot dogs, dude. Do you remember when uh, Barack Obama? Uh, gotten shit for putting mustard on a hot dog. Everybody was like, oh, it was so scandalous. Like, you'd never put mustard on a hot dog. But, uh, in my opinion, I think that, like, that's the fucking thing you put mustard on. Like, I'm the kind of guy where you take a hot dog and you put, uh, 
put mustard on it. I like some sauerkraut. I like some onions. Some relish would be good. Uh, controversial take. I don't like ketchup on my hot dogs. So I don't know if I'd ever be able to run for president um, because of that. But I feel like uh, like some people, they're like, oh, well, the, the mustard overwhelms the taste of the hot dog. But to me, it's like I would put mustard on a hot dog, but I wouldn't put mustard on a burger. Like, I think to me that mustard should stay off a burger. And, uh, you should put, you should put ketchup on a burger. I like to put ketchup and mayo on burgers. That's my whole thing. But mustard is like, mustard's a hot dog thing. So I don't know what that scandal was about. Crazy times, man. The Barack Obama years. God damn, no, I should probably not fucking talk about hot dogs though, because I've still got another another two and a half hours to go here. Okay, these are minerals. It's getting a little disorganized, eh? Can't wait uh, till we're living in the, the day and age where you can just fucking order a hot dog off the internet, just type in your fucking address, and then there would be like a chute in the ceiling. And a, a drone just would come in and just fucking fly that shit right into your mouth. I'd subscribe to that service. I'd be the first person to subscribe to it. No fucking joke. I don't even care if there's dangers involved. I don't even care if, like, a drone might get caught in my beard or something. I'd fucking try it. I'd be one of the first people. So, Google, if you're listening to this, you know, sign me up, dude. Show me the ads for the experimental hot dog delivery service that I know somebody's working on. Bezos is funding that shit right now, probably. Figuring that shit out in a laboratory somewhere. I wouldn't like, you know, I feel like hot dogs, it would only work with hot dogs though, because they're already kind of shaped like a missile. So like to deliver them by drone just makes sense. It's just the natural evolution of uh, food delivery services. I mean, I guess you could probably nice get like a like a donair. Could probably work if you, uh, you'd have to tie it together with some string or some shit. It'd probably fall apart. Taco, maybe. A taco might work. Maybe like a pita. Rolled up pita. Anything. Any kind of food that's missile shaped, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do with pizza, because that's a fucking joke. There's no fucking way that you could get pizza just delivered right into your face. It would just, like, Fucking, you just get pizza everywhere. It's just a terrible idea. Cereal would probably be the worst. Unless, uh, unless it just shoved a funnel, like a funnel in your mouth, and then just dumped a bunch of fucking cereal and milk into it, and it was just like, uh, That could work. Definitely. Um. Peanut butter sandwiches, like peanut butter jam sandwiches, if you rolled them up, that could work. But again, you'd have to invent some kind of like, uh, some kind of a uh, thread or a floss, like, uh, like a dental floss that was like candy, like a candy floss or something. But not necessarily candy, because like if you're going to have like peanut butter and jam sandwiches, for instance, I don't think that you'd want the taste of candy. So you'd have to find a way to flavor it in different ways, but some kind of like edible, edible, uh, edible string. Or possibly, uh, you know, like a food based adhesive. So you could like glue it into a missile shape. That's possible too. That would work. I mean, I'm by no means a genius, but I think that somebody out there could get this to work. These gemstones the textures are uh, looking a little blurry. Corn on the cob. That's iffy because like corn on the cob is uh, it's missile shaped. But, uh, you know, you can't just, like, have a corn on the cob shoved into your face. That's not gonna fuck. That's not gonna fly. But you could take the corn off the cob and then use the funnel delivery system. That could work. You know? That's possible. I think, uh, you know, any kind of, uh, any kind of candy, like Skittles and M&Ms, that would work. You could funnel those right in there. Those spicy. Uh, you know, chocolates of all kind. That's good. They're small. Anything bite size. Anything bite size would work. Um, 
Definitely not like hard candies. I wouldn't I wouldn't want hard candies. That would not work. Like gobstoppers, that'd be a fucking nightmare, man. Having gobstoppers poured into your mouth of the funnel, like give me a break. Give me a break. What a Kit Kat bar, that'd fucking work. Give me a break of a Kit Kat bar. Either delivery system would work. I mean, you could uh, smash that up and uh, funnel it, or you know, it's uh, almost missile shaped if you break them in half. That could work. Popcorn. Popcorn would be fucking good. I might make some popcorn after this, actually. Popcorn's always delicious. Shitty thing about popcorn, though, is it's like, it's so good because it's buttery and it's salty, but it's like not really filling. So you can just eat like pounds and pounds and pounds of it. And you just end up getting like butter sick. That's a real thing. I mean, I don't think that's like a technical thing. I don't think I could go to like the hospital and they'd be like, Sir, you're butter sick. And they're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, look at you, you got popcorn all over your fucking face and your beard. And you're greasy. And you're complaining about a tummy ache. You got butter sickness. Just go sleep it off, you hooligan. Get out of here. This is not an emergency. But like, if you've ever eaten like three pounds of uh, three pounds of fucking popcorn with butter melted all over it, dude, it feels like an emergency. It's not a good time. It's uncomfortable. I gotta learn to pace myself when I eat. I just fucking shovel that shit in. That's why I'm the first person who'd sign up for an automatic food delivery system, man. <laughs> These fucking stabs. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's everything, right? I'm gonna double check this. Minerals, uh, plunder, ancient spire, stone. Okay, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Onward! Plunder outpost. I don't know if this like might actually be a fucking perfect run, man. I haven't skipped a single port. I'm kind of uh, kind of not doing like the best on time, so the stream might run a little long here. But oh yeah, that's right. There's also two Reapers on the map. I should check that probably as a professional captain. Okay, so this guy's at the Treasury of Lost Ancients. And the other guy looks like he checked out. I called it. So fuck yeah, that's fucking good for me, man. Just sail west, uh, shouldn't even see him. He shouldn't even see me. No awkward exchanges of looks or uh, any other kind of gestures whatsoever. It's a nice sunset. Or is that a sunrise? Sunset, yeah. I'm a professional captain here. I know the difference between a sunrise and a sunset. How many captains can say that, right? guy right here. But yeah, for real, I feel like, um, you know, eating utensils haven't really improved much over the last thousand years. I feel like we're due for a real breakthrough. And you might say, like, that's fucking stupid, you know, because, like, some things, some things are just never going to change. You can't improve on a knife and fork. And um, to those skeptics, I have to say that, like, you know, the toilet was only invented like 200 years ago. So fucking, you never know. You just seriously never know. Because like, you think that that's something that uh, people would never improve on if, uh, you know, we've been taking dumps for like 12,000 years. 200,000 years, some people say. We haven't evolved any. Which I find is like, I don't know, that's a little sus. I'm not going to get into like the whole fucking uh, <laughs> Graham Hancock Ancient Apocalypse. Have you ever seen that shit on Netflix? It's, uh, it's cool. It's cool. Um, cause yeah, there's not like a lot of explanation for those things, but every episode is literally just like, uh, I got like three episodes in. They just go to like some pile of rocks or like an ancient pyramid. And then they're like, wow, they're cool. Bunch of rocks, man. It's like, yeah, these rocks are really old. It's like, oh, whoa. How old are they? And they're like, really fucking old, man. It's like, oh, dope. Yeah. It's like 20,000 years or something. It's like, oh, cool. And it's like next episode, like that's it. It's literally fucking it, because it's like, what are you even going to say? Yeah, they're like 20,000 years old. There's some chambers underground. It's an old pyramid. It's like, who lived here? Oh, we have no idea. Dude, it was like 20,000 years ago. We have no fucking idea. Like, why are you even asking me that? I, I, have no, I have no fucking clue. I can't even tell you who lived in my neighbor's house 10 years ago. Like, you think that we know? Like, just get out of here. 
But it's old. 20,000 years old. So, you know. Only 200 years on the toilet, though. That's fucking crazy. That shit blows my mind. But they've also, uh... You know, like the Romans had toilets. And then we just gave up on toilets for like, uh, 1,800 years. And then finally somebody was like, you know what? Let's bring him back. Let's bring that. Let's bring it back. Let's bring the toilet back. I mean, it's uh, an improvement on the Roman style. But uh, no fucking plumbing, man, for like 1,800 years. Crazy shit. Crazy, crazy shit. I mean, I almost, I almost don't even believe myself saying it, that there's no plumbing. Captain Toby says, we went backwards after the Romans left. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a whole other can of worms, because, like, they never really left. They just fucking, like, I don't know. I got one for you. I got one for you. Uh, you know how all the, the fucking languages, they speak in Europe, right? Um, I was taught in school that they all descended from Latin, right? Because Latin was what the Romans spoke. And so, like, uh, everybody spoke Latin in the Roman Empire. It was covered all of Europe. And then the Roman Empire broke up and they turned into different languages. Okay. Here's a little mindfucker. Uh, the German language did not come from Latin. Didn't fucking come from Latin. Um, they have no idea where that shit came from. It's speculated that it came from the same place as Latin. So, like, uh, whatever people were speaking 12,000 years ago, when the Ice Age ended, um, one group became Latin speakers in Rome, and then, like, uh, the other fucking group spoke German, somehow. But the first, uh, the first time that any Romans ever ran into a German-speaking guy was in, uh, it's like 200, uh, 200 BC, which is, like, fucking not that long ago, which is crazy that, like, nobody ran into anybody who spoke German for, uh, for 200 fucking, uh, until 200 BC there, so, yeah, I don't know. That's, like, literally 8,000 years of history where nobody saw a German dude, and then finally, like, a Roman ran into one and wrote it down. But also, too, like, you know, Romans, uh, Romans and Greeks were, like, the only people who fucking wrote shit down, too, so. I don't know anything about ancient Greek. I don't know where the fuck that shit came from. That's not, like... What did the ancient Greeks speak? They spoke Latin? What the fuck? Probably not. Latin was Roman, so I'm gonna look that up. Ancient Greece. Yeah, so no, they had their own shit. Ancient Greek was its own language. That's crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy shit. Because also, too, like, the whole idea is that all the people of Europe, all the Greeks, and all the Romans, and all the fucking Germans, and all those different cultures, they're uh, the same people as uh, the groups that moved into India as well, right? Um, they uh, speculate they came from the Siberian fucking area there up in the east, northeastern Russia, and then they all moved, migrated down as it warmed up. Or maybe as it cooled down, I think? I fucking don't know. For whatever reason, they had to leave Siberia something like 10,000 years ago, 10,000, 12,000 years ago, and then they all moved into Europe. So, uh, so yeah, man. All the Europeans uh, shared ancestry with fucking... Uh, India, which is fucking, it makes a lot of sense because like, dude, India is fucking dope. So I feel like that culture, I don't know, I just love it, dude, India is fucking so cool. Bullshit. Okay, so, uh, Plunder Outpost. Plunder Outpost, um, uh, gonna be selling minerals here. One of the points of that uh, that German story was also too that English uh, is actually not a Latin language because uh, English is actually a dialect of German, of Old German. It's a combination of Old Old German that evolved, and then they added a bunch of French to it, and there's a fucking third language in there as well. People joke that it's actually three languages wearing a trench coat, not just one language. So yeah, I don't know why I wasn't ever taught that in school, but... It's fucking crazy shit. Because I thought for sure, dude, I thought that all European languages came from Latin. That's why I thought it was weird that it's like the whole thing how they call, uh... They call, uh, you know, like the Latino community. That's because of the Spanish language, and I was like, why are they called Latinos when, like, all the... 
all the fucking languages descended from Latin. Like France, uh, France is a Latin language. I guess it's fucking different or something. Because it's like, uh... I fucking don't know. Captain Toby says, yes, their language is mostly Germanic with added French when the Normans conquered us. Yeah, because that's another cool, cool thing, because uh, in England there, from the Normans, um, all the uh, aristocrats and nobles spoke French. And it was like that for so long that that's why, like, uh, man, the word for the animals when they're in the pasture is uh, Germanic, but then the word for the food when it's on the table is French. Because, like, all the nobility, they only called it by, uh, by what it was once it was cooked, right? Because none of the nobles ran, like, the farms and shit, so I don't know. It's fucking hilarious, man. I find that funny how, uh, England and France, they just fucking, to this day, I mean, they get along good, but, like, um, they still fucking joke about it, man, how they hate each other so much. But they had that, like, Hundred Years' War and fucking shit, whatever. They were, I mean, the Hundred Years' War was, like, just the, the one war that lasted a hundred years, but they were, like, literally at war in one way or another for, like, a thousand years of medieval history. It's fucking crazy, crazy shit. And yeah, man, England was just uh, run by French people for most of history. France is a fucking, uh, a crazy, uh, or French rather, the French language is fucking crazy because like, um, you know, I'm Canadian, so I learned a bit of French in high school there. And we were talking to a, a French Canadian one time and he was talking about the language and the interesting thing about it is they have words that literally don't mean anything. So like, uh, if you have a verb, right, and you want to say the negative version of the verb, you put the words ne and pa on the sides of it, right? But like, the words ne and pa have no actual meaning. Um, alone. There's no translation to them in any other language. And it's like, a lot of fucking French phrases are like that, where you just say these words to um, convey a meaning, but the words themselves don't have a meaning? It's fucking weird. Um, and also, too, what's cool about French is... Ooh, France is, uh, is like one of the only countries that I know of. Uh, there might be some others, I fucking don't know. But the only European country anyways, that they actually have a ministry of uh, preservation of the language. And the ministry is actually in charge of like making sure that people continue to pronounce French the same way that they have uh, for the last thousand years. Um, for instance, they were using the word email a lot. And the, the Ministry of uh, Language Preservation in France fucking ruled that they couldn't use the word email in, uh, in government documents or in common usage and stuff officially in any way because it was uh, degrading the language. And so the interesting thing about that is like, French sounds fucking so specific and so different from all the other European languages that it makes me wonder if like maybe that's actually what Latin sounded like like Latin actually sounded like French because like that's the only uh, country that they have uh, really tried to preserve the language as much as they could whereas you look at like Old English is like fuck dude have you ever tried to read English from like the 1400s it's complete fucking nonsense it's hilarious it's like the goofiest, weirdest shit ever. Like you can't even you can't even make out a sentence, and yet it's almost like the words are almost the same, but then like they're just like fucking used differently. And uh, they had that long S that looks like an F that they only got rid of in like the 1800s, which was super fucking weird. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Uh, do you think that people in like 200 years from now are even going to be able to understand what we're saying? I think that maybe because of like the internet and because of videos and shit, um, I think there'll probably be some more consistent consistency to the language than there was through like the medieval times. That's my guess, but you know I don't know. I'm not a fucking uh, I'm not a scientist or anything. <laughs> um, but I think that because of like you know. 
because of uh, because of all the media that we're recording, you know. Then again, it's also tough to say like how much of this media is going to be around in 200 years because, uh, dude, you can barely find like. I was thinking about some videos I saw in fucking high school in like 2003, back in the day, and like, dude, I'd never be able to find that shit again. You know. I used to think that once something's on the internet, it's out there forever, but that's uh, hasn't been the case. That's tough, to, tough to fucking say. I think it'll probably drift. It's all—I mean, it's already drifted quite a bit, but what with people saying fucking whatever the fucking slang is now, like I'm joke because I'm like old enough that I've gone through two sets of slang, where I just like I just learned the new slang when I was in my twenties, and now it's like that shit's old. So you say shit like "yeet," and people are like, "What the fucking hell?" the hell does yeet mean? I'm like, oh shit. Captain Doby says it was nonsense 200 years later with Shakespeare, yet you had to learn and read some of his work in school like he was some literate god. I never saw the hype. Yeah, Shakespeare's funny. Funny you bring up Shakespeare because I was thinking about that because like, the weird thing about Shakespeare is that all of his shit is, uh, it's written in what's called iambic pentameter and it's actually poetry because it doesn't rhyme. What the fuck was I selling here? Minerals? Yeah, I got all these minerals. Just gotta double check because I'm talking about Shakespeare here. Yeah, so it's all poetry, right? So every line that every character speaks in the script has five uh, five syllables. And it goes ba 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 Like, every line does that. I so, like, fear. it's got me wondering. And nobody fucking knows, again, because history, it's just like, we just get what we get, man. Nobody can, like, build a time machine and just fucking fly back there and see what was really going on. But it made me wonder uh, if, like, when it came out, if it was just as fucking weird as it sounds today. And that was, like, part of the hype when it fucking came out. Because when the fuck was Shakespeare? Is that, like, the 1500s or 1600s? I want to think it's even fucking... More than that. Yes, he died in 1616. So, like, unfortunately, um, we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of shit from that era because it wasn't until the printing press was invented that we uh, we got a lot of books. So, like, all of the books that we really got um, are from the 1700s. That's as far back as it goes because of the inventing of the printing press, which was like, you know, that song um, "Old Sang Line" that people sing at New Year's. The first written account of that song is from a book in like 1770 something or whatever, and it was written by a guy who said that he heard someone singing it on a Scottish hiking trail. And that's the earliest written account of it, because like prior to the printing press, unless somebody decided to write it down in a book and then it got printed, and we still have copies of the book today, we just don't really have that shit. Prior to that, it was just dudes, uh, monks mostly, uh, chilling around in monasteries writing shit down. And uh, if you wanted a book, it had to be fucking copied by a scribe. So books were... I don't want to put that there. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to fuck with it. If it's haunted, it's haunted, man. I'm not going to fuck with that shit. But yeah, Shakespeare, uh, I know, dude. It's just like, it's so fucking weird. It's weird, it's weird because, like, I cannot for the fucking life of me understand any of that shit when I'm reading it. Uh, like, I had to learn that shit in school, too. We did a couple plays or whatever. Can't understand it. It's just fucking total nonsense, damn near. But then the funny thing is, is if you go and you see, like, live Shakespeare performed, um, I went and saw some fucking, uh, Shakespeare over in Vancouver or whatever, in Canada. Uh, and after, like, 15 minutes of listening to these guys just fucking talk total medieval nonsense, then it's like your brain fucking flips, and you start to understand it, and suddenly you're, like, laughing at these fucking jokes, even though you have almost no idea what they're saying. It's a fucking surreal experience, man. But, I mean, I don't really think that, like, yeah, calling him a literate, a literate god, it's like... Wasn't really a whole lot to compare to, man. I'm pretty sure I could have went back to the 1500s and wrote some shit, and people would have been like, "Oh, it's amazing!" Because it's like, well, what what else are you gonna see, huh? It's fucking the 1500s, man. There's nothing on Netflix yet, so it's 
So laugh at uh, laugh at this shit. Yeah, I don't know. Shakespeare's fucking trippy. There's that whole thing too where people think that like Shakespeare wasn't even really like a dude. That he didn't really write any of that stuff. He's just like a fucking just a painting of a guy's face that they put on the fucking the scripts or whatever when they published it. It was like a printing, like a I mean not printing, but like a publishing company or something. Kind of. But I don't know. Then some people think that like uh what the hell? It was like the pen name of some other fucking dude. There's a bunch of shit. But that's the crazy thing about history, man. You know, talking about that, we really have no fucking idea what that shit was actually like. It's fun to speculate, though, to think about it. But yeah, it's also weird, too. I think, too, that um, what's interesting about Shakespeare is he wrote so many tragedies. Um... The kind of tragedies where, like, just everybody dies and nothing fucking works out, right? And, like, in uh, in today's day and age, you wrote a movie like that where it's, like, all the main characters just die at the end and everything sucks. You'd be like, dude, you'd walk out of the theater and be like, that was, that was fucking awful. What did I just watch? I mean, Breaking Bad was kind of like that, and actually that was fucking dope for that reason. But it makes me wonder if uh, the reason why the fucking tragedies were so popular is because everybody's lives were so fucking, um, so, like, boring, but also content in their boringness. And so, like, it was exciting for them to go and see uh, a portrayal of immense tragedy on stage because there wasn't actually that much tragedy in their own lives. Which is like kind of the opposite of what, you know, everybody, they always try to make you think that like medieval times were like, oh, it was fucking total shit. You were a slave in a field as a serf and indentured servitude and everybody got the plague. And nobody had toilets and everything, but it's like, yeah, like the thing about being a serf, man, is all you do is you'd farm and then you just drink beer with your family and friends. And that was like your whole life. You work in the fields, you drink beer with your family and friends. Um... If there's any crime, there's literally a dude who lives in a castle who trains his whole life uh, to fight people with his friends and he wears like a fucking six million dollar suit of armor and he'll just ride horses over the bandits if they give the town shit, so like, you know, not a lot of like real problems. Um, there was a shitload of like war happening all the time, but it was mostly like professional soldiers fighting professional soldiers because like, uh, you don't want to kill your farmers. Because after you capture the farm, you need them to farm the land still and grow the food. So, like, the farmers were mostly left alone. I mean, there were, like, peasant levies and shit that had to fight in battle sometimes. But, like, there was nobody who actually thought that was a good strategy. You can't just take a bunch of farmers and expect them to do anything. So, like, you know. You just kind of show up and run away, I think, was probably the fucking thing. No one's going to, like, no one's going to punish a peasant levy for fucking running away. But they're just there to, like, you know, build the numbers out. Or whatever the fuck. So, I don't know, dude. I think about that. I think about that shit a lot. Historical times. Because, like I said, it just seems like... It just seems like people were just, like... I don't know. Having a lot fucking better time than we are now. And, like, all this shit is fucking dope, dude. But it's, like, you get fucking overwhelmed modern society and I think that's one of the things is like simplicity in life can be a fucking really good thing where did that hole go oh, I gotta fix this heading here gotta make time man gotta make time make time talk about simplicity in life I gotta deliver these virtual commodities man I'm gonna get fucking fired my dog's gonna bite me ah fuck 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 shit but yeah everybody's all like everybody's all stressed out and anxious and fucking, uh, there's a lot of depression and shit. And I know, I've dealt with my fair share of it, man. Let me tell you what. We all have. But what I've noticed, I've noticed this is a fucking controversial take here, maybe. So, you know, bear with me. Bear with me on this one. But what I've found about anxiety, for me, is that what it actually is. And I fucking sat down. Talk about sitting down on a rock on a beach and watching fish jump. I've fucking been doing a lot of that, man, because... You know, a lot of my friends and shit, I had to cut them out of my life because of all the fucking crazy-ass drugs going around and everything. And 
People are just fucking, uh... People are just fucking changing when they've, you know, I don't want to be around that shit, so I fucking cut a lot of people out of my life and I had a lot more free time. So instead of going out to parties, smashing beers or whatever, I just fucking go down and just think, just think about stuff. Write some poetry maybe, I don't know. But the point being, this is what I've, I've come to understand about my own anxiety, and only quite recently, is that when I get anxious, it's not that I'm afraid necessarily of fucking failure or afraid of danger or afraid of something bad happening. When I get anxious, it's because my fear is of missing out on a good thing. It's this attachment to like a good situation that I get anxious that I'm not going to get to experience because I desire to experience something. Like for instance, talking about this cargo on my ship, you know, sailing the ship around, I get anxious when people chase me, but the anxiety isn't from um, the fear of losing the cargo or of the ship sinking, it's the fear of not being able to cash the cargo in and get the money from the, the fucking cargo. And I know that that's like such a fucking minute distinction and it almost doesn't seem any different. Because what's the fucking difference between, um, between being afraid of losing the cargo and being afraid of not cashing the cargo in? And the only reason why I believe that there's a distinction for me in that regard is because I've tried to, uh, to, to subdue my anxiety. And if I try to subdue it by convincing myself, for instance, in this situation, that, well, having the ship sink isn't that bad, right? I'll still be anxious about it. But what does work is if I convince myself that cashing in the cargo isn't that good, then my anxiety goes away. So, like, figure that one out, right? And that's what I've come to fucking learn, man. In order to fucking, if I get really anxious about a situation, I just convince myself that, like, the thing I'm worried about not working out isn't that fucking good, you know? So it's like, you get anxious about going out, meeting people and shit, and you think, like, oh, dude, what if I say something stupid? Uh, you know? And you just get attached to like this idea of like, oh, what if you could just go and hang out with these people and say like the perfect shit and you could just be like awesome friends and everything and whatever. And then I just convinced myself like, you know what? Being fucking cool isn't even that cool. If that makes any sense, you know? Saying the perfect shit, I've done it before. It's not that big of a deal. It's like the real shit in life that I've come to learn that is, uh, is fucking makes life worth living is the shit that you can't predict anyways right um it's not about like cashing the cargo and making the coin that's cool but it's about uh you know maybe you're gonna get into a fucking cool chase and you get away but you could never predict how that chase is gonna go or when it's gonna happen so i don't know like i've said i'm not a fucking i'm not a guru or a doctor or anything but that's like that's my whole thing about anxiety that i've kind of like i've kind of like figured out about it is i've had tremendous success in the last six or so months just figuring that shit out man after years and years of trying to fucking figure out how to get get rid of my anxiety and i've realized that it's like yeah if i just convince myself that the shit i'm worried of losing isn't that good instead of focusing on trying to think that you know failure isn't that bad i still get anxious but if i convince myself that it's like you know what doing the fucking having everything work out isn't always that good or whatever. And I know that almost seems like, you know, you gotta have, you gotta have that desire to fucking, uh, that attachment to a good outcome to keep you going, but, um, I don't know, I'm just doing shit for the sake of doing shit these days. Because it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. I've had things work out fucking great sometimes, and at the same time, it's like, yeah, so what? It's not really the destination, it's the journey, you know? So if you give up on, on uh, worrying about the destination sometimes, then, like, the anxiety melts away. But I don't know. That's just my own personal experience with it. I know it's probably different for everybody. But it is something that, uh, now that I've kind of figured this shit out a bit for myself, I would like to start talking to some people I know about it. See if they have any success with it, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of anxiety going around in society. And I think, like, talking about that 
uh, talking about that um, train of thought there, right? I think the reason why we're we have so much anxiety, not um, in this modern world, even though, like, dude, we're the healthiest we've ever been. We have more shit than we did 50 years ago. Uh, you know, we got fucking uh, safety and security. Uh, we don't have to go fight crazy wars. I don't got to go in a fucking push a pike, you know. But at the same time, um, because of modern technology, there are so many opportunities all around us that I think that we're feeling like we're missing out on because it's impossible to fucking just like pick one direction and go with it you know um, it's like people work and they uh, they're making fucking more more money to fucking get by and survive and shit but then they look at fucking Jeff Bezos and they get fucking anxiety and depression because they'll never have a billion dollars and like that's a pretty extreme case of it but like dude I've met people like that they're just like torn apart uh, by the idea that somebody else just has more money than they do that they'll never have and then it's like that attachment to that fucking situation they feel like they're missing out on it and uh, yeah it makes them fucking anxious and I guess what I was trying to say too before that I sort of just like um, that I guess I couldn't get out is that um, we think that it's the shit like the shit you get attached to like cashing in these fucking uh, boxes and making the coin. We think that you have to do that thing to be happy. But like the truth is, is that happiness, it fucking comes from everywhere. And like I was saying, sometimes like the, the most thrilling situations and the most happiness that you can experience is from uh, situations that you had fucking no attachment to because you had no idea whatsoever what was going to happen. You know, you have absolutely no idea. Um, like when I ran that fucking stream and like that, that galleon showed up and shot all those fucking flares and shit and everything. And it was like, damn, yeah, I sunk. But like, that was fucking awesome. That was hilarious when that happened. I was like, holy fuck. That was actually some, some fucking good footage from that. So it's like, you know, I think that it's like surprise is kind of like the spice of life for me these days. But the thing is, is when you fucking get paralyzed with that anxiety and you get paralyzed with that depression, then, like, you don't put yourself in out there and into those situations where you can fucking get surprised and whatever, so. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That's one thing that, like, that took me fucking years sitting on a rock watching fish jump to figure out that much. I don't know if that's still the whole fucking, uh the whole piece of the pie there, because, like, dude, I still, I still get nervous about shit. And I, I fucking, uh, I find, uh, you know, it doesn't work all the time. So I think that's just maybe, that's just one form of anxiety. I think anxiety is an interesting thing because it's just so many different things. I could talk about Kierkegaard, Kierkegaard there and he says it's the, the dizziness of freedom. And we have like more freedom now than we fucking ever did in our entire lives. And that's even like, um, not just because of, uh, the opportunities from technology, but I mean, you know, it was like uh, 60 years ago, um, 70, 80 years ago, like fucking divorce wasn't even legal until the late 70s in the United States. You like couldn't get a divorce in a lot of states in the U.S. And it wasn't acceptable uh, to really do anything with your life, but go get a fucking job and uh, go marry somebody and have kids and a family. Like that was your literally your only choice. So like, yeah, there's always going to be a choice to be like a social outcast and go do fucking um, whatever you want in that regard. But I think that like, you know, when the whole world is pushing you into one direction, then you're less anxious because you feel like you don't have that choice. Now, I'm not saying that we should go back to fucking socially pressuring people. I think we need to keep going in the direction we're going. Absolutely. Um, we need to have as much choice and freedom and everything. But like we need to fucking we need to conquer this shit, man. We need to, like, overcome the fucking dizziness of freedom, dude. We gotta fucking figure out this shit in order to move forward as a world, dude. Because this is, like, I feel like all the anxiety, it just breeds fear, right? And then once you're afraid uh, and you're anxious, then people turn against each other in ways that, like, you know, we could all be getting along a whole lot better, but it's that fear of missing out, man. And you think that that other person is the reason you're going to miss out on shit. And then we start attacking each other. And, uh, you know, that's why we got all this division in 
politics in the world and everything. So I think that we're going in the right direction, but it's just like, dude, these are unprecedented times in human experience. Whereas all throughout history, you know, I mean, even going back as far as the medieval times, okay, for instance, I was talking about maybe people, they seemed like they were less anxious, but like, dude, you didn't even have the choice of, uh, of what job you worked. It was like if you were born a carpenter's son or, or uh, I was going to say son or daughter, but I mean, if you're, I mean, women didn't even fucking, weren't even allowed to work, really. So there's even less choice there, but like, you know, as a guy, if you were born a carpenter's son, you were to become a carpenter. If you were born a mason's son, you were to become a mason. So there's one choice that was taken out of your life. You didn't even get to choose your profession. It was just kind of what you were born into. So on the one hand, it's like, you know, you don't have the freedom of choice of profession, but on the other hand, you don't have to suffer the anxiety of the choice of what to do with your life. So yeah, it's like as we start to open society up and bring down all these barriers and let people live their lives uh, any way that they choose, we need to figure out a way to um, to deal with all this fucking freedom we got now and to be able to just like, you know, live our fucking lives without having to worry about like, Dude, anxiety, man. Oh, it is the worst fucking feeling in the whole the whole fucking universe to me, man. Mine, when I get it bad, it's so fucking bad. I would just rather be in a fucking fist fight getting hit in the fucking head than than the the level of anxiety that I felt in my life is just the fucking worst. And I don't mean to like bring anybody down, but like anybody who's ever felt it, dude. I'm just saying that like that shit is fucking. You can you can learn ways to deal with it and. We all got you, but also too, it's like, dude, that shit's real, and don't let anybody fucking discount your experience, dude, because that shit's fucking real, dude. That shit is real when it's real. It's like, it's the realest thing ever sometimes. But, uh, you know, whatever. Um, I'm figuring out my shit, and as soon as I figure out my shit, I'll be the first person to help everybody else out with it, because that's some fucking bullshit that we should not have to deal with. And, like, unfortunately, you know, like, I've talked about Xanax and shit, and that's, that's like can be kind of a good thing to help you uh, to calm down and get out of your your paralyzing fear and stuff but it's just it's not uh, a long-term solution not a lot of uh, medications are because you get that uh, you get a tolerance to them and then with Xanax you know you take it and then you gotta fucking quit it and then your anxiety is even worse and blah 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 so it's it's like a combination approach I think we need we need like a new like a modern philosophy that fucking works so I've been like digging through a lot of those philosophies of the fucking the 1800s, man. A lot of, lot of good shit in there. A lot of good shit all over the world, too, though. Philosophy, like, you know, I got one of the things, I don't want to talk about religion, but a lot of the, uh, a lot of the philosophies from religion are really fucking good. But it's just, like, the whole, like, you know, the dogma uh, of believing in shit that you can't really fucking prove and all sorts of crazy shit. That's, like, whatever. I don't want to talk about that shit, but, like, you know, I was talking about Buddhism. Like, Buddhists have a lot of fucking... A lot of good philosophy in that shit, you know. Even like like Christianity, like the whole main philosophy behind uh, Christianity is that we all feel guilty of something, and we all uh, desire forgiveness from it, right? And that's like uh, that's a philosophy right there that you got to learn how to forgive yourself. I mean, forgiving other people that's important too, but especially, dude, you know, we all do shit. Um, we all do shit as kids, man. And we fucking forget about it, and it's like you carry that guilt and embarrassment with you your whole fucking life, and you don't even remember what the hell it even was that you're fucking embarrassed and shameful of. And so it's like you, you gotta fucking, you gotta learn how to just like, you know, forgive yourself and accept yourself, regardless of uh, whatever the hell you did in the past, man. Everybody deserves a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. I mean, especially when it's like, you know, you're talking about you judging yourself. You gotta fucking give yourself that fucking chance, man, to keep going on. I mean, as for other people, there's people in my life that I fucking, I'll probably never forgive when shit happened between us. And, and I'm kind of of the way where I need an apology from somebody before I can forgive them, because I don't really see how the fuck you can forgive somebody if they're not willing to apologize, right? But like, you know, when it comes to yourself, dude, apologize to yourself and then forgive yourself and do that as many fucking times as you have to, because like, that's not something. That's not something anybody should have to carry around with them, and, you know, it's like, you gotta fucking live with yourself, man. That's the whole thing. Sitting around feeling sorry, just like, I've been that guy too, man, for a lot of years. Sitting around feeling sorry for yourself.
Ain't no good. Feels kind of good, though. It's kind of like a fucking... Theo Vaughn's talked about that shit. Uh, that comedian Theo Vaughn, I saw him uh, talking on Joe Rogan. He was talking about that, how he's like... Um, he doesn't drink, but for him, his, his drink, his alcohol is feeling sorry for himself, you know? Beating himself up. And I totally fucking get that, because sometimes it's just easier... Uh, it's easier to sit around and just think that you're a piece of shit and you don't fucking deserve anything. Because then that way you don't have to deal with the fucking anxiety of uh, actually having to figure out what to do with your day and what with your life, right? So there's kind of a fucking calming thing to do with that. And I think that that's probably a lot of people, like, you know, not to get too dark here, but, like, uh, people struggling with drug addiction and shit as well. Um, I feel like they're... When you're... Uh, what the fuck was that show, Get Him to the Greek with Russell Brand? Um, that was a fucking funny movie, by the way. It's smoking that fucking... They called it a Jeffrey. It's like, what What the fuck is in this? He thought it was a joint. And it's like, oh, it's got, like, PCP. It's got, like, all this shit. He's like, what the fuck? Why do you call it a fucking Jeffrey, man? He's like, oh, because, like, uh, you know, nobody's afraid of Jeffrey. Jeffrey's just, like, the friendly friendly bloke down the street. Oh, no problems with Jeffrey. And then they're all, like, freaking out, fucking feeling the walls and shit. But, yeah, Russell Brand's character in that story, he ends up getting addicted to, uh, to heroin. And then he's like, yeah, well, like... Think about my day, man. Like, your whole fucking day. You got all these shit you gotta worry about. I only got one thing I gotta worry about. Whether or not I'm gonna get heroin. Like, that's it. My whole day's set out, so fuck you. What do you think about that? And I think there's, like, a truth to that, man. That people get addicted to that shit because, like, they just wanna, like, narrow their life down to fucking one thing. So they don't have to feel that fucking, uh, dizziness of choice and confusion. But then, you know, that doesn't work. I mean, uh... That's not a fucking controversial thing to say. It is to some of the people I know, holy shit, once again, my Mr. Rogers moment. If you know people who are addicted to drugs, uh, just go find new people to be around. Because, like, dude, holy. Take care of your family, take care of the ones you love, but, like, dude, if you're not willing to... Uh, put your life on the line for this person, then fucking don't, because, like, holy shit. There's just something about, like, selfishness of it or something. I'm not going to get into all that shit, though, because, you know, everybody's got their own struggles and shit they got to do. I'm struggling with buying these fucking commodities, man. <laughs> but I did it. I got through it. Oh, yeah, I don't need this shit. Unless, where's it going? Finest trading post. Ooh, Derek. By the 20th? That could be on the way. The 20th? Yeah, we'll, fuck, we'll fucking see. As long as there's not a lot of plants. See how many plants there are. Just cloth, I'll fucking do it. Those trading posts are around the outside anyway, so I'll make a little extra coin. Bottles and cloth, bottles and fucking cloth, man. Good shit, yeah, so as long as that uh, Derek's trading post is just around the the outside of the fucking thing, then, then you know. Most of them are, uh, most of them are along the edges, so it should be along my road. I'll have to check after I get these loaded. I gotta keep an eye on those Reapers as well. I guess it was just the one guy, hey? Making fucking good time, though. It's only quarter after four, and I just gotta get to Dagger Tooth, so this should actually be a perfect, perfect fucking five hour run, man. I did it all while talking about philosophy for a bit. But yeah, man, crazy times, crazy times we're living in. But I also find too, you know, it's like with the media. The fucking media, they just focus on the weirdest shit. 
the fucking weirdest shit, man. And I'm not gonna get into, like, conspiracies and all kinds of shit like that. But, um... I guess the whole idea is that, like, you know, things that piss you off and uh, things that make you depressed are what drive clicks. Like, that's what people were saying back in, like, 20, 2015, 2016 and stuff. It kind of, like, uh... Kind of got... The topic got fucking... Like, I haven't heard people talk about that for a long time. Because it was, like... People are kind of wondering. They're like, how come all the fucking shit... Like, you go on Reddit, man, and it's just nothing but, like... The most fucking depressing shit ever. I saw some funny shit on there the other day, though. I don't know if anybody saw on Reddit who saw that shit. Um, there was a house that they built out of fucking bricks. I don't know where this was. Like, cinder blocks. And instead of staggering the cinder blocks, like, boom, 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 and then, like, boom, boom, boom. They were all just fucking parallel. And they put, like, the fucking, um... The mortar in between. And it was like, holy shit, they built a whole two-story house like that before, like, I don't know when somebody stopped by and they're like, whoa, 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 like, this is not how you fucking build a house out of fucking bricks, dude. But, uh, yeah, that's some funny shit. So I always see some, like, some gems are on there anyways, and I use it as, like, a news aggregate site as well. I'm gonna make sure this fucking audio synced here. But, yeah, it's just, like, dude, it's weird shit. It's fucking weird shit. Like, I went on there on, like, Christmas, Christmas Day, and it was, like, in the top fucking ten. There's, like, nothing, nothing cool, and then there's, like, a picture of a guy with a rash all over his fucking torso, and he's like, oh, I went into anaphylactic shock on Christmas Day, and it's like, that sucks, buddy, but, like, why do 56 million people who browse this website have to see that in their top ten? Like, it's fucking kind of weird that that's the way the website works. Like, how did that end up, like, and every day it's like that, man. It's like the weirdest, like, super weird posts. Uh, a lot of the shit that's on there right now is those Am I the Asshole posts where people are like, Oh, you know, I decided to paint my daughter's room the wrong color and then I told her to fuck off Am I the Asshole. And it's like, dude, how about you just, like, you run your family the way that you want and if you think you're an asshole, then either be the asshole or change. Don't go ask a million people on the internet how to do shit because it just seems like, I don't know, it's weird energy of just people, like, just airing their family laundry out into fucking public, asking people how to raise their own kids, and it's like, okay, that's fucked. And and since they get a lot of uh, upvote, up up dudes there, that's just kind of what we've been seeing for the past bit. Because like you know, someone can post one of those, and they'll get uh, regardless of whether they're the asshole or not. So you can just post a rage bait story where you're obviously the asshole in the situation, but then you'll get like 5,000 fucking comment karma, or post com uh, karma for that shit. And then like, if you, you run your account up high enough, you can sell that shit to people because it looks like you have a legit account. So yeah, Reddit's fucking weird. Um, but even like the world news, for instance, you go on the world news and it's like, dude, almost every fucking week or two weeks here, for the past like six months, there's been shit about Afghanistan. And it's like, we fucking went to war with Afghanistan for 20 fucking years. It didn't work out. So, like, as far as I'm concerned, why should we ever hear anything about Afghanistan ever again uh, for another fucking 20 years? Because it's like, there's literally nothing we can do. Like, what, do you just have to fucking rub it in any, everybody's face? That, like, we tried. We tried to fucking uh, to sort out a country, and it just didn't work. And now it's like, yeah, as soon as they left, Taliban took over, and now it's like, oh, women aren't allowed to go to university and shit. But it's like, that, that's not really like, is that fucking news? We all knew it was going to happen. And it's like, yeah, okay. So like, there's fucking 250 countries in this world. And yet every fucking day on that website, it's just more news about Afghanistan. And it's like, we're not even in Afghanistan anymore. Like that has nothing to fucking do with, uh, with anybody in Europe or in any of the English-speaking countries, man. It's like, there's literally nothing we can do. We can't fucking go back into Afghanistan to help these people out and to take out the Taliban. We tried it for 20 years. It didn't work out. So, like, how is this relevant to our fucking current situation? And that's what I don't get about the media, is that, like, the news used to be, like, the fucking news, man. It used to be, like, what do we need to hear about? It doesn't all have to be feel-good, but at the same time, like, if you're gonna post shit, about Afghanistan.
Afghanistan, and they're gonna run stories about Afghanistan. Tell me about fucking Burma. Tell me about South Africa. Tell me about fucking Zimbabwe, man. Tell me about Libya. Tell me about fucking Italy. Tell me about what's going on in France, man. There's been like protests in France for the past fucking 10 years going nonstop, popping off every fucking day in Paris. And like, you know, we fucking don't hear anything about that shit. What are they protesting about? What's going on? Like, I don't fucking know. Same thing with England. What's going on in England? What's going on in Spain? Like, I guess I gotta just fucking go look this shit up myself. Like, here I'm, I am complaining about a fucking, uh, talking about drones shoving hot dogs in my mouth, but like, you know. I just feel like a news aggregate site, like, Reddit is supposed to be, and it was, uh, one of the fucking top five, uh, sites on the internet. They claim it gets 56 million hits a day. So, like, when it comes to news aggregate websites, it's, like, kind of the fucking site. And yet, all the fucking stories that end up on there are just, like, the most irrelevant feel-bad shit in the fucking world. So, like, I don't know, man. It's weird times in the sense that the media just seems like they're in the business of bumming people out. It has nothing to do with, like, relevancy to your actual fucking, uh... I gotta find where the finest trading post is here. It's, uh, not actually about what's relevant to your current situation. It just seems like, you know, what fucking makes you sad. But then that's going back to talking about, you know, Theo Vaughn, like, that his drink is fucking, uh, pitying himself, so... For a while there, they were saying that the reason why that happens is it's not, like, because some people jump on the conspiracy train, right? And they think that it's like, oh, it's run by a secret cabal of lizard people who are trying to fucking depress us so they can, uh, I don't fucking know what the end game is on that one. <laughs> that trading post is down there. I'll probably dump these in the fucking water. My last stop is going to be Dagger Tooth here. So yeah, fuck, whatever. But um, what they were saying there is that they're saying it's because of the algorithms, right? So what they found is shit that makes people angry and shit that makes people depressed are the two things that people will click on the most. And like, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. And so what they found on Facebook is, um, you know, the big kicker was police brutality videos. That if you run police brutality videos because it hits the fucking two things, it makes people angry and depressed at the same time. So it's like that shit gets the most clicks. So if you're trying to run advertisements and make money off your fucking stories, you just run accounts that run police brutality videos. And it's like, okay, fuck, I don't know. But it seems like that shit hasn't been talked about in the past, uh, well, not since fucking Trump actually got into office. Because, like, uh, you know, when Trump got elected, all the news was just Trump news. And then they stopped talking about the algorithms and shit, because you can't then say that the algorithms are shoving Trump news in our face nonstop. So, fucking, I don't even know. I have no idea what's going on, man. <laughs> but it's like, we all need to fucking... We all need to, well, I need to, let me say that. I don't know what people, other people need to do, but I need to fucking get the fuck off Reddit, dude. I need to find a new, a new news aggregate site. That suit, uh, site used to be, uh, all those, uh, animal macros. I don't know if you remember that shit back in the day. It was like, uh, the fucking, uh, like socially awkward penguin or whatever. And then like the dinosaur. And then there was like all these things. That shit was neither anger inducing nor depressing, man. And the whole front page was just full of that shit. And I'd go on there every day and click through them and get a little chuckle and be like, ha ha, fucking animal macros, man. That was good shit. And then it got bought out by somebody and it went uh, to a publicly traded company. It went corporate. And that was one of the first things they did in the first year. They're like, no more animal macros on the front page. And then they shut down all the subreddits and they just like, I don't know, man. Turn that place into just a fucking, just a stink chamber. But you know, sometimes you still see that funny shit. I like going to that subreddit, uh, just rolled into the shop. Where they just, uh, take pictures of crazy fucking mechanics, mechanical failures of people's fucking cars when they come into, come into the dealer or the fucking mechanic shop there. That's some cool shit. I used to work at a tire shop back in the day, so. So I know the fucking, I know the feeling. It's some funny fucking shit, dude. We had a car come in one time. <laughs> where it was some dude <laughs> I don't know what the story was the fucking story was but it was some dude let his kid drive it and it was like because of the damage to the undercarriage and the exhaust and shit we had to like take him aside and be like look hey so I don't know what the story was that you got told but it looks to us like somebody fucking jumped a curb 
and uh, over a meridian at like 70 miles an hour. So you might want to fucking talk to your kid about that. I don't know. That's just the damage we saw. So like, yeah, that was a fucking fun job. I also like, um, I also like the fucking, there's a subreddit for like OSHA. Um, it's called like workers comp up here, but the guy's in charge of uh, worksite safety because I did uh, I did floor floors for a while. So that's some fucking funny shit because you see people standing on like three buckets fucking to reach an electrical fixture at, on top of fucking scaffolding and it's like, holy shit, dude. I know you want to get the job done, but it's not worth your life, buddy. Like, just fucking calm the fuck down. You don't need to die today to put that fixture in. Fuck. Some of, uh, some of the fucking shit, dude, that you see. Oh. Got more of this shit? Oh yeah, okay, cargo's late, whatever, fuck it, I don't need it. I don't need that shit. Yeah, some of the people, the shit people do on job sites is pretty fucking funny. But I've never seen anything like, uh, that shit on that fucking... I can't remember what it was called, it was like... OSHA something. I don't know if it was like OSHA disasters or nothing, but... I know catastrophic, r slash catastrophic failure is fucking... is pretty cool, if you're into that sort of thing. Um... You know, it's unfortunate when it happens, but it's shit like, holy fuck, man. It's not even just like, little... Little accidents, it's shit where it's like, you know, they'll have like a crane and they're putting in a stadium and the fucking crane blows down and just fucking annihilates like so much shit. It's fucking crazy, man. Or like just buildings falling down in China or whatever. I mean, it's not always in China, but like, yeah. China is a fucking crazy place. Um, in a good way and a bad way, because it's like, there's a fucking billion people there. And I feel like the whole thing about, um, talking about, like, you know, the Roman Empire and stuff, like, all these empires and shit, they fall apart eventually. And I think that what we're going to realize is that it's not about the size of the empire, it's about the number of people you have in it. So that's why I feel that, like, China's probably going to break apart into some smaller nations. And, like, India probably too. They're running into a lot of shit right now where people are starting to fucking butt heads um, for whatever reason they've always been butt heads in India I guess I don't know I don't know like a lot about modern India because not a lot of news not a lot of people seem to concentrate on it not a lot of English translated stuff but I have heard things there's like you know but it's a billion people right so like it's fucking crazy like you know in China for instance there's a city uh, there's a city of people who live almost entirely buried into the mountainside. And it's a modern city that is that way because that was just the way they've always lived for like the past thousand years. They lived in the fucking, in the mountainside. And it's a city of like 110,000 people who just all live buried into the fucking, the mountainside. And it's fucking so cool, man. It's so scenic. But, uh, because of, uh, you know, the communist fucking rule or whatever, I'm not going to argue about whether or not uh, communism is a good thing or bad thing or whatever. We all have our, our ideas about that shit. You can probably guess what, what mine is. <laughs> but I'm not going to fucking, uh, not going to get into that shit because people fucking love that shit. I'll get into that another fucking time. I've played uh, games like Worm Online where you run towns and shit and I've helped people run towns and we tried to do the communism thing and it's like it has never fucking once worked out, man. <laughs> it's never once worked out. But, uh... Because of the modern communism in China, they fucking, uh, you don't get a lot of info from China, you know? You can't fucking, you can't see a lot of news about these places, and it's like, there's a billion people living there. It's like, it's like five or six countries in one country. And I'd like to hear more shit about the, the cultures of the people who fucking live there. But then there was also that whole, uh, you know, with communism, modern communism, the the cultural revolution that happened under Mao, where they fucking, uh, uh, they got rid of all the fucking culture. It's illegal to practice any martial arts. Uh, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure fucking Buddhism is illegal, because, um, communism is all, it's against any kind of religion. Usually it's an atheist thing. Like, that's the way the Soviet Russians were. So over the course of, like, you know, 10, 15 years there, they tried to really detach themselves from all the ancient, uh, ancient customs and the ancient cultures because like for instance in um soviet russia for instance they do shit where there'd be a path uh a road what the fuck was 
that skullport popping off. There'd be a road that would be there for, um, I don't know, a thousand years. And then they would go and they'd pave asphalt over it and then say that that road never existed until the Soviets came in. So. So I think the whole thing with China is they want to distance themselves from their ancient history as much as possible, which is unfortunate, because that's a fucking cool... That's a cool place, man. All the cultures and everything that we're around reading about, like the old dynasties. I don't know. I hope that, uh, I hope they fucking can get their shit back, dude. Because a lot of that shit has gone underground. Like, they still have, uh, they still have martial arts and shit, but it's all... It's all, uh, it's all gotta go underground, man, because it was illegal for a long time. I know that it's like, uh, they fucking have been bringing it back, some of the shit they've, you know, they're less intense about the fucking rules of it. Um, the rules of whether or not you can practice it and whatever. I knew some people who did, uh, who did martial arts here because, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of Chinese people came over to Vancouver. Uh, a lot of people from, like, there's a lot of Cantonese from Hong Kong. And, uh... And yeah, they brought over their fucking uh, martial arts schools and shit. And so I knew people who uh, practice martial arts uh, here in British Columbia. And they were allowed to travel back over to China and show off the, uh, the art forms and stuff for the Chinese when they started to allow it again, so... So yeah, I don't know. Crazy place, man. The whole thing everybody's saying now, like, just straight up, is that, like, China's just fucking not gonna be around in ten years, but I don't have... I have no idea. That's a crazy thing to say, right? Crazy thing to say. I mean, I believe they'll, they'll always be a fucking... There's always gonna be something there, obviously. That's getting into fucking economic talk. T. 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 Is this it? What's my next stop here? Galleon's Grave or Dagger Tooth? I guess Galleon's Grave is my last stop, so I gotta go unload. Unload and load up a Dagger Tooth, and then, yeah, by the time I fucking hit uh, Galleon's Grave there, that'll be the end of it. The end of the stream. Talk about fucking chill seas today, man. Must be because it's Sunday. Everybody's all, uh, all fucking sailed out from the weekend. All right. This is Sanctuary. Sold the sugar. Not missing anything. Get this fucking shit up. I should uh, swing by the Reaper's Outpost and see if I can sell this merchant cargo. That would be fucking funny to do that. I gotta keep an eye on that uh, that one Reaper though that is in the water. It's over at Shark Fin Camp. Fuck, he's got an Emissary 5 as well. Oh, it had to be Dagger Tooth. Had to be dagger tooth. Captain Toby says should be a good result tonight, given it was the complete opposite of last night. Yeah, I hear you, man. Um, depends on what this fucking Reaper wants to do, though, because you know I'm a level five merchant at this point, and he's got the five uh, the five bars there, so he'll know that I'm a dagger tooth and galleon. So like, I gotta fucking get in there, do my thing at dagger tooth. I'll keep an eye on him, uh, load and unload, then get over to galleon and. I guess I don't have to fucking, I don't have to cash, excuse me, I don't have to cash out a galleon. I could go cash out somewhere else. I should do dagger tooth though. But yeah, if I'm just cashing out, I could sail down to Ancient Spire and fucking cash out there. Uh, let's see, I'll get the stone from 
Stones from Galleon's Grave, though. Because the whole thing, too, is I don't want to fucking... Captain W says PvE Reaper. Yeah, I fucking think so, too, buddy. I think it's a PvE Reaper. Should be fine. You just never know when they might get too big for their britches. What's this? Another Skelly Sloop? Two in one night, truly. Truly, I am blessed by Neptune. Yep, that's the fucking one. Probably shouldn't go into this storm, but whatever. That'd be funny if it was a fucking galleon. It's never a galleon. Yeah, whatever. I should be able to just sail away from him. Let's see. Let's fucking see. We definitely go a little bit further south. Oh. Oh, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna deke out to the northwest, because they're on the move. So I'm gonna see if, uh... Usually I deke out to the south, but I think they might be sailing into uh, the Reaper's hideout for a sail. So if I pull up into the northwest corner of the map here, I'll be able to see if they uh, they sail off to the side and come after me or not. And then if they do, I'll fucking, uh, you know, pull the all Looney Tunes evasive maneuvers. Pull every ace I got up my sleeve. Kind of a fucking shitty place to, to sail up into, though, box myself into the corner, like, Jesus. This is a gamble, man. I'm gambling on them being a PvE Reaper and not coming up here. Otherwise, I, uh... I guess I'll just fucking, uh, I'll hang out by that island, man. Depending on what they are. I mean, they're probably a Galleon or a Brig. They're not really, you know, like the Reaper's hideout is down there, so they're more coming for me than they are doing anything else, but usually, like, if I cut southeast, I'd have more, more fucking, uh, ocean to play with, but if they're going down to Reaper's, yeah, see, then they would have cut me off as I tried to evade them, so. Okay, doesn't look like they're coming my way. getting chased by a ship then it's gonna cut out in and out constantly. Oh, okay, I see how you're gonna play it. Man, of all the fucking of all the places there had to be a level five Reaper. Not to be at those last two ports, but that's cool because it's only uh four hours forty minutes in here, so I'm making good time anyways. I'm just gonna chill out here for a minute.
We're in the old Mexican pirate standoff. <laughs> What's he doing? They got like one sail popped at half. And a galleon. Captain Toby says either they forgot something or they've got a fight. Yeah. Hmm. They're going like super slow. They are moving though. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, they're moving just a tiny bit. So they didn't get like cracked or anything. But I'll just wait it out. Okay, they're turning now. I'll see if they fucking turn. Turn directly at me like a heat seeking missile. Which I uh, I don't think that they fucking would though, just because you know they're already a five, so they probably got a whole a whole fucking crate full of loot themselves, right? Oh, oh, no, yeah, no. Hmm. Okay. That looks like they're coming my way. Maybe not. Ah, oh, dude, this is like fucking... This is the stuff. This is the adrenaline. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna see if I can, uh, I'm gonna head further north. And then see if I can sneak past them around the north and see what they're doing up north. See if they turn towards me or what. If they turn towards me, I might try a south cut. But if I can sneak past them around the north side, I'll uh, be able to tell if they're heading my way or not. Because right now they're heading is a little too fucking sus. A little too close to call. They either could be uh, heading down to the Reaper's outpost or they could be coming to start shit with me. But I, I got a feeling that based on that heading, it looks like they are going to come start shit, so... I mean, not so much now, but we'll see which way they turn. I'll have to, um... The wind's blowing north, so I will have to fucking sail past them somehow. Which is gonna be a tough call, but, uh... What do I got for islands to work with up here? Pretty much old faithful. So not a whole fucking shitload. Gonna be close. Gonna be close. Should be fine. As long as I can sail it over there to Old Faithful before they try to cut up north, if they do decide to cut up north, then I'll be fine. But I mean, I don't... Excuse me, Meg. That's rude. That's rude. Very rude. Very rude.
Oh, a little bit south. Beat me out of the danger zone. Oh yeah, looks like they're going to sell now. Fucking jerk, come on. Come on. Alright, heading's still good. Surprise getting hit by a Megalodon doesn't uh, fuck up your heading worse, right? It's a gentle shark. One small hole. Just a good old boy, man. He don't mean no harm. At this point, I could just shoot him with a cannon. That's animal cruelty, man. Thank you, sir. May I please have another? Is that uh, what's that reaper now? Down the sanctuary, okay. Works for me, man. I'll cut down a dagger tooth and keep doing what I'm doing. place for a reaper to cash out, but whatever. I'm not the captain of their ship, they can do whatever they want. No wind now though, god damn.
Oh, yeah, that's a sandbar. Nope. It's good. Probably huck those overboard at some point. Good old dagger tooth. Silks, man. Good old silks. Not the first time I've sold silks at dagger tooth either. Got him. Take that, you fucking ghost. Yeah, not even close. Oh, that was a good hit. something I could do with all these uh, Trident of Dark Tides. Which, uh, I guess that's a Trident, I don't know, whatever. Kind of a sloppy, uh, sloppy Trident. I call it a staff, personally, but I'm not in charge of those things. I guess anything that comes out of a, a fucking ocean is a Trident these days, you know? There's no standards and tridents anymore, man. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable.
perfect. Not a docking, and I don't lose. There's two blanks. Uh, gonna be the end there. Oh, it's Juniper. Dude, I thought that was fucking Jupiter. God damn, am I getting like more dyslexic as these streams go on? Because I've talked about it, but like this is not actually a problem that I've had um, as seriously throughout my life as I have had sailing this ship around. Juniper makes a lot more sense than Jupiter, especially if like the other chick's name is Clementine. And then this this fucking <laughs> this fucking bitch is just named Jupiter. Like what the fuck? Okay, whatever. Never mind. My bad. Silks. More silks. More silks. Unbelievable. on these dock jumps. Zorark says I made it. Hey, what's up? You uh, are just in time for uh, that part of the stream where I silently uh, cash out everything and have completely run out of things to say. Um, this actually isn't final payout. Uh, there's one more stop. So there's still time. There's still time for good times, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there's one more. There's one more. Zorark says, just playing Elite Dangerous, I am. Good to hear. How's that working out for you? Has it been a good session? Zorak says, I see uh, tridents, which means combat. Yeah, I sunk a, uh, I sunk a skelly sloop. I fucking found these. Just floating around. Float some jetsam, you know? So, uh, honestly, it's, uh, I didn't really uh, miss anything this stream, man. Except uh, some hot takes on communism. Which I probably shouldn't have given. I should probably keep my thoughts about communism myself. It's a hot topic, dude. It's a hot topic. It's way too political for this shit. I got this fucking bug uh, flying around in my room here. 
I've been flicking off shit. Oh no, I'm done. You missed it. You'll have to catch it on the VOD or maybe another stream. I'll accidentally start talking about communism. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, what can I say? Sharing is caring, I guess. So fucking whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like kind of talking about uh, Captain Toby says a brief mention of lizard people again. Yeah, um, which of course I do not believe in. They do not exist. So don't fucking. Uh... Zorak says I wish I was here for that because I would have had a really big hot take. Yeah, what's your hot take on communism? Are you for or against communism? Against. Zorark is against communism. It's official. Remember that, communists. When you're putting people against the wall, Zorark, Zorark's gotta go. No, I'm 100% uh, with you. Communism is just fucking whack. It, it seriously, you know, it's just us here now, right? There's no fucking, no dirty communist in the fucking, uh, in here anymore, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't like, yeah. Zorark says, like, to the gallows, the people who support it. I, you know, I just feel like, you know, like, I'm for unions. I'm for, like, socialism. I'm for all kinds of crazy shit. That's not, like, that crazy kind of shit and everything, but it's, like, communism is just fucking, it just doesn't work the way that people explain it to work. Um, you know? I think that people should fucking maybe get paid a little more. People should get paid enough to live. That's not crazy. That's not a crazy take. That's not communism. Oh, that would have been a fucking uh, chin on the dock. Yeah, I was going to tell a story about... Uh, you ever play that game Worm Online? Where you make uh, you make towns and shit? We had a fucking town, dude. And uh, I was one of the... Not the founding member, but the second dude. It started out where I was... Um, I was just flattening some farmland, and then I some fucking guy bought up the land beside me. And then I was like, oh, cool. And then he bought up my farmland, and then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to live in your town then. And then, uh, yeah, I was a blacksmith for a bit, but, like, oh, dude, people would join the town. And they just wanted, like, all my shit. And I was like, well, that's cool, but, like, how about you fucking do something in exchange for it? And they're like, Rrr. And then uh, I forged all these swords. I spent like 12 hours forging these swords because we got attacked by fucking spiders. Uh, these giant spiders. And I was like, well, we need swords for defense. So I forged eight swords. And within a week, all the swords were gone because I told everybody, yo, when you take the sword from the barracks, put it back in the barracks, right? Because, like, you know, we're communists, but uh, we need these fucking swords. They took me 12 fucking hours to forge these swords up to their quality level so we can fight spiders and people would just take the swords and log off with them and I know that that's not like real life or anything but like dude every single time that I've run a group with people friends or strangers uh, and you're in a game where there's like an inventory system and there's fucking material goods right and you gotta craft for the material goods and shit and everybody has access to the storage uh, without any kind of like uh, you know any kind of system that's like it's just kind of like the communist honor system uh it fucking falls apart within a week everybody just fucking takes a whole bunch of shit they don't give a fuck about anybody but themselves and they just use all the shit all willy-nilly they don't worry about like uh you know if you have healing supplies they'll just go out and they'll use all the fucking healing supplies for the whole village in an hour and they don't worry about like oh it Am I actually contributing to a point where I can replenish the healing supplies? Because, like, you know, if you go out and you kill stuff and you get loot and you bring it back and then we can make more healing supplies, it's like, nope. They just use it all up and then they say, oh, bring me more. I need more healing supplies. It's like, bro, it took me eight hours to craft those and those were for everybody and you use them all a fucking hour. Yeah. So I don't know. And then you take a look at, like, um, the real world. Um, like the USSR. Yeah, that worked out great. You know, take a look at fucking China. They're not even technically communist anymore because it just doesn't work out I don't know it's just a hell of a dream you know to just be able to do literally nothing and still just fucking get paid for it and live in a big house like that's the communist dream is to just like do nothing 
I guess. I talked to a guy from uh, from Soviet Russia one time. He lived lived through communism and he left before it it fucking fell. And we asked him, well, did uh, did it work? Or rather, it was like, what do you like better, communism or capitalism? He said, I liked communism because you fucking didn't have to work and they still gave you vodka. And it was like, bro, that's fucking why communism doesn't work. You know? If you can just get free liquor without having to fucking do anything, it's like, duh. Duh. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not a fucking monster. I believe in, like, socialism and shit. I believe we should take care of fucking... Take care of each other. But I also believe that we all need to be, like, pressured to contribute in some way or whatever. But I also don't understand, like, I don't understand um, Soviet-style communism, like, how that shit worked. I mean, the whole idea is that uh, you have, like, a centralized organization to everything, and everything is communally owned. So, like, the government, for instance, how many tractors need to get made instead of the free market, right? And so then they'll make a mandate to create tractors, and then they round up a bunch of fucking uh, dudes and, uh, you know, make them build tractors. But it just, um, you know, getting beyond the whole philosophy of people just wanting freebies, uh, the centralized organization in communism never fucking works. Like, China had a huge problem with that um, when they're going through their shit, because one of the things they did, for instance, is they decided that... Uh, what the fucking hell? I don't even know why. The sparrows were eating the crops, they thought. So they had a big communist-style campaign where everybody was um, forced to kill all the sparrows. And then it turned out that the sparrows were actually also eating the bugs that in the granaries. So without the sparrows... The fucking, all the food spoiled because it got covered in fucking bugs that the sparrows were going to eat. Right? And that's a fucking true story. You can look that shit up. Uh, another thing that happened is they got all the farmers. They decided, okay, well, we're with this agrarian farming society. And uh, we need metal to be a, a modern industrial society. So we're going to fucking, uh, we're going to make a bunch of iron. So they told all the farmers to make iron instead of farm. So they melted down all their fucking farming farming tools and turned it into the shit called pig iron, which is like the lowest quality iron possible. All of it was completely useless. They had no farming tools, and then like millions of people fucking starved to death because of it. So like, yeah, that's China. And then this whole shit, they had that one child policy, where they only allowed to have one kid for so many years, and they only uh, just stopped that very recently because, um, now their fucking country is an inverted pyramid, right? With all the old people outnumbering the younger people. They don't have enough young people to replace the old people. Uh, they have a fucking billion people in the country. So, like, in Canada, for instance, we're running into that issue. But our whole solution to it is just, like, bring more people into the country, right? Because we only got, like, uh, 35 million. So we can import them from wherever the fuck we need to. But when you're China and you have a billion people, China can't import more people, man. Like... They are kind of like the place we import some people from, China and India, because they got a whole shitload of them, and just bring them on over, come work here. So yeah, they're running into some problems, and because of the one-child policy also, and the whole thing with like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting deducted like a million points right now, my own fucking chat rolls, like I'm just hemorrhaging points, it's like... Psh, 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 psh. But yeah, so the fucking, the one-child policy is, uh, uh, made it so that 20% of fucking uh, China's younger generation from like, you know, birth to 30s, uh, they're 20% more males than females. So like, that's fucking, that's communism. And it's not even the whole problem with like, uh, you know, like I was saying, people getting free shit. It's just the whole centralized leadership of a country. I feel that like, um, it just tends to work better when people are all uh, figuring shit out on their own. In a, in a matter of speaking, that invisible hand of the free market. And it's like, yeah. Um, shit's not working out the best it could right now. That's a sleuth. Cash out, but whatever. He'll be gone. Things aren't working out the best they are right now, but if anything, that's because we're, uh, we're heading towards this weird style of capitalism that's actually more like communism because it's like, 
all the fucking, you know, there's only like, uh, in Canada, for instance, we have a problem where there's only like two, uh, two telecommunications companies. There's, uh, Rogers Bell, because they fucking merge together or whatever, and then we got TELUS over here. So if in, uh, in British Columbia, we only have the option of, uh, subscribing to TELUS or, uh, or Rogers, right? So you only have two choices. They collude. It's called a cartel. And uh, our fucking cell phone prices, dude, and our internet prices are like three or four times what they are anywhere else in the world. And uh, compared to some places in Europe, they're like ten times higher here in Canada because of that. And that's not uh, that's not capitalism. People think that that's fucking they're like, oh, it's bullshit capitalism. We should get internet for free. But it's like, dude, it would be one tenth of the price it was if it was true capitalism. And instead of having one telecommunications company, we had like five or six. So that shit's got to get broken up. I think. Or something. I, I I really don't fucking know. I shouldn't have started talking about it because now now I have like a million negative a million points, negative a million chat points. I'm never gonna fucking dick myself out of this hole. I was gonna make that one of my my Twitch panels is the fucking the chat point score. Where I'm currently just on in the lead with like negative one billion. But it's fucking tough, dude. It's tough when you start like talking about shit. I don't mean to like break kayfabe here, but doing the stream shit, I gotta fucking. I gotta kind of keep it going for five hours, right? And uh, it's tough to like, once you start thinking about something, it's really tough to not start talking about it. Cause if you don't, then it's like your fucking brain just shuts down and it's like, ooh, now what am I gonna talk about? But I'll just start talking about like hot dogs more, I think. That's what you guys can look forward to is just more fucking, more talk about whether or not you put mustard on a hot dog. Cause that seems to bring in the most viewers, I guess. I don't fucking know. I'm trying to grow this community here, but it's tough tough man but uh after i get this footage i am gonna post it to the subreddit that shit gets like fucking 90,000 views or whatever so i'll cut together a fucking promo see if i can uh lure some people in that way i do want to i do want to cut some youtube ads as well just some funny fucking ads like i said i had this idea for an ad that would be like a cross between like a 90s uh <laughs> captain Dovey says it's okay if we become a communist stream we can all share your negative chat points Honestly, should we just become a communist stream and then everybody shares the, the negative chat points? Because, like, that might pull some people in. I think that Twitch probably is heavy on the communism. I mean, I had, like, I had fucking um, one viewer there. It's always tough to tell because, like, the viewer counter is about a minute out of sync, right? So someone has to watch it for a minute for it to go up. And then if they stop watching, it takes about a minute for the counter to go down, right? So I, I can never really fucking tell if they left because of something I said. But also, too... I can't fucking give a shit. I mean, that's not the way that this game works, man. I can't fucking, uh... I can't start trying to, like, curate my fucking personality and the shit I talk about based on, uh, whether or not one guy's gonna stay or leave. But, um, I do feel like Twitch probably leans more and more the communist side for some reason, because that, you know, Hassan, he gets, like, 70,000 viewers there, and he's, like, the fucking biggest hypocrite on the planet, but he's a fucking communist somehow. Like, I don't even know what the fuck that shit means these days, to be a communist, because, like, there's been no no fucking communist country has ever worked out. And then you, you fucking talk to some of these people and they're like, oh, well, that's just because, like, the United States, man. And it's like, dude, what the fuck are you... Yeah, it's, I don't get it. I seriously don't even get it. I can't even get into it. I shouldn't get into it. Or maybe I fucking should. Maybe that would be more entertaining. I, I have no fucking idea, but... I'm gonna keep trying anyways. People come and they go, man. We'll fucking... We'll pick some people up here and, um... Like I was saying that, you know, it's like... If I can get 20 regular viewers on Sea of Thieves, then I'm on page one. And then when that happens, you just get like a fucking shitload of people coming and going. And You know, whether they like my brand of entertainment is up to them. But I can only do so much, man. Um, you know, I'm just going to be me. <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking I was talking about that YouTube, running some YouTube ads. It was going to be like a cross between like a, like a, like a 90s furniture commercial and a fucking, uh, like a monster truck rally promo, where it would be like, are you, are you tired of your internet community? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we have nine chat rules. You can break. I don't know. I think it'd be funny. I could, I could come up with some good shit. I'll make it fucking work. Those YouTube ads are pretty fucking cheap to run to, and it'd be funny if I actually fucking brought some people in that way. I've also been, uh, like, I, I uploaded a couple videos to YouTube just to see um, I mean, actually, for no reason at all. I published one of them, 
Um, they're all saved. All the streams are saved on there. But um, I published one, and it got uh, it got 60 impressions from the fucking search. But I didn't make any. Um, <laughs> Captain Dovey says streaming every day, but Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, exactly, man. It would be like a cross between like I get a green screen and I just have like me like fake explosions and like me fucking flying around the screen and it's like I just sail a boat from port to port. It's fucking boring as shit or whatever. I don't know. But but I make more coins than PVPers, so figure that shit out. Like I think that uh, you know I'm a fucking funny guy when I can be funny. Like that's the thing. Um, but it's just like you know, like I said, dude, I'm here. I'm here doing this shit for five hours, so I still gotta like, uh, I still gotta catch my stride and see what the fucking hell. I'm getting fucking, I'm getting better at it, but you know, I don't, I want to make sure that I'm like, I'm like decent or or whatever that means, because I still don't even know what the fucking hell like a stream, a stream really is. Can you even be good at streaming or fucking what the hell, man? Is it just like we're just hanging out? But, um, I want to make sure that there's like something here before I start running like uh, YouTube ads and stuff, you know. At least have a community, maybe 20 people. I know that if I just keep doing these every day, like you guys, you guys know what uh, what what it's about, and you fucking stop in when you stop in. So uh, the more the more I run it, the more people fucking come and go. And um, what I found with the streamers I watch, right, is it's this weird thing where you'll you'll tune in to them for like 20 minutes or something. And you'll be like, what am I even watching? And they'll be like, okay, and then you'll leave. And then like a week later, you'll just get this fucking idea in your head. You'll be like, hey, I wonder what the fuck that guy's up to. And then you just go back to the stream. And then it just like happens more and more until eventually you're just like watching fucking uh, VODs and shit of all of it. So I know that it's something that's like, ah, I just keep going. Keep going with it, man. And we'll fucking, uh, we'll get our little community of whoever the fuck we are here. Uh, you, you two are fucking both super cool, man. I'm actually glad to, to meet you dudes. Like, Dobie, the fact that you even know who fucking, uh, like, that Peter Molyneux made Dungeon Keeper. That's fucking sweet. I was quite surprised. I was like, oh, sweet, this guy's dope. And Zorak, man, I just fucking, uh, I just like your energy, buddy. And your anime, uh, recommendations that I still gotta check out. But this might just turn into a fucking anime stream at some point, because I think I'm gonna bite the fucking bullet. Get that Funimation uh, subscription because it's like, pfft. yeah, we'll see. We'll see, man. We'll see. Sorry, I also got some. Uh, I got some behind the scenes shit. I'm probably gonna fucking D DM you about. I don't know. We'll see here. But again, I'm a very, very busy person. <laughs> uh, Captain Toby says I would hope since it's my favorite anime, unless I decide to switch it to Total Annihilation. I fucking don't know enough about about anime. There's so much of it, man. I was really into uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but like, I haven't gotten through all of Stone Ocean. I was trying to figure out why, and it's just because I'm not into like prison shit, and just the fact that the whole thing takes place in prison. It's kind of like uh, I'd rather have it be like somewhere else because it's such a fantastic shit. But but I've watched like all the fucking you know like I was talking about Evangelion. I love that shit. That shit was fucking cool. But I don't know like uh, Zorak was talking about One Piece. That's like the that was like, you know, one of the top three or whatever you said, the biggest ones. I know I've, I've seen it referenced a lot. It's got, saying it's got a thousand fucking, thousand episodes. Oh shit, how much stone do I have to sell here? Just a couple boxes, I hope, right? This is, yeah, okay, whatever. It's all good, it's all good. But yeah, I mean, you know, if people can't, uh, talking about communism, if people can't handle me talking about fucking China once in a while, then they probably just shouldn't be here. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really, like, fucking, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, like, there's obviously a whole ton of shit that, like, if I was, uh, if I was, like, behind closed doors having a beer with friends that I would talk about that I wouldn't talk about on stream. It is a it is a, a curated experience. I do try to stay as entertaining as possible here. Um, but it's also just fucking, it's, uh, you know. Some things that are interesting to me, man, aren't interesting to other people. There's a thing, but that's the whole thing is we just like, uh, we'll just fucking get who we get because it's like, I don't know, shit, man. I can't read people's minds. 
I ain't no fucking reptilian. <laughs> oh, dude, that shit's so fucking funny. It's funny to me anyways. I love that concept, reptilian aliens. For real, uh, for real, real talk, have you seen that shit too? How the Vatican, the, the fucking, uh, what do you call it? It's like one of their performance halls or whatever, where like, the Pope goes in there and gives speeches or something sometimes. It looks like a fucking snake head. It's like, what the fuck? Are they just fucking trolling us or what, man? It's so fucking, it's so cool. I love it. I'm, uh, I don't believe in reptilian aliens, but I, if, if they did exist, I would be pro-reptilian. I know that's a hot garbage take that, uh, some people will probably get offended by, but I, for one, uh, I, for one, think that, uh, reptilians could probably, uh, could probably do well, man. They could probably do well, uh, running this planet if they did exist. We could learn a lot from them, you know? Or something, I fucking don't know. <laughs> But yeah, it's fucking crazy shit. Crazy shit, man. I've seen a fucking seen that UFO with that one time, but I've never seen a fucking never seen a reptilian, man. Reptiles though, reptiles are cool. I had a buddy who owned some snakes. Um Pretty big snakes too, man. And they're fucking cool because uh, they're cold-blooded, right? So when you put them on your shoulders and your neck and they just hang out, it's like uh, kind of like a symbiotic thing going on because they cool you down, but you warm them up. So it's like, you know, you both are, uh, you both are into what's going on there. But yeah, they're just like, I don't know. They're fucking weird animals, man. They don't have any arms or legs. Like, whew. Hey, what's up with that? At least, like, get some legs, buddy. Like, come on. Friggin... Friggin crazy shit. All scales, no legs, no arms. I mean, legs or arms, one's or, one or the other. I'm not gonna discriminate, you know. It's all good. But, uh... No, I'm just messing around. I fucking, I fucking like them, but... I just don't, like... I can't read. I can't fucking read a reptile. I think that's probably why the whole reptilian alien thing is like so funny and that's why it's become such a such a fucking part of like crazy people culture where they believe in reptilian aliens is because you think of like a reptile, right? And they're just so uh, emotionless. And that's what uh, people who are afraid of aliens and shit, that's why they're afraid of them is because it's like this fucking, this just totally cold calculating emotionless being. But I think that if you owned uh, if you owned a reptile, you could probably pick up on like some of their like they probably do have like body language and stuff that you could pick up on. I just remember uh, my buddy's snake there. I was trying to fucking I was trying to move it onto my arm and I was sort of like yanking at its neck or whatever, and I just felt like a fucking orangutan yanking on a snake, thinking that I was thinking the snake's probably thinking I'm gonna fucking eat it or something. And then, uh, yeah, it, like, coiled a little bit, and when they coil, you fucking should not fuck with them anymore. Because what they'll do is they'll, like, they'll bend their neck and lean back, because that way they... It's, like, basically like somebody winding up a punch in real life, right? So it's, like, don't fucking do that. Don't fuck with the snake, man. But then also, too, like, snakes are weird, because... Um their whole thing like when they eat it's just like so weird to watch man it's like all fucking instinct it's like they almost have no idea what the fuck they're doing they just become like a totally different uh totally different animal man once they fucking smell that that dead rat or whatever you're hitting them in the face with it's like they're just overcome with instinct and then they fucking uh eat that shit unhinge their jaw or whatever my buddy with the snakes, he tried to get me to help uh, help him feed him one one time because the fucking snakes bit him. And uh, that was back when I used to fucking smoke weed with him. Uh, which is actually unfortunate because I, uh, you know, I stopped smoking weed and I haven't hung out with the guy since because he just couldn't handle that I didn't smoke weed anymore. 
it just blew his fucking mind. And he kept trying to convince me that it's like, no, dude, like, it's not the weed, man. You can t you can just just smoke it. It's not. It's like, dude, fucking come on. We can still be friends, but I guess we fucking couldn't. Which is like whack. That that's the way some people are. But uh, yeah, he tried to get me to help him feed the snake, and I would just laugh at him. And then his fiance laughed at me because she's like, "Ha, he just laughs." <laughs> so I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like, no, I'm not gonna help you feed your snake. Like, you own two snakes. If you can't feed them on your own, then you gotta give them to someone else. Like, it's not what I said, but like, you know, I'm just like, no, like, fuck that. You got bit. Now you want me to get bit too? I'm not fucking coming over here. Gonna fucking smoke a bunch of weed and get all anxious and get bit by a snake. Like, that doesn't sound like a good time at all, man. I don't know. Fuck." It was just like so fucking sketchy. I can't remember. He's just like, you can either hold the fucking, you can either hold the dead rat or you can hold the fucking. He had like a, a rag that just smelled like a dead rat, and then he'd get the smell to make the snake fucking turn into a fucking, uh, you know, get him in snake mode or whatever. And then you gotta wave the rat. And so it was like a two thing, handed thing, but he. There was like a shield you gotta hold up between you and the fucking snake. It was like, it was not a professional fucking situation. I did not feel, I did not feel I wanted to be any part of that, man. And it's like, yeah. I probably would have been fine with it if, it was a, if I was sober, but like, dude. I don't know if you've ever fucking smoked weed, but it's uh, the dumbest fucking thing ever. Because it just makes you awkward and anxious. And, uh, yeah. I didn't want to fucking get bit by a snake that night. So, there you go. That's my snake story. But, uh, that's cool. He had, like, a bearded dragon, too. They're chill. Let it out and stuff, but... They don't, uh... They just fucking, like... They're just such weird creatures, man. Reptiles. They don't... They don't fucking... You know, it's not like a dog or a cat. Where they have, like, the ears will go back, or they'll wag their tail, or they'll, you can even tell by, like, their eyebrows, and, oh, pfft. That's it, game over, man, game over. I'm fucking dead. In real life, though, I think that probably would have broken my spine. That's, like, probably the worst thing you can have happen. But yeah, reptiles, dude, they're just so fucking calm, and they don't show any emotion. And I don't even know what, like, what would a snake in distress even look like? They don't even really, like, you know... It's just like... I don't know. It's weird. It's fucking weird. They're also, like, really chill because of that, you know? Talking about anxiety, I don't think that a fucking reptile feels anxiety, dude. Like, I don't- I honest to fucking god don't even- Like, talking about what would a snake in distress even look like. I don't even think they can fucking feel, like, they probably can't even feel distress. Like, I'll bet you that I could go look this shit up, and it's like, the that dude was talking about the am amygdala or whatever. That's like the part of the brain that causes stress. They probably fucking don't even have that shit. They just like, lay in the sun and just go like, hmm. Yes. That's like their entire thought process. It's fucking crazy shit. You ever look up like, Komodo dragons and shit? Um, they fucking, like, they'll just bite something in the lake and then follow it around for, uh, two weeks. They only gotta eat once every two weeks, so they'll find a wildebeest and they'll bite it in the fucking leg. Oh, this is it. This is gonna be the fucking session ender right here. But yeah, they'll fucking, uh, follow a fucking wildebeest around, bite it in the fucking leg, Oh, those, uh, those harpoons always sketch me out. Bite it in the fucking leg, and then, yeah, follow it a week, around for two weeks. That shit's fucking terrifying, dude. To think that, like, you could be in the, the wilderness, and, uh, Komodo Dragon could bite you in the leg, and then it would just stalk you for two fucking weeks until you got sick and died. Because I guess that's their whole thing, right? Is their, uh... Their mouth... Is, like, just disgusting. And venomous. Why am I fucking tripping so hard here? That server merge has got me so paranoid. Apparently that's something that human beings as well. We have incredibly disgusting mouths. I would imagine it's the same for every animal, but 
apparently people, like, you know, if you actually, this is fucked up to say, but like, if you bit somebody, or an animal, it would like, fucking die of infection within a week because of how, like, you know, whether we've evolved that way or not, I have no fucking idea. It's like, you know, that's not really something we do. Funny thing about, uh, about people, right, is the way we evolved is like, um, very few animals, uh, sweat, right? So we're like one of the few animals that sweat. I hear that horses sweat a little bit, actually. Dogs don't sweat. Um, we sweat a lot and we're hairless. So uh, our whole thing in evolution is literally we find prey and then we chase it until it dies of heat exhaustion. And like how fucking terrifying is that? If you were like, you know, a gazelle or something that is just a fucking dude just jogging after you. You think of, like, the Terminator, where it's like, yeah, you're gonna have to fucking rest sometime, but I'm not, man. I'm a fucking hairless ape that just leaks water constantly. It's fucking ridiculous. Crazy shit, man. Crazy, crazy shit. Shibby, you fucking barked about nothing so many fucking times. That I'm just, I kind of want to just put a banana in his mouth just to shut him the fuck up. Here, have this chicken. I don't need it anyways. I know you want it. Get out of the fucking dock, man. Obey the laws of physics. Obey the laws of physics. Here. This is my fucking captain, everybody. This is my fucking captain. Unbelievable. This is what I gotta put up with. Speaking of, uh, speaking of hunting, man, I was playing that game, uh, Hunter, Call of the Wild. That's a fucking, that's a game. That's a fucking game. I might stream it someday. Just as, uh, something to do, I don't know. Mix things up a bit here. Because that's a game where I can fucking definitely talk. Non-stop while I'm playing. All you do is you just like the deer hunting game, right? So you just fucking walk around. You just walk around the woods, man, looking for deer. And there's like tracks and whatnot. Sometimes, like I've played it for a few hours. Sometimes there's just like wildlife everywhere, and it seems like kind of fucking weird because it's like, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. You go out hiking and you usually don't see that much wildlife, but then there's times where I've just been walking around for like 45 minutes and there's absolutely nothing anywhere, so. I also got to wonder too, cause uh, like I was talking about coyotes the other day there. Um, we got coyotes nearby town and the coyotes in this game do not sound like any fucking coyotes I've ever heard in my entire life. But I also, you know, I've never gone like coyote hunting or whatever. I guess they have different calls and stuff, but the coyotes in this game kind of just sound like dogs, whereas like coyotes in real life, dude, they sound so fucking creepy. They sound like um, like wounded kids. It's fucking ridiculous, like squealing wounded children. Which I guess they do that on purpose because they try to they try to like draw you out of camp or something. It's fucking crazy, man. And they'll like run around and throw their voice so you never fucking know how many coyotes you're dealing with because they just like they just yip and yip and yip it'll sound like eight of them but it'll only be two of them fucking crazy saw one walking down the road the other day just walked by the fucking house <laughs> he's a fat little bastard too man had a little bit of a limp but like I don't know he's otherwise looking really healthy okay okay so enough coyote talk here uh, I'm gonna lower my emissary, and I don't think there's anything else I can sell in here. I got these storage crates, but they don't sell. I got these ashen crates, I don't really give a fuck about them, except... You can sell these, though, can't you? Yeah, okay. Fucking, uh, five little, uh, blue coins there. Gnarly. Gnarly, dude.
wooden crates. I have, uh... All of that fucking junk. Drink the rum, I guess. I'm not gonna shoot my dog. I thought about it, but... I still uh, have to have a working relationship with this... This puppy, so... Yeah. We'll fucking shoot this guy, though. Majestic, you didn't even flinch. What a man. Okay, so... So that's it, I'm gonna lower the flag and then I'll come back and do the old fucking... Do the old super cut outro. What is this, stream 7? Stream 7, so I'll do 8, 9, and 10, so 3 more. Should I switch it on? Switch servers? Maybe I'll switch servers on the 10. No, I'll do the 10th one and then I'll switch it on the 11th. Fuck, is this my shit? Good luck, the address has fallen off. I've had that happen before. Fuck, that's funny. I guess it was because of the server merge or something. Okay. Another thing too, I guess, is uh, you know the more the more regular viewers I get in here, then like the more chat that's going on, the easier a job it'll be for me to uh, to entertain. But regardless, you know, I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it. I'm not gonna rely on. Uh, not gonna rely on chat to always fucking bring the the chat, you know, whatever I'm trying to say here. Were you here? There was some kid in here. His name was like, uh, well, you can look at my last two followers there. I was wondering if that was his, like, how old are these accounts? It's probably not new accounts. Created January 1st, 2023. I can't even read out the names of them because, you know, they're like fucking what they are. February 11th, 2020. Cool, cool dude. I got two new followers from it though, so hey, numbers going up. All right, so we're here on stream seven. It's uh, January 15th, 2023. Uh, session went for five and a half hours. Oh, look at that. 374,805 coins made. That's a perfect. Uh, that's a perfect run. I had my suspicions with that last one, because of uh, you know I forgot to buy that sugar or whatever. But this is it. I think that's probably the most money I can make in a five-hour session. So, um, as for uh, PVP, uh, still had zero ships aggro me. There was like a couple of reapers, but you know you just read them on the map, stay out of the way, and that was fine. That was it. That was pretty much the most straightforward, uh, straightforward uh, 14 port, five hour run I've ever done. So yeah, how do you like them apples? You like them apples, Reddit? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's cool. 14 days though. I can get that down to 10, but whatever. Captain Doby says more can be achieved. Now it's about improving efficiency. I know, right? Cause like, I can fucking do. Uh, I can do more ports. They reset every five days, so I could do almost three loops in the time it takes me to do two loops, but I'm just always, like, talking about, um, fucking breaking my own chat rule, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, though, definitely more can be achieved, man. Um, I gotta fucking catch the wind, catch the wind better. But that's not bad, man, for fucking solo slooping, hey? For a five-hour solo sloop uh, journey there, 374k, uh, not bad. And uh, with that, I um, first of all, actually, I want to write that down just so I have the fucking number, 374k. It's going in tomorrow's title, man. I also did hit up that uh, Skelly sloop, so you know, not that I'm cheating or anything, but those extra gems kind of probably are what pushed me over the edge there. 374k. Maybe I didn't uh, forget sugar that one time, because I was still pretty close to that other that other run. But I just like seem to remember pulling into a port and I went to sell and I didn't have shit to sell and I was like, what's going on? But what could have probably happened is I got streamer brain and I already sold it. 
and I actually uh, didn't forget to buy shit. I forgot to forgot to buy shit, shit so yeah, okay, anyways. Uh, that's it for tonight's stream. I'm uh, taking off here, and I will be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. That's uh, Monday. And then, uh, I don't know, I might take Tuesday off. And then uh, we'll see. Definitely be back on Wednesday if I take Tuesday off. But it depends on whether that controller comes back. I mean, I might also, like, if I get my Elite Series controller back earlier in the week, then I am itching to do, like, a chivalry stream. Battlefield stream, or maybe like, I don't know. I was thinking of doing some Stardew Valley as well, just to fucking chill out to that shit, but. But I'm still gonna be doing these commodity run streams, at least three, three, four times a week, as many as I can, until like, you know, like last last time, uh, what I did, like three streams in a row, and I lost, I lost three pounds, because I wasn't eating right, so. I'm definitely like, uh, I'm doing better with it now. I got my fucking shit worked out better. So, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for chilling out, everybody. You chilled out. Uh, special thanks to uh, Captain Doby. Good times, man. Special thanks to Zorok as well. Thanks for for showing up when you showed up, man. It's always good to see you. And um, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'll catch you all tomorrow, 6 p.m.